Here's what you do when you don't find a rainbow's end this time. Here's where you go when it looks like the rain won't end. Don't cry. I'll give you tomorrow. Let me be the one you share it with. And each day that follows. Cause you only have one life to live. Hi, everyone. Welcome to The Locker Room on this Sunday, October 9th. I'm Alan Locker, and I want to thank you all for joining us for the 18th annual Daytime Stars and Strikes Benefit. On May 1st, we lost our beloved friend, colleague, and for many joining us today, co-star Jerry Verdorn. Jerry, along with Liz Kiefer and Wendy Mador, started this benefit in 2004, 18 years ago. Today, we will continue the tradition in Jerry's honor and pay tribute to this very special man known to many for his roles as Ross Mahler on Guiding Light and Clint Buchanan on One Life to Live. As Jerry and as Ross, he was a leading man, a patriarch, a ruthless lawyer, a pillar of the community, a center of a triangle, half of a super couple, husband, father, colleague, and fierce actor's advocate. For 13 years, Liz Kiefer worked side by side with Jerry, creating an unforgettable pairing. Not only were they work colleagues, but their families became great friends. It's my pleasure to welcome one of our co-hosts for today's tribute to Jerry Verdorn, Liz Kiefer. Hey, Liz. <laughs> oh, thank you, Alan. Thank you. It's uh, such an honor to be here. And um, thank you so much. I, it, it's, it's hard to imagine doing this without our Jerry. <laughs> So I just want to acknowledge that, but we're 100%. here. And, yeah, and, and this is what exactly what he wants us to do. And uh, he would say, welcome to the 18th annual Stars and Strikes event. Um, it's gonna be an amazing Sunday. We have so many people here to share stories and, and pay tribute to Jerry. He's, he's had such an impact on all of our lives and on, this event for the past 18 years. So you know, I just want to reflect back 18 years ago when uh, Wendy first approached us and suggested that we do this event and, and to raise money for then cancer originally. And we just, we bowl and spend the afternoon with, with fans that, and we're all there for this, a greater, connection and 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 a greater greater event here and and at first we're like can we do that i mean usually fan events are different and and you're on stage or there's a table in front of you and there you're not you're not with them all day long what this will be an experiment and uh, and i was a, i was a little intimidated by it but then i realized oh i remember jerry would be there and and instantly all the ang anxious parts of me just settle down and, you know, all would be well and uh, safe and which is his gift. And I just want to acknowledge that he set the tone for this event for all of us just to be together and connect as humans. The word you just said, gift. Gift. Really, gift. really. But you, you know, because he made everybody feel at ease. Every, mm -hmm. no matter who, you were from top. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what he, he did for, he would just come on screen and you would feel it. <laughs> you, know, you didn't even have to know him in person. He's just, Oh, there he is. Okay. All is well. <laughs> that's what keeps it safety. All is well. So yeah. Yeah. I, I am so grateful that we're continuing this. And I just wanted to, to mention that that is my biggest tribute to Jerry because I blossomed as a person and an actor and you know, human being benefited from, from Jerry's presence. And um, I'm just so happy to be here. So um, on that note, I would like to bring out our other co-host, the one and only 
Michael O'Leary. <laughs> Thank you. Liz. Hey, Michael. Hey, Alan. Um, like Liz um, and everyone that's um, here today, you know, I'm, I'm honored to be here to uh, honor our dear friend, Jerry, our leader, our mentor. Um, Liz and I were talking about this the other day. I, I miss him so much. And, and as you can see, we, you know, we have an incredible group of actors from Guiding Light and One Life to Live stopping by today to pay tribute and share their own personal memories about Jerry. Um, in addition, two of Guiding Light's longtime directors will join us as well, um, as long as uh, a Tony Award winning uh, singer Michael R. Jackson, who performed that, that beautiful opening number and is a soap fan himself. And for everybody tuning in, I know you were expecting to see Mr. Ron Raines. He wanted to be here, but he had to have a medical procedure, but he wants to let everybody know there's no cause for alarm. And he sends his love to all of you and is so sorry he cannot be here to celebrate Jerry today. Yeah. And now it's time to bring out Wendy Medor. She is our fearless leader. She's the founder of, of Stars and Strikes and from day one has been tirelessly working, uh, creating, networking, securing sponsors, the actors, all, you know, so much awareness for autism. And Wendy, Wendy, welcome, welcome. <laughs> We're doing this, Wendy. Yeah. Thank and, you. Uh, and you're also here to tell us more about the scholarship uh, in Jerry's name. Yeah. So first off, though, I, I really want to thank Alan Locker for this amazing venue. I mean, with without the locker room, we wouldn't have been able to continue, you know, without the, the in live um, in person events. So thank you. And, you know, thanks to all of our guests here at home who took the time today to join us and uh, honor uh, Jerry and autism awareness. So what we decided to do this year, believe it or not, I was um, in Hawaii with one of the elves. And we were brainstorming over what, what, what were we going to do to honor Jerry and continue his legacy. And we came up with a scholarship idea. And we brought that to Beth, his wife, and, and she loved it. So we are, um, this year, to kick it off, 75% of proceeds that we are um, gaining through donations, uh, through the purchase of some of our items we have on our website, and sponsorship, 75% will go to the Autism Society of America, which helps um, individuals on the spectrum receive much needed services for community, life support, uh, employment, all, all kinds of different things that they need to be successful adults with autism. And 25% of the proceeds this year will go to the newly established Jerry Verdolin Scholarship Fund. Oh, and that great. fund, thank you. And that fund yeah. is going to send individuals, um, uh, children and young adults with autism to theater camp. And why that's important is um, theater camp, the theater helps with social skills, communication, the role playing, the dialogue, it helps them be become better communicators. And there's been studies and they find that that's one of the best tools, one of the best things that they can do. They're very scripted individuals, I know my son is. And so this, this will help them become successful adults. And um, uh, we're going to, uh, seek out, uh, there's a few places that we have already witnessed um, the unbelievable success with those students. So we haven't announced which theater group it'll go to, but um, we are working on that. The link uh, is up. Thanks. The link is up right now for everybody. That's where you can go to donate. And the money goes to both Autism uh, Society of America and, and the and, Yeah, and also, um, and I have it on the website, if you strictly want to give 100% of your donation, to the Jerry Bernard Scholarship Fund, just let us know. And I will, I, I, we have separate accounts and we'll make that happen. But also one of the things with the scholarship, it was, it was not only to honor his legacy, but his love of theater and his charity. So it's a win-win for everyone. So don't forget to go on the website. We still have a lot of things for sale that people have donated. Um, and we, we went, they went on sale yesterday at 11 a.m. and over half of those items are gone. Yeah, so, so go go check it out before they they all disappear. So thanks Amazing. everybody. Amazing. Thank you, Wendy. Michael, do you have the sponsor list? Because if not, I can read it if you don't. I, I don't have in front okay. of me. I'm sorry. So yeah. um I, I just want to mention sponsors for today, Wendy and Bryant Madura, Team Matthew and Jerry Verdorn Scholarship Fund, two thousand dollars. Dwayne and Kimmy Kellogg, uh Hydro Team, 
Matthew, $2,000. Beth Verdorn, $200 and $500 for the scholarship fund. Skip Francisco, Patty Day, Jennifer Milford, Jim and Steph Burke, uh, Sue Schodel and Jody Bender, Denise Ron, Kaylee Reynolds and Cole Hughes, Fa Fran Bureau, Santa's Elves, uh, Erica Slazak, Linda Kennedy, Kathleen Keaton, Kim Bacon, Sally Krug, Kelly and Bruce Simmons, Greg Lane Plumbing, Diane and Robert France, the Edwards family, Tina Sloan, Mark Derwin, Jude Joelson, Kyle Meta, Dean Faratovic, Norma Robertson, Carolyn Roy Kepler, Donna Decker, Jean Swaffler, Swaffer, Kathy Tracy, Tina Gray, Teresa Fairley, Latondra McCoy, Paige Schechter, and Walter Miller. Um, I wanted to read a short note from Hunt Block, who said, a beautiful guy, one of the best things to happen to an entire genre. We were lucky. I was lucky. Hunt donated this beautiful cookbook he created and printed. It's a hardcover book for his family featuring famous recipes from famous celebrities in history. It's spectacular. He had sent it to me. It's up on the site. Um, I would encourage you all um, to check it out. Um, I also wanted to read something from a fan named Jessica Scott. She sent a note and donated a script for today's event. She said, I saw a post regarding the upcoming daytime Stars and Strikes event honoring the great Jerry Verdorn. I have an autographed script that I won at the last Yale fan club event. My husband, Michael, never watched a soap opera a day in his life and used to laugh at my obsession with this television show. I just lost him on June 17th from COVID complications. In my eulogy, I wrote how watching soaps can give you a very skewed view of what love should look like. But we had a, may, a way of making, he, he had a way of making me feel like the smartest, funniest, prettiest, and most amazing person in the room. Even if I wasn't, he was my real soap opera. That script has been in plastic and brought me joy. I'd like to pass that joy on to someone else. Beautiful. How beautiful. The power of, you know, Jerry. Here's, uh, here she is with her husband, Michael. Mm. Oh, I just beautiful. thought it was beautiful. It was really when we first announced that we were doing this, she sent that that in. Um, you know, I just thought it was something else. I also wanted to read a short thing from a fan named Andre who shared this note. I'm a straight guy raised in a family where my great grandmother, my grandmother, my mom and my siblings all watched As the World Turns and Guiding Light. <laughs> I'll never forget how pissed off I was when Guiding Light killed the character of Ross. I remember trying to be optimistic that in the finale, the guy Blake was messaging was something going to end, you know, that someone was going to end up being Ross. Yeah. Um, you know, it, it really is. Um, Liz and Jerry, Robert, Kim and Maureen were on uh, my April 8th, 2020, my second show of, of doing this locker room you know, Jerry and Liz and all of you said yes. Um, but that evening, Jerry just sent me this this note and it just speaks to how gracious he was, how supportive he was. You all know he's been on a number of times. He just said to me, I wanted you to know what a great time I had this afternoon. I also wanted you to know what a tremendous job you did as moderator. I've done similar things and I know it's hard to juggle all those thoughts in your brain as you try to balance topics and tempo and all the while making sure to spread the time evenly to all the guests. Just like in acting, it takes a lot of preparation to make it look easy. You did that for the entire uh, hour. Well done. That note, I will treasure forever. It yeah. just speaks to who he was. He would really send that to me after every show <clears throat> we all did and every benefit we raised money for. Um, truly feel honored, um, you know, that we had that time again, you know, with Jerry through this, you know, crazy medium called the internet, <laughs> you know? Wendy, um, I got a quick question for you because there's some, there's some folks that might be joining us for the first time that could you just tell the, our, our folks are checking in how this got started with you sure. and Jerry and Liz? Absolutely. Liz kind of touched on it. 
Uh, believe it or not, back in 2004, uh, Jerry's character, Ross Marler, had the 25th anniversary at the studio on East 44th Street, and I was lucky to be invited. So um, I, I joined with a friend, and I think I was the only fan there, <laughs> me and my friend. And we it was catered, and we had a lot of wine and having a good time. And I said, you know what? How about you? How about a charity event for you and Liz? Let's get you out there. And he's like, Oh no, 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 no! Nobody would come. No, <laughs> that's so a good imitation. That's a good imitation there. Yeah. <laughs> he's like, Nobody would come, and he goes, "What? Just go, go ask Beth. She's over there. Go ask her." And I said, Okay, let's go ask Beth. So I went over to Beth, and she said, Absolutely, that is a great idea. And that is honestly how this event started. Oh, wow, that's the queen. Well. <laughs> that, that that's a way to to bring out our first two guests. Um, this woman has been by Jerry's side for over forty five years, and I would gather to guess she truly knew him best. Please welcome Jerry's wife and their son, Beth and Peter Verdorn. Yay. Hello, hi everybody. Hey, Beth. hi Beth. Hey, Beth. Hi, Thank Peter. You. Oh. Hey, Mom, hey, Alan. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, oh nice really to be here. here. Of course. Thank you for setting this up. Yes. You are so welcome. Wow. I just wanted to say that Daytime Stars and Strikes just meant so much to Jerry, you know. And every year you could just see him get energized when it came time for the event. Mm -hmm. So like he would go down in the basement and rummage through all his collectibles <laughs> and he couldn't wait to find things for the auction. And he was just in awe of you, Wendy, and the elves. Oh, thank you. How much work you put into all of this every year. And of course he loved being with the fans and with all of his fellow actors at the event. You know, he I think he was really just amazed by the generosity that everyone showed. It was just every year. He would say to me after the event, guess how much money we made this year? Because <laughs> he would be so excited about it. And he just was really happy to support these kinds of organizations and that, that help people with cancer and with autism. And, and believe me, he would be so touched and so honored about this scholarship fund. I'm trying not to cry, <laughs> but um, it, he, it's just something that is just perfect a perfect tribute to him. So thank you for that. And thank, I just want to thank everybody for participating today in this tribute. It just means a lot to me and everybody in his family. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> so well, so welcome, <laughs> Beth. You know, Peter, you and Jake um, grew up with Guiding Light, you know, and then One Life to Live. You know, how, how, how did you see you know, those other, those step families to your, you know, your real family. Well, Liz was pretty much in our family. When we were right. <laughs> I had a but, room in the basement. <laughs> so we, were, we were very close. And, you know, some of the best memories I have of, uh, you know, getting to know some of the Guiding Light and One Life staff, but really more so the Guiding Light was, we'd always go into the city for Christmas time and there would be a Christmas special. And it was just when you're that age, it's just a magical time to be in the city and see all these bright lights and meet all these fantastic people. And that's something I'll remember for forever. Um, they always made us feel really welcome. And they put us on, I think we we're on the credits a few years, right, Mom? When we were singing the Christmas carols. I am sure of that. Yeah, that. And then um, I'll always remember the softball games. So every year there was a softball game and dad would take us out there and you know, we just get thrown in the field somewhere and just have a blast. So. Yeah. I it was that. a great time. So many years. Yeah. Mm. Um, for, for Beth, Peter and Liz on this one, are there any memories? And I know Liz, you helped pick them, but memories of Jerry's wins for best supporting actor in 95 and 96. Oh, wow. Yeah, I, I just was like, let me let me have that. Your, he didn't want anything to do with it. That's all I know. That, that, that's so Jerry. He's like, I don't I, I, I don't want to do this. Just 
Well, you help. You would help him put together his. Yeah, team, because he didn't yeah. want to look at it. He didn't yeah. want to be responsible for any of it. He's like, "This, no, I can't. You do it." And and so I said, "Yes, I'll take that task." Because I mean, he's it's so juicy. I mean, he had so much wonderful material, and I, and I was just trying to pull from. He's so he can do anything. He he, yeah. he his his comedic timing is off the charts, and then the dramatic scenes. I mean, he he was a no brainer. Just put them all against each other. And you're just blown away by his 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 talent. So yeah. I just remember him wanting nothing to do. Just tell me at the end of it. Just submit it for me. And I <laughs> very, remember his- very much like him, Beth. Right? Yeah. He just, just like, I remember I that he came too. to your baseball game after the after the, that- winning the Emmy that time. Tell me oh yeah, that. he brought it to the game. But I, I remember his speech. Game. He got he got <laughs> up on stage and was uh, old. <laughs> He got up on stage with his one of his speeches and he just looked miserable when he accepted the war. And I remember him saying, I'm far happier than I look right now. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. You know, Peter, uh, you and your brother have uh, children. What was it like watching your dad play granddad? Oh, uh, it's, it's hard to put into words. He was um, it was really special. So for him to be able to spend that much time with all all three of these wonderful kids is just uh, something that really meant a lot to us. And he was known in our family as Papa. So my daughter, Penny, would always talk about Papa, ask about him and draw him pictures. And it was just fun to see him interact with them. Um, it was like he was a kid again. So it was really And, and Beth, Beth told me those donuts are his favorite donuts, which were at his memorial. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he's going to be watching the game this evening. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. Yes, Love Wendy that. found those donuts on the day of the <laughs> luncheon that, that we had. That's you know? great. Another sign. I mean, you know, oh, we yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, to the memorial, and, and, and also the bear together. that walked through our yard yeah. on the day on yeah. that same morning. Yeah, a huge black bear, and you know, his nickname was always Jer Bear. Jer Bear. Yeah. Jer yeah. Bear. This, this yeah. is my little bear necklace that he <laughs> gave me many years ago. So Beth, that you... bear came walking right through our backyard on that morning. It was amazing. Uh, Beth, do you remember the story? Jill, Laurie Hurst, and Dave Kreisman screwed up the actor's vacation schedule, and the writers <laughs> wrote Jerry into vacation while you two had <laughs> planned. We were to have our It was your twentieth, right? It was your twentieth anniversary. I think it was our we were finally going on a honeymoon, <laughs> so to Bermuda. I think it was, yeah. And we had to rework everything. <laughs> As Jill told me, Jerry could have had Jill and Dave fired, but instead you two rescheduled your crews. Yeah. yeah. Talk, talk about team player. Yeah, he was. It, that it that was, you know, that was his life to to be there for that for the show. And uh he loved every minute of it. And I also want to mention our our son Jake would have been here the, today also, but he was just home with the kids this weekend uh, for their. He and his wife had their twentieth high school reunion last night. Oh, <laughs> so that made me feel old. But anyway, they're they're on their way, having to drive back to Rhode Island now. So he does, um, you know, sends his best regards. And otherwise, he could have been here, but he's driving a car at this point. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, you know, he he told a great story at the memorial. Uh, you know, he sh- if if he would write it up, I th- I think the fans would love to hear it because it was a great story, and you know, they they'd love to to read what Jake has to say. Um, Peter, thank you so much for stopping by, Beth. We're gonna keep you keep you around for a little while longer. Peter, thank you for sharing your memories. And, Thanks, you know, we, we, we all, <laughs> Yay. We, we know how much we all love your dad, so. Thanks, Alan, and thank you, everyone. Thanks, Peter. Thanks, Peter. Thanks, Peter. Peter. Bye-bye. Wendy and Michael, I'll see you in a little while. Okay, doke. All right. Bye, guys. Okay. Oh, Beth. <laughs> <laughs> We're we're theater buddies, you know. We go to theater all the time, yeah. so <laughs> it's it's nice. But I have to say, I was not the only woman lucky enough to work side by side with Cherry. Uh, so please, it's my pleasure to welcome Maeve Kincaid and Erica Slezak. Oh hi! Oh, oh, hi, hi you two. Hi. Oh, so nice hi, to see everybody. you. Hi, 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 hi Maeve. Hi, 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 Maeve.
and to see yeah. you all. Um, it was, I always said that Jerry was my reward for having <laughs> spent 30, you know, 30 some odd years on One Life to Live by the time he came on. And I don't think I've ever met a nicer, sweeter, kinder, funnier, and more talented man. And we discovered so many things about each other. We had shared an Othello that nobody knew about. Right. I played Desdemona in different productions, and he had been Iago to this one actor, both of whom, um, both of us really, really disliked this actor. So we had a good time <laughs> talking about him. He was very difficult. But Jerry was so unique in that he could be charming, Clint, wonderful, sweet, loving. And then when they decided to make Clint into Asa, he just made that, that uh, I guess, that segue so easily where suddenly there was a part of him that was pure Asa, yeah. who mm -hmm. was not a nice character. Jerry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, and for Jerry to be able to pull that off was brilliant. Uh, because I, I'm, it was hard. It was hard because Phil Carey's shoes were big to fill, and he did. He became Asa uh, reborn. It was wonderful. I, 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 I just loved every minute that I worked with Jerry. Every day I woke up and I thought I get to work with Jerry today. Wow, fabulous. <laughs> he would say the same about you. Oh, that's very sweet. Thank you. He, and I think Maeve would say the same about Jer. <laughs> Hello, I mean, we all have wonderful stories. I know I have to tell you one. The first day that we worked together in the Lord Library, um, Jerry was supposed to come in, cross to the other side, and then we started talking. And he came in and tape, and they went, cut, cut. There's some sort of rattling going on. No. And you, you both know what we're talking about. And uh, he's, everybody stopped, and there was no rattling. So he said, go again. Four times we did it. And each time they said, cut, there's rattling. There's some kind of rattling. Oh, and Jerry climbed back. You know oh, what this is? Oh my God, it's my Tic Tac. <laughs> in his pocket. And as he moved, they were rattling. <laughs> he took them out and he put them in a drawer. Oh, and every single set that Jerry ever worked in, <laughs> Every available drawer, under every sofa, <laughs> under every shelf, there were, <laughs> there were, there were Tic Tacs everywhere. And, uh, when, when they finally canceled us, I went by one day to say goodbye to all the guys, and they were taking down the set. And I emailed Jerry later that day, and I said, they took down the Lord Library set. And he wrote back, he said, did you get my Tic Tacs? They were everywhere. I said, no, I didn't. I didn't. He was a brilliant, wonderful, kind man and had so many interests. I don't think there was a second that we didn't have something to talk about, always. And it wasn't just complaining, because we didn't complain. And Jerry never complained. Um, anyway. Maeve, tell your stories. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Hi, Those are wonderful. Hi, Liz. Oh, look at oh. you. Oh. oh, look. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> well, I, um, I think one of the things that I first remember about Jerry was uh, having been told that it would be fun to work on Guiding Light. My scenes that I first uh, appeared on the show were with Jerry. And I almost got down in, on my knees in the dressing room afterwards and say, thank you, thank you, thank you. It's going to be all right. Yeah. Um, and it was, it was more than all right, because as everybody has said, he was a man for all seasons. He had decency, intelligence, an amazing sense of humor. And even when things were going really, really badly, which sometimes they did, <laughs> you could see a kind of stubbornness in him and also a kind of mischief. Like, <laughs> okay, what can we do to make this better? Mm -hmm. And I think it's true that for everybody in our cast, as you said, Liz, we felt safe. We felt things were gonna be all right if we were working with him. And um, they usually were. I remember seeing him do those 
god awful court scenes. Oh my word. He would have 34 pages five days in a row. And it he made it happen. He made it work. The thing that I also feel about him is something that Bill Rorick said about him, which is that he had a true theatrical intelligence and a true theatrical integrity. And by that I mean it wasn't about him. It was about the scene and in a larger sense about the show. Mm -hmm. And you felt that. So that's one of the reasons you felt safe. Having said all that, I have to say that one of the happiest <laughs> memories from, from working on the show was when it, it, it was scary entering the show as a new person. And I was also pregnant very, very quickly. And I was supposed to be a vamp. <laughs> so that was not always easy to do. And there was the scene, I don't know how many years ago it was, um, when Vanessa was supposed to come in and shed her fur coat and Ross was supposed to look at her and be have his lust rekindled. <laughs> the only problem was that I was, I think, two weeks away from giving birth. <laughs> so, And I had gained something like, 55 pounds. So I had a half slip up to here. So when the when the fur coat dropped, I just thought, I'll just take a look at Jerry and it's going to be all right. Because there I was in my high heels, my pounds of makeup, and my about to be born baby. And I, I looked at Jerry and he, he his face was the perfect combination of shock <laughs> interest and in his eyes delight absolute delight that he was in the theater and this kind of amazing thing could happen and it was fun and that's 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 that's, that's him he he had so he had so much so many I think, qualities i think that that was the key to jerry he enjoyed everything that he did yeah. Uh, and if he didn't, he never said a word about it. Yeah. He made everyone comfortable. And he just had such a good time doing what he was doing. Mm -hmm. the, the, best, the best one, and Beth will remember this, uh, just before he joined the show, they had decided to move. They were selling their house and moving to another house. And um, um, Jerry was um, at, at the show and they came and they told him, uh, we'd like you to play Clint. And they made the deal. And he called Beth and he said, so I have good news and I have bad news. And she said, what's the good news? And he said, I got the job. And she said, wonderful, wonderful. And she said, what's the bad news? He said, my first day is the day we're moving. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought you Poor woman, you had to do that all by yourself. Oh my God! And I said to him, "You better put a sticky note on your on your driver's on your wheel at night, you know, when you go home, to make sure you go to the right house." Yeah, because you know he'd never move, he'd never gone there to live yet. Beautiful. But, uh, what what a what a gentleman and a a great great fella he was. What great, great. Listen, it's so nice to see you. It's lovely to see you. Yeah. Well, uh, one of his other uh, co-stars, Hillary Bailey Smith, uh, wanted to be here but could not make today work. But she said, every morning that Jerry and I were called in on the same day, I would start my day in my happy place. That place was Jerry's dressing room with the New York Times crossword puzzle, a <laughs> cup of coffee and our scripts. We would do the puzzle, run our lines and talk about the meals we cooked. He is forever remembered at my house during the holidays for the sweet potato souffle that he shared with me. Jerry Verdorn was simply one of the best human beings I ever had the blessing to know. I have a bit, bit of trivia about that sweet potato souffle, yeah. right, Beth? Yeah, where did it come that, from? <laughs> actually, the history of that comes from Marcy Walker. Marcy it's Walker. the Marcy potatoes. It's That's Marcy where potatoes. it started. Because yeah. <laughs> that was at a Thanksgiving that we shared yeah. together. So, it has that wow. history. I love the sweet potatoes carry on. <laughs> yes, they do. Every single year. Yeah. I love that. Maeve, Erica, Beth, thank you for sharing the time, your memories with us today. 
Thank it you. was Thank my you. pleasure. Because Thank you so much. No Thank one you. else I would rather have done this for. It's oh, wonderful to see you, Beth. It's wonderful, it's to, wonderful see you. to see all of you. Thank this is it's such an honor to, to be in this group. Right so here. heartwarming. I am Thank you. For all of us. For all of us, Liz. Thank you. Thank you. God bless. Take care. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye -bye. Thanks, everyone. You are so welcome. Liz, we'll see you in a minute. Michael, okay. here. There's Michael. Bye, Oops. Beth. Thank you so yes, much. <laughs> All right, Michael. Oh, you're on mute, my friend. Unmute yourself. You need to do it. He can't do it. <laughs> I'll, I'll make the introduction. Um, there we go. Oh, there you go. Go ahead and make the introduction. <laughs> Uh, these two women worked with our dear Jerry very early on at Jerry's time on Guiding Light. It is my pleasure, and I'm so excited to welcome Denise Pence and Kathleen Cullen to the locker room. Hello, ladies. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Denise, I have oh, seen you guys for years. Hi, hi. Oh, okay. my gosh. You guys look so beautiful. I've embraced it, Denise. I've embraced love it. it. Love it. <laughs> it makes you look out. We're after getting there. <laughs> and you, you have to embrace it. You have to embrace it. Um, you know, ladies, please, you know, your earliest memory of Jerry Verdorn, Kathleen. Oh, oh my gosh. My, my first, well, first of all, I was literally <clears throat> right out of school from, from London and I had been on the show maybe. I don't know, a few months. And we had our first scene together. He was, I think he was playing um, Lucille's lawyer, you know. Yeah, Lucille and, Wexler. And he just, oh, well, the great Rita Lloyd. And he was just so kind and so sweet. And so, you know, he, he, he was the kind of person who, you know, didn't really talk about himself. He wanted to know about you, you know, those times where, we're down and the camera's not on, but we're waiting for things to, to come together. And he was just, that that was my first impression of him is that he was so interested in, and who are you and where'd you come from? And, you know, oh, tell me about, tell me about a London school. What, what did you, I mean, he was just always about that, looking out, you know, and, and looking at the people and looking dead in your eyes, you know, mm -hmm. that doesn't always happen. <laughs> in the theater, um, but, but you know, really so interested, you know, and that's what make him, made him, to me anyway, so interesting, is that he was always, always doing that. Well, how are you today, Kathleen? And, you know, and I, I you know, I was just watching uh, Maeve, and, you know, he, we were pregnant at the same time. We were about it's to get pregnant. Time. <laughs> and, you know, um, Maeve! <laughs> um, and he was just, the kind, one of the kindest actors I think I've ever worked with. Always laughing, always making jokes, always teasing me. Um, and it, it was just fun. It was just, you know, he, he, even when he was being that, that, you know, that evil lawyer, he, we, we would just laugh. I just remember the laughter so much. And, you know, I was playing this rather pathetic, dark girl. Um, but in between, he would just crack jokes and always make the people that he was working with completely at ease you know like this is so easy Kevin. don't you know you're too intense <laughs> lighten up and, and we crack a joke and and he was just lovely he was just just lovely denise for you <laughs> well, i think yeah jerry was uh old guard with michael and me and I remember, uh, I I think uh, the casting director, what's her name, uh, Betty Ray. Betty Ray. Yeah, she she gathered certain like-minded actors and the family uh, back when it was a half hour, and Jerry was one of oh, the yeah. early people that was there before I was. Michael, were you there before me? I think I was. I can't remember. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, and Jerry was in the hospital, right? And, um, but I can't say that, you know, we were buddy, buddy. 
you know, I was with Hillary, I was with Floyd, I was with, you know, everybody else in the hospital, but Jerry had a way of making me feel family. Mm -hmm. And it, it came out the strongest when I left Guiding Light. And we went to when Liz was talking about the fan things, you know, where they were panel discussions and not like the Stars and Stripes. And I remember going to a, one of the last uh, fan things that they invited me to and the people knew I was going, I was leaving the show and they were gonna place me on the end. Jerry's like the main stories and all these people are main stories and they're in the center and I'm like way over here on the end. And Jerry took me by the arm and he, he had me sit next to him. Oh, and I was really like, and that's, and I think the Stars and Stripe thing, Michael, I felt like Jerry, oh, nobody's gonna remember me. Nobody's gonna, you know. And uh, the Stars and Stripes thing was so much fun, and and raising money for the for the um, challenged children. I just wanted Wendy to know the house that we had. We sold it last year. It was bought by a family who is ra who is making a challenged children's home out of my home. I'm so thrilled, and I feel like I'm. I don't know. It's a legacy of God. That's the house that Guiding Light built <laughs> that, that we never as actors would have bought a house. You know, you just don't do that. Um, but I always looked at it as the house that Guiding Light built. And I feel like the legacy is continuing with um, everything that Jerry has always tried to do with and Liz too, with all of this um, Stars and Strikes thing and bringing us together as a family. And Maeve, my God, I still remember the day you moved up to Nyack. <laughs> we almost moved up there, but I think of you a lot. Maeve, you're on mute if you... Uh... Did I do it? There you go. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hi, Denise. Hi, Kathleen. Hi, Maeve. You know, I just want to quickly say that I think one of the things that I'm happiest about when I look back over things is having been an actor because there's a special kind of camaraderie amongst the people who work together. And I think on every show, they're uh, sort of important people, not because they're, not because of anything else, but that because of their fundamental decency and their fundamental desire for cohesion and fun. And Jerry was that and always was that. And everybody is speaking to that. Um, so, a rare, a rare person, a yeah. rare person. Absolutely. Um, one of the fans uh, wrote, "I watched an old episode of Guiding Light on YouTube the other day. I was blown away at Jerry's humor, mastery of dialogue, and rapport with everyone. Mm -hmm. Truly, one of the all-time greatest actors. So true." So true. Well, while you're all here, uh, uh, another actress from that time period, Kathleen Kelly, who played Ross and Justin's sister, Lainey Marler, couldn't join us today, but sent along this video message. 2022. This has not been a good year. So many people have passed. So many we didn't get a chance to say goodbye to. We have only memories. So I'd like to take this opportunity to say goodbye in this life to my big brother, Ross. Jerry, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, of course, for the difference that you have made to so many lives. And on a personal note, Thank you for being there when I joined the cast of Guiding Light just a couple of months after you did. You were my big brother. And that was true not just on set. You and Tom O'Rourke helped me as though you were indeed my big brothers. I have such fond memories of rehearsing with you in the dressing rooms and then filming. 
Even though they would usually push our scenes to the end of the day because they knew they could film our dress rehearsal and we would nail it. And they could get the company out on time. Yep. We were a good team, Big Brother. I'm sorry. I didn't get a chance to say goodbye to you. I hope you hear me now and that you also give a big hug to Tom for me. Rest in power, my friend. And thank you all for allowing this time to remember and honor Jerry for all the good he has done in this world and the differences he has made. Love you, big brother. Were you all there when Kath the other Kathleen was there as well? Oh, definitely. I was. Yeah, I had been. I had been on the show for for a bit. Yeah, she's. Just, I think that's the sweetest. That's the sweetest, today. sweetest girl. I, I remember mm. her hair. She had the most gorgeous hair, but she just, yeah, she was adorable. She was so much fun. And we actually um, ended up, she had, had an apartment right next door to where I lived. So we saw each other all the time, you know. Um, but she, yeah, she was a sweetheart. She was terrific, lovely, fun. But then, you know, she was working with Jerry. <laughs> he was just, he was so much fun. He, he really was. You know, I... I yeah, it's so interesting. You said it, Kathleen, because Maeve had just started on the show and, you know, you mm -hmm. said you were right out of school. Mm -hmm. You know, having somebody like that to work opposite has got to, to you know, I think Maeve expressed it. It's just comforting. Well, it was comforting, but it was also, I mean, he was such a, a consummate professional all the time, even with all of his, you know, his joy and his charm and all of that. I mean, I, I, I love just watching him, you know, when I, I really did. Um, and he, he taught me a lot. He taught me a lot about um, just, you know, I played this character that was constantly crying. You know, I was always crying about something. <laughs> just, you know, I mean, Amanda was a wreck, um, especially when I was working with, with Jerry. And, um, you know, he'd be so sweet. Because, you know, when you're in school, you, you, you know, you, you mm -hmm. learn to do your preparation and that's so important. And, and he would just, right before we go on, many times, <clears throat> when it would be scenes just between the two of us, or right before working with Rita, because Rita was a force of nature when she came on set. And she was, um, but he, he would just come up and, and tell me a joke or, you know, he, he, he was so generous. And you don't always get that. You know, when when you're working with people that you don't know very well, he was just so constantly generous to me. Um, and he never preached or never tried to to teach me anything. You know, which I, you know, I, I love that he was always a teacher at the same time. Um, and I, I constantly, just by example, of his calm and his ease and his joy of. And his appreciation of being an actor, you know, you, you, you learn that by being with actors who are that comfortable and that grounded and that secure. And I, I'm, I will be forever grateful that we had scenes together, you know, it, it was just fun, but it was also, it was also just so lovely. It was a nervous kind of girl, you know, and I was always at ease with him. Always. It was like, Maybe. As, Kath, as Kathleen said, it was, it was like a big brother. It was like somebody that you just knew you'd go on set and everything was going to be fine. Just, yeah. just relax. It's all good, Kathleen. This is just fun. You know? Yeah. Yeah. I, I, totally. I, I, I truly loved him for that. You know, I really did. Yeah. And, and he was, he was wonderful. I mean, then the, I remember the night that I, you know, was, was leaving the show. And he said, oh, let's just go out for a drink. You know, I was just, um, and he just made me laugh. You know, made me laugh and got in a cab and just thought, well, that's a great way to end it too, you know, to just 
laugh and appreciate what I had just experienced for over five years. You know, just appreciate it. Doesn't happen for everybody. And I love, I really love that about him, you know, that he truly yeah. appreciated being an actor and, and, and having the opportunities and don't take it for granted. Mm -hmm. It's pretty special to have that as a young actor. It really is. Anyway. Hmm. Maeve, what was Jerry's process like as an actor? You know, I don't think I could speak to that. Because, um, and, and that's interesting, because sometimes you would get trapped with somebody who would tell you ad nauseum their person. <laughs> <laughs> Just the wrong moment. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. But, we won't say who, oh, though. We. <laughs> no, heaven for, <laughs> heaven for friends. Oh, <laughs> but um, I was, uh, I've been listening to people, and I think one thing that, you know, because of his fundamental decency, which was absolute, I think it's easy to not talk about the sort of the flinty part of him, the assessing, intelligent, uh, mm -hmm. able to, to, to argue and, and go to bat for something that he really believed in. And I, I know that when he prepared, he, he looked at every aspect of the scene and how to drive it forward and how to make that day's show work. And I also know that there were times when he, I think we, we all felt that if need be, if somebody needed to go to the producer or the writer and say, look, this, this isn't quite right, Jerry would do a good job. Mm -hmm. um, I, think, I think I'm speaking for other people when I say that. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't know what his process for preparation was, but certainly within a scene, I would I would say it varied from scenes from the different depending on the different kind of scenes he was doing. You know. Well, and it's interesting because you know none of us actually need to know it because we all benefited from whatever that process was. Everybody was glued watching. Ross Marler on Guiding Light, and I'm sure Clint Buchanan on One Life to Live because of his, what, you know, preparation, as you said, and whatever his process at that time. He took everything very seriously. Mm -hmm. I know that because he knew that sometimes we were given really scenes that were pretty uh, weak and you had to, you had to put all your muscle behind it. <laughs> um, and he would. And I didn't know when I first worked with him that he had been a theater actor and was very, very capable of, uh, and conversant with all of that. But as I watched him, I realized that that was true. Um, and I, I remember Bill, I remember once Bill Rorick, who <laughs> loved Jerry, got a group of people together to go up to Hamilton College to work on something that Bill's friend, E.M. Forster, had written for Bill. And Jerry came along with some lots of other people and Jerry was extraordinary. And he was, it was a chance for me to see him do something, you know, that it wasn't chopped up into scenes. It was a whole arc of something. He was amazing. He was incredible. He was. So well, I, ladies, the fans absolutely are thrilled you are here sharing your memories, Denise and Kathleen. Thank you from the oh, bottom of my pleasure. heart. Kathleen, I will be in touch as well. The fans would love to see you here with me. So we'll talk about that another time. <laughs> sure. And uh, Denise and Kathleen, Maeve, hold on. Somebody would like to say hello to you. Uh, bye, ladies. Goodbye. Thank you. Um, Michael, you want to introduce the next two? Oh, I don't have my script in front of me. Oh, I'm that's okay. Terrible host. Um, <clears throat> Maeve's son... Little Bill Lewis, Brian Buffington, oh. and Bridget Reardon, Melissa Hayden. Hello, oh, hey, Melissa. Hey, Hi, baby. What's How up, are guys? You? Hey, Brian. Hi, What's Bobby. going on? Hi, Maybe. Hi, my <laughs> dearest, my dearest, my dearest. Yeah. Oh, maybe I want to hug you. Big hugs, big hugs. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> So good to see you guys. Hello. Well, you know, Melissa and Brian, I'm, you know, I think about like Ma Maeve and Jerry and the 
veterans, my, you know, Michael, even at the time when you arrived, you know, what was it like to learn from Jerry and, and what, not even learn watching them? I, I used to, you know, watch Jerry do these courtroom scenes and, you know, when you're not, we're all guilty of it, but when you don't have anything to do, you get your kind of cup of coffee and you just sit back and, <laughs> and uh, you know, you're kind of not wired all in, but I would see Jerry just, um, I, I never saw Jerry go up in a line the whole time, the whole time I, he was always prepared. He was a technical genius and he couldn't do this laugh on cue and do it over and over and over again. And it was like, man, <clears throat> I was just, I would be just amazed at how he would handle. And Jerry <clears throat> always had the most dialogue on the show because, you know, he was wearing a lot of different hats. And then he always would do the Christmas crawl or he would do the, the 4th of July bar barbecue uh, speech. And back to Maeve's point, I just want to say, I want to <clears throat> piggyback on what Maeve, Maeve said. There's a great quote by Hemingway, not Hemingway, but um, Yates, and it goes, kindness is a language the deaf can hear and the blind can see. And, and Jerry epitomized that, that old school kindness. And so when he would do these things that I thought at the time ago, man, that's pretty sappy. How, how, how can you get through that? And Jerry would do it and would give it class and dignity and character and heart. everything. And heart. He, can he I also add ease? Like ease in the face of calamity was just so Jerry. It was it was masterful. Well, right after nine eleven, we had that fourth uh, that Fourth um, of July bar barbecue, and Jerry took all the gravitas of that moment, and he brought it to, you know, the end of that show, which was a lot of a lot of those shows where people liked him because it was the the whole cast was generally there. And it was always piggybacked with something, you know, we always buttoned the show with something that Jerry would say. So we talk a lot about you know, Jerry's professionalism, but we get back to what Jerry's heart was, as Melissa just said. You know, no one had a heart like Jerry. I feel like I lost my father. I don't want to go down that road because, you know, Jerry, it's not like I talk to Jerry every single day, you know, but I've kept every one of my emails from, from Jerry. And he, he would say things in a way that, you wish your father could say to you. Mm -hmm. And he, he sort of intuitively knew when you were going through a tough time and all of a sudden he would show up. So, um, you know, all of these things that we say, you know, we talk about Jerry's professional and everything else, but it was Jerry, the man, you know, Jerry, the man that, um, you know, Grant and I went out for pizza the other night and we just spent the evening talking about Jerry, you know, and there's times where Jerry would disappear. We wouldn't see Jerry. But knowing that Jerry was there was somehow gave us that sense of um, peace, like everything's going to be OK, you know. So I, I just want to kind of express how much I loved him as a man and admired him. And I thought, man, I just you, he was the kind of guy as a young man, you say, I want to be like him. And I can't say that about anybody else I ever met, you know, and Jerry, Jerry could be cantankerous. He could be a little prickly from time to time. But we all have it in us, Mikey. <laughs> yes, we all have it. You know, we all do it. So anyway, I'm, I'm on a bit of a ramble there, but I just no, wanted, I, I wanted see, to. That's what, that's what today is for, Brian. Very, yeah, yeah I'll, I'll piggyback off that. I mean, I, I didn't work with him or I didn't have any, you know, uh, or I didn't have a lot of scenes. And, and if they were, they were like those ensemble things like the barbecue or um, I just I guess it's a testament to him that because I didn't work with him that much on camera and i still have such vivid fond memories of whether it was the fan club gatherings the the charity functions the softball games the bowling all those things um and you're going to hear a lot of the same words throughout this uh I mean, just so warm uh kind inclusive you know i was the one of the few young people around and never made me feel like I wasn't a part of the family and uh, very much. Again, I always equate people on the show to, to um, you know, like uncles and, and parents and sisters and brothers. And he was kind of like, I always looked at him like, like an uncle. Um, 
and just a, a wonderful, wonderful guy. Yeah, I can imagine being, you know, the age that you were, Brian, you know, uh, getting to watch, you know, Maeve and, and Jerry and Jordan and, you know, class acts all the way uh, goes a long way. You know, it's a tough business and not everybody uh, acts like, the, you know, the veterans you all were lucky to work with on Guiding Light. It's we not were lost so on me. <laughs> yeah. Because it, it, it really could, you know, color the rest of your life, really, or the or the direction, if you still want to be in the bit, you know, so many things about one uh, bad egg in the bunch. And, and he certainly was uh, the top egg, you know, he just, you know, Mikey said, it, you know, with heart. 100%. Any, any memories stand out from the events over the years, attending these events? I just always knew that there was a twinkle happening for him. Like, if I needed something, I'd look over at him and he'd be like, mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that was kind of all I needed for the moment, you know? Um, and I heard what Maeve was saying earlier, you know, over the years, a few things had come up and I'd go to Jerry first, you know? He was sort of my touchstone as far as like, is who do, who do I go to for this? Is this something I should voice to anybody else? Is this do I take this for you know? And he his moral compass was just always exactly right. Um, if I may also take a couple seconds, um, we lost some other people this year. We did. Um, when I was on General Hospital, we lost uh, Stuart Damon from General Hospital, so mm -hmm. he's one. But also Lee Lawson. Uh, who played, I believe, my grandmother, but I never met her. Be, be but I'm sure it. a lot of people be, really yeah, miss be, her, you know. Be. And Michael Tylo, who I yeah. only met a couple of times, and and Lisa Brown. I mean, what a loss, you know. Um, Seriously. I know. It, the, I was, it, I was it, watching it, the Emmys this year, and the In Memoriam came up, and I took photos because I was just like, whoa, that's a, that's a hit, you know, that's a hit for our community. So I just wanted to mention them as well. We were all so lucky. I can't even say how fortunate I felt, you know, to, um, I came from LA and I came to New York and I got the job on a Friday and I started working on a Monday and I didn't know what the heck I was getting thrown into. And I was living on my friend's couch and I, I wandered into this family, these people with such dignity and grace and, class and talent and these lovely human beings you know and that was extraordinary extraordinary i to this day i'm still stunned at what a lovely gift of a of a group we had and you know the scripts were so good and we had such great material to work on and top to bottom i mean absolutely everyone in the crew everyone like we were we had a couple bad eggs and that was it you know who were they well <laughs> well, well, well put brian <laughs> well, I, well I, I and not to take away from anybody else on on the show but but if if i were to pick like a quarterback or kind of uh and maybe it was because Jerry was always sort of the center of the big events, whether it was the fan club or the charity events. But I, Jerry comes to mind first because he was such a good MC. He was so good at kind of bringing everybody together. And he just – that was just who he was. And, and I, again, how many years has it been? Um, a lot of those memories are very fuzzy for me. Uh, but I um, – you know, I remember that and, and him fondly, and I can still hear his voice, you know. And it's been years, decades. Well, we're all so lucky that YouTube exists because we have so much of him up there in those beautiful uh, Christmas crawls with his speeches and all of that to live on. Maeve, Melissa, Brian, Melissa, thank you for your donation. Thank you so oh. much. Um, thank you for being here, really. Thank you. And, uh, Thank you so much for doing everybody. this. Melissa, it's good, seeing you. good seeing you, Ryan. Good seeing you, Mikey. You yeah. Yes, good seeing you, everybody. Bye, guys. Thank mm. you for ha having this, nice for making this happen. Yeah. Alan, You're thank so you. You're so welcome. Yeah. Bye, Maeve. Bye-bye.
All right, Mikey. See you in a little while. Bye, Melissa. Okay. Bye. Do I Lizzie. leave? Hi. Nope. Yep. There you go. Hey. <laughs> Bye, Melissa. <laughs> Brian. Bye. Maybe. I'm trying to keep the show on schedule. Oh, I'm just enjoying this so much. I'm just sitting. I'm just, I cannot, I'm so honored to be here. Oh, my. The goodness. memories are, just hearing everyone's perspective is is really something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is, this is big. Um, well, as we continue, please, please welcome One Life to Live's off-screen brother and sister, Eddie and Kristen Alderson and their on-screen co-star Sean Wingle. <gasps> Hello. Sean! What's up, guys? Sean. Hi, Ellen. Hi, Liz. Hi, everybody. Oh, hi. How's hi. everybody? We're good. Thanks for being here, everybody. Really, really appreciate it. Oh, absolutely. I know, Je I know Jerry certainly would. Of um, course. You know. Um, I know, Kristen, you had mentioned Eddie's got great Jerry stories. So, Eddie, you and I have never met. I, I want to hear these these Jerry stories. Oh, so I'm gonna oh bring them on. You. It was, um, <laughs> I was, you know, I was younger and I, I you know, I was going through a bunch of different storylines and I had finally gotten like a really good storyline where, you know, my character was kind of starting to be like a jerk and, you know, uh, wanting to take over the family business and everything. So me and Jerry, you know, for probably – a good year. I mean, a lot of my scenes were with Jerry because, you know, he was the head of the Buchanan Enterprises and they were, you know, my character was starting to wear suits every day and slicking his hair back. Like it kind of <laughs> was like, you know, Wall Street type vibes of, you know, and and um, Clint, Clint would, you know, kind of uh, supervise Matthew. And we just he was just such a, uh, you know, I, I it was like an honor to me because, you know, I was younger at the time and you know, I'd worked with Bob Woods and everything. And, you know, I've worked with so many great people on the show, but I, I never really had that many scenes with Jerry until that storyline came up. So for like a solid year, a lot of my scenes were with him and it was just, you know, early mornings and he was just always so, uh, so positive and, and happy. And he was just, just such a great person to work with. And, it was, it was always, uh, I had like such a calming presence. You know, if I was nervous before a scene or, you know, had some emotional thing or, he was also just such a sweet guy and my character was such a jerk to him. And so many of the scenes that literally, like before the scene, I'd be like, Jerry, I just want to let you know I love you and I'm sorry, I'm sorry for what I'm about to do. And he, and he would always just be like, Eddie, it's fine. He goes, you know, it's acting, right? I'm like, I know, but you're so, he's, he was like a teddy bear. You didn't want to yell, you know, I didn't want to like yell oh. him and all that stuff, so. I mean, the fact that, you know, I, I got to work with Bob Woods and Jerry Verdorn. I mean, it, it was just such an honor. And um, he taught me a lot. He really did. He taught me a lot about acting. And, you know, he's just such a good person. To and everybody. professional. He's, so yeah, professional. just like a professional's professional. He just, you know, I, I, I miss Which him. Which sure. helps you out. Yeah. It helps you out not just as an actor, though. Somebody being a professional helps you in whatever professional way. Yeah, he just, you know, he's just a good person. I mean, just, yeah. you know, everyone everyone who knew him, you know, he's great to production and just, it, you know, sometimes it can be stressful being on a set and, you do you know, some things come up and all this stuff, but it never fazed him, never bothered him. He was just always so, so calm. I mean, it was just, I don't know how to explain it. He just, it was just a pleasure. We were also talking about, and I know Sean, you know, we, we did a lot of events with Sean and with uh, Jerry for, you know, the bowling events. The bowling events, yeah. Oh, my gosh. And Jerry just had – he had a way of making you feel like – Welcome. It, you, yeah. Welcome yeah. and, like, your presence meant the most. Like, he would come over to each and every one of us and go, yep. thank you for coming today. Your pre – you know, you have no idea what this means that you are here. And I – and I saw him go and do it to everyone, but for some reason, when he said it to you, you're like, I'm so special. <laughs> he, just he had such a high thinking. level of gratitude. He had yes. such a high level of gratitude. Anytime he would engage with you, he'd come over to each lane and you were like, I got to know him more at the bowling events than I was able to, you know, on set. Cause yeah. the storylines, only time I really had an interaction with uh, Jerry was when we were doing the storyline for you, Ed, you know, with the uh, surgery, my brother was coming yeah. into town and with Nora. So I made to say a couple of lines here and there, but unfortunately our paths really didn't connect that much on the show, but I would always look at him and look at how professional he was and him and uh, Bob, uh, Bob Woods 
and just how everybody would, you know, study their lines and blocking. He was an absolute professional and he's, he had such a level of gratitude. It was just a beautiful person. And whenever I'd had questions and like, I've, I've, I've leaned on everyone's shoulders in the very beginning. Cause that's where I started my career at one life. I think I even asked uh, um, my girl here. I was like, how do you remember all of those lines? <laughs> and I was in her room. I was in the dressing room. Like, how do you do this? I'm like, I was overwhelmed having three pages when they made me a series. <laughs> oh, I'll tell you, I was like, Oh God. I'm like, but she's remembering 10, 15, 20 pages. Like Jesus, what stage direction? Visa me. I'm like, Oh yeah. my God. <laughs> Jerry would just be like this, do this, do this. And, yeah, he was he, just the way he explained things. I was like, okay, and I look at him. He's like, God, this is like, yes, <sighs> you know, it's, it's one life to live was just a special place. Everyone is just, yeah, and he Jerry was, just was a, special, a very reassuring, person. calming presence. And, um, yeah. yeah, just oh my god, Sean, I remember you at all of Jerry's events, and you two would have so much fun. You always be like, all right, Sean, Sean, come do this for me real quick because you're so you know. You're like, all right, guys, let's go do this with the fans and stuff. And uh, well, at the end of the memories. show, guys, at the end of the show, there's a great tribute of, of uh, all the pictures through the years, mm -hmm. um, and I believe you're both in those. So awesome! Show, oh, good. Great. You know, oh, everybody fantastic. with the bowling balls and uh, you know those bowling um, events. I always look forward to them. He always had the ball wide open. He was like, "Open ball, get ahead, have a good time." I mean, <laughs> <laughs> that's classy. You know when someone invites you to an event, oh, you don't have to pay for a single right. drink. Before we yeah. had the little reception area. By the time we was bowling, I was like, yeah. yeah. By, 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 the, by the end of the day, you couldn't hit one pin. You know, like, <laughs> you know, I love everybody. I had such a good time. Yeah. <laughs> that is so funny. Um, it's the truth. Really, you know, took care of people. You know, take care of did. people. And it was a fun event, too. Like, it was actually, like, it was fun. I mean, you know, it that, was, some, some charity events, you know, you go to and it can be, you know, stuffy wanted... or depressing or whatever, but he always made sure that everybody there, all the fans and all the actors, everybody that was there had a good time, and he made sure of that. And that was his baby. You could tell how much he cared about that event. You know what? Yeah, You're absolutely right. By Paul, that was the best event. The bowling it event was, was yeah. definitely oh, the most this people so came out. It was The fans were <laughs> incredible. The energy was through the roof. It was a great time. It really was. Well, we should do it one more time. We should do it one we more are time. I know we Hopefully. will. Right, Liz, go ahead. Well, we're, 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 we're talking about it. We're trying to figure yes. out how we can make that work. I mean, it, 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 I, I, how, it's been since 2019. I think so, that was yeah, the 20, last one. I think 2019 was the last one. So we're, we're thinking yeah. next year might, should be in person. So give it a shot. That we'll would give be it a shot. Let's promote the heck out of it. Out of it. Being a part of it. A absolutely. Well, um, another co-star of yours, Sean's, Kristen's, Eddie's, and dear friend of Kristen's, Robin Strasser wanted to be here, but she uh, sent a note for Kristen and she Kristen, did. take it away. Oh, look at the picture. So oh, we picture. I spoke to her the other day on the phone and she said, Kristen, I feel so bad, but, and she, as she's talking to me about it, she's getting choked up over the phone and she's going, but I can't be on camera. I'm a blubbering mess over this. So she asked me to read, um, this beautiful uh, note about Jerry. So here's, okay. This is from Robin Strasser. He was a brave and gracious man who had in the past shared with the public his battles with cancer in a genuine effort to help other people by raising their awareness. The personal sadness I felt started me thinking of other colleagues that we've lost. And that started me thinking about the loss of One Life to Live and all my children 11 years ago. Then I started bawling. I am truly an ugly crier. And that's why I always played bad girls. <laughs> truly ugly. She goes, I, I tried calming down, but I couldn't. My dog Rocket was getting nervous about my condition. Then I got this great idea and made some calls about putting this idea into action. After I had done that, I found myself calm enough to go on with my day. Here's what I did. I called the Central Park Conservancy and told them I wanted to endow a park bench. I asked for a location near One Life to Live's old studio, which was on 66 between Columbus and Central Park West. They found one just inside the park near 66th Street. Yay! When you endow a bench, you are allowed to put a brass plaque on it so that everyone who sits there can see who the bench was donated in honor of. Here's what I decided on. The bench reads, 
in honor of the citizens and friends of Landview and Pine Valley, Pennsylvania. That makes the bench for all of us. I know Jerry was always a kind, humble, and helpful gentleman in the true sense of the word. I think he would be pleased that although the bench was inspired by his passing, it allows space for all of us to sit and remember whenever we wish. It's a place where the cast and crew used to sometimes take a break from taping. When one left, and so that was the one story. So I thought that was just so beautiful that Jerry's passing inspired such like a, a wonderful Liz event. and Michael. <gasps> oh, look at you! Oh, that's amazing. <laughs> oh, oh, that's they so went. Cute. They went on Friday and sat on the bench. We oh, had a date. It was amazing. lovely. That's yeah. awesome. That's beautiful. And look at that so- sunshine too. I swear. I always think like glares or spirits coming through. I feel like that was Jerry being like, here I am with you guys. <laughs> That's yeah. amazing. Okay, so then she then she has a story about Jerry that she shared with my mom and I, and we said, you have to put that in writing. It's such a sweet story. Okay, so this is a story from Robin. When One Life to Live studio was moved out of the armory building and into the same studio as The View, we all got wonderful dressing rooms. Jerry's was next door to mine. I kept feeling anxious because there were these rumors that we were about to be canceled. But I could always hear the nicest music coming from Jerry's dressing room. So I would call out, Jerry, I'm feeling blue. Could you make that lovely music louder, please? I did that and he would always make it louder. I did that for about a week. One morning, Jerry knocked on my door and handed me a CD. I looked at the CD. It was the greatest hits of the Mills Brothers. They were real-life brothers known for their breathtaking harmonies. Their recording of If I Didn't Care is a classic. We all cared about Jerry Verdorn. Jerry cared about the work and all the people he worked with. Rest in beautiful harmony, Jerry. I'm bawling again. Kristen, please help me out. (laughs) (laughs) That's beautiful. Jerry loved his music. He loved his music and he would always blast the Mills brothers. And for that specific week, that's what he was playing all the time. And I just thought that was the most precious thing that she would ask him to play the music louder. And then he he gives her a CD CD is so sweet. Oh, that's just so caring. So she's, she's been blaring the Mills brothers all week in honor. of (laughs) That's awesome. And that bench is really just a really beautiful idea. So special. Absolutely. Yeah, Yeah. I can't wait. Yeah, I would love to check that out. Yeah. It was nice to walk by the old. I mean, it, I I was able to touch a little bit my thinking to my past roots. I, I did have a. I was on one left to live in the in during the eighties for about a year Aww. and a half. So I worked with with Robin, so it was kind of nice. It was oh, full great. circle. I was like, this is lovely, actually. I haven't been wow. by that in a long time. It, what what is in that building? Does anybody? Is it still? So oh, it's I, actually ESPN and. Oh. And everything was demolished inside of it, which is really yeah, sad. You wouldn't, even you wouldn't recognize it. It, it uh. is. It, it's it's really wild to even look inside. It doesn't look like the same interior at all. So now there are it's elevators, depressing. and yeah, it's, it's modern, depressing. and it's it's just nothing like what we had. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Sad. Sad. Yeah. Yeah. Iconic. The castle building. I mean, I called it the castle. Building. Yeah, me too. Yeah. I was a page on ABC. I always. Walked past, you know. I love that building. It's such a. It was. Historic, it was so cool. Yeah, it's a historic, it was home. It was definitely. It was home. Every like, even people would come in on their off days and just come hang out. Yeah. It was just like a. It was just the the vibe there. It was just. It was. It was like home and family. It was so it. centrally located too. That's right. Yeah, it was perfect. Okay. Okay. Oh, I know. So beautiful. We have the park right there. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely, Sean, Eddie, Kristen, Robin. Thank you so much Thank for you. sharing your memories of Jerry with us and spending this time. Remember, My pleasure. please donate to uh, DaytimestarsAndStrikes.com. The money is going to the Autism Society of America and to the Jerry uh, Verdorn Scholarship Fund. You stay well, Kristen and Eddie. Amazing. Thank, Thank you so you. much Thank for having so us. Thank you so much. This is beautiful. Well, Thank, Thank you for you. having us. Look forward to seeing you in person. Yeah. Yes. Good nice. to see you guys. Good to see Love you guys. You. Bless you, brother. Miss you. We're going to catch up. Yes. It's good. <laughs> All right. Love you guys. Bye. Later. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye.
<laughs> oh, they're sweet. <laughs> Absolutely. I, I wanted to, to, to let them know I, know, I know a tip of how Jerry learned lines so well, and let's probably make Beth crazy, but he used to paste the script. He used, I, the speeches, the long courtroom speeches. Yeah, yeah lawyer he stuff. He had them pasted on his dashboard, and he literally, like, he was... <laughs> He was reading and learning lines while he was driving. I mean, he was constantly, was, I used to go crazy. It's like, please don't tell me you're going to paste them into your dashboard again. Yep. In the morning, he was like, wow. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, don't tell Beth. Don't crazy. tell Beth you're doing that. Uh, anyways, that was lovely. So um, now, wow. Ooh, we have, we have a, a, a treat here. These uh, ladies have spent uh, a lot of time causing Jerry's various characters some strife over the years. Um, so please welcome these actresses who played his on-screen daughters, uh, Gina Tonioni, who played Dinah Marler, and Brie Williamson, Jessica Buchanan. Hello, ladies. Hello. Hello. Hi. Thank you for being here. Um, I'm also going to introduce Tony Award winning playwright of A Strange Loop, Michael R. Jackson, who is a huge soap fan today, who will share memories of Jerry. And he recorded that beautiful opening for us mm -hmm. as well. But he has a new show he's going to tell us about as well with an homage to one of your characters, ladies. Oh. <laughs> Hi, Michael. That Thank was you. beautiful, Michael. Hey, Thank you. Hi, Liz. Hi, Hi, Good to see you again. Hi, Michael. You. Thank Hi, you Michael. For, Thank you for that opening. It was truly a way to kick Love off it. today's show. Um, Bree and Gina, you know, having Jerry as 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 pop as dad, um, right. share some of your memories of working <laughs> up with him. Of him. Um, and isn't that funny, Bree? We have that in common. We totally have that in common. He played our dad. Well, here he is. This must have been around 2004-ish. Um, you know, Guiding Light, when I look back on my time in soaps, honest, and I mean this, was such a brilliant time. Uh, it was a cast like no other in that when you did walk in, it felt very, very cohesive. It felt... Um, that they all knew each other and they had worked with each other for a long time. There wasn't that disconnect that sometimes you can feel. Um, and I walked in, I remember it was around 2004. I had just come from LA. I was taking a bit of a break from soaps. I was kind of trying to do other stuff and it was fun. And then the call came and they said, do you want to do a uh, Dinah Marler? Do you want to come and do Dinah Marler? Dinah Marler. And I said, sure, I'll give this a shot. Uh, it sounded good. Didn't really know anybody. Uh, going into this. So when I showed up first day at work, I walked into the rehearsal room, really not knowing uh, really anybody. And the first person that was in my group of scenes was Jerry. Uh, Liz, you also were there. Um, it, I remember coming into that, to that rehearsal hall and Jerry opens up his arms, gives me a great big hug. He says, Hey, welcome, welcome aboard kid. And um, he had this, way about him and this is really true you you hear that sometimes you don't remember what people say but you absolutely remember how they make you feel mm. and jerry was that soul you just could remember how he made you feel and it was this warmth and he had that dad vibe he reminded very much of my own father you know, very uh, in control um no question that he was sort of the head of the table the head of the table type of personality and he just welcomed me in. And, you know, um, from that day forward, I just felt very welcome. I really did. And all of you had worked, you know, Liz, you had been there for how many years? I mean, many years at that point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, I didn't, you know, I just felt I just felt like I, I belonged right away. And that had to do with you and Jerry seeing me as, you know, the daughter or a part of Springfield. Well, so you came on I, with with gusto so you you owned that and you did you were beautiful <laughs> so it was it was very easy to take on that 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 relationship that well, being my stepdaughter yeah i would yeah. <laughs> well, I, I guess it was my mom and, and it was so fun to think today that like, to go back to those times and i really mean it they were warm 
They were warm, they were good, and they were days that I just, we all appreciated the work. You know, everybody really didn't take the work, they took it seriously, but they didn't take themselves seriously. You know, they just, they really enjoyed the craft of it. Um, I and I, yeah, and Jerry was a big part of that. So um, well, again, he set the tone. I think yeah, he, he really set the tone for, and I'm sure Bree, you you will uh, yeah. um, agree with this. That like when yeah. he walks into a room, like that's it. That, that, that these, this, for is, sure. this is how we behave. This is how we how we are as human beings. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Very human. Gina, I had no idea that he played your dad and my you dad. Know what? Me either. I, I, in other words, I, I, that's right. He played your dad. And that's not that common, but we really didn't talk about that a whole lot, no, did we? No, no, we didn't. So, um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I could just echo, wouldn't Gina? Oh, oh here I am. Uh, 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 I was in birth before that photo was taken. So, yeah, that's so funny. And there's Melissa. Oh, yes. So you guys so, are sisters, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, and right. so I, I went, like, they ended the show, and it's funny, and it just came up on, like, Instagram where I saw it, where Jessica finds out that Jerry is her dad, like, her real dad. I think that was the last scene, of, like, right? Like, that was, like, the last, like, how they yeah. closed it. And I, like, eyeballed Jessica was balling. Like, it was so moving and I remember like that being I'm like of course Jerry's my dad of course you know <laughs> of course you know and, and and for me to play the role of Jessica and also like for them to end it that way was so satisfying for me Jerry you know I did one life to live when I was 23 until like 30 like you know all of my 20s were given so I, it was a wild ride for me as an actress as a person or whatever and Jerry was like you know, he would hug me when I come in in the morning and I'd just be like, oh, thanks. I'm so happy you're here. You know, like he was just calming and mm -hmm. wonderful and it, 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 just a really wonderful grounding presence for my entire time that I was on that show. So I couldn't be more grateful that I, I got to be his daughter on that show. It was very, very special for me. So, and I guess a story would be, you know, when, when we were on One Life, my friend Gina and I and my husband were like, you know, workshopping this script. And I was like, Jerry, be my dad, play my dad on this script as well. And he just showed up to like the table reading. And it was very apparent that we were in like the presence of somebody who is a very seasoned professional, like stage actor as well. Like he, it was like... Like even my husband who hadn't like met Jerry that many times because he wasn't at work was like, wow, he's kind, he's like special. He's a special man that showed up his own time, like to help us, you know, workshop this script. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. So true. Mm -hmm. um, Gina, Wendy Moniz, who also played Don and wanted to be here, but she got stuck on a film set and flying home to Los Angeles today, but sends her love. Oh, good. Um, Michael, um, did you watch Jerry on both One Life to Live and Guiding Light? Yeah. So the weird thing that I just realized listening to you all talk is that I, so a little bit history about me and Soaps that I started off watching the NBC shows. Like I grew up as a little, like a five-year-old watching Days of Our Lives and Another mm -hmm. World. And I watched Another World until it was canceled. And then my two o'clock slot was free. <laughs> 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 and so I started watching One Perfect. Life to Live and I was like oh and there's another show that's on at like 10 in the morning that oh, yeah. click with anything so I started watching One Life and Guiding Light at about the same time okay. um, in like the late like 98, 99 um, and so I have like a lot of memories of Jerry as Clint and as Ross on right. both shows um, and he for me always had this really sort of elder statesman sort of quality to him yes. that, that he really sort of like, I always got the sense that he was like one of those characters who had been around for like a really long time and probably had like storylines that had gone from A to Z. Um, and so I always like was excited when he would be on the screen because I knew something was going to ex exciting happen, especially because when I started watching Guiding Light was right around the time when um, Ben Warren came on the scene and then there was all that stuff between Ross and Blake and um, 
and then and then when Ro- when Ross shoots Blake when he catches them like in bed together, and, I just, <laughs> and he just played all of those scenes like so well, and you and I was just like, a, as a huge fan, and then I was excited also then of course when he joined One Life as Clint, so he 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 just was one of those because I like. And not just like a casual fan of soaps. Like I like subscribed to Soap Over Digest when I was in high school. I know all of like your husbands and wives. <laughs> so <laughs> good. Michael so, and I have bonded. <laughs> and so I was just like always excited when like I would see a familiar face on another show. Well, oh, and, and Michael has a show opening in March of 2023 called White Girl in Danger. Michael, tell us about this because I, I think it's brilliant. And FYI, we are going to plan an entire soap evening at the show with actors and producers and directors and, you know, being in the audience. So, um, yeah. So, White Girl in Danger is a, a musical that I've been working on for a couple of years that is drawn from my like childhood love of soap operas, but also Lifetime movies from like the 90s, like She Cried No, She Fought Alone, <laughs> Mother Night Sleep with Danger, etc. And it's um, set in a fictional soap opera town called All White. And in All White, there's two races and classes of people. There's the All Whites who have like all these crazy storylines. Yeah. And then there's the, the Black Round who have just <laughs> two storylines of slavery and Police violence. <laughs> and then one of the, the black round decides she's tired of, the, of those two modes and she sort of begs the writer of the universe to please let her have an all white storyline. So he <sighs> lets her become a best friend to Megan, Megan, and Megan, who <laughs> have um, uh, all the trope sort of problems. One's got an eating disorder, one's got an abusive boyfriend, and one's got a globe trotting mother who ignores her. And he starts to steal their storylines away from them. And then that's when the writer sends the all white killer after her. And the all white killer's identity is like a big shocker. And it sort of turns the story on its head. So, I mean, there's a lot, there's, and I know that's already a lot, but there's a lot more to it than that. But that's the sort of teaser. And, and when I told Michael about this show for Jerry, he told me that there was an homage. Yeah, there's an homage. It's a, it's a very tiny one that only, I would really know kind of to Dinah. <laughs> um, it's it's more from the time when Wendy was playing Dinah, but it's when she shot Heart. Oh, Heart, which, yeah. <laughs> because oh, the, yeah. Because the scenes when, when Dinah shot Heart, it was like so dramatic and it was so fabulous. And like, yes. I was obsessed with that moment. Also because I like loved Dinah and I loved Heart. And then again, when... And it was so soap opera. Yes. It was. (laughs) And then again, when I was so excited, well, A, I was, it was this this crazy thing of like, I was so sad when Gina left One Night to Live, but then I was so happy. (laughs) Was came on. Oh, right, because you, you as, didn't look at it. That's and, great. And what was and, really, and, and actually, know. there's an homage in White Girl in Danger a little bit to that because was in the beginning when uh, Gina came on as Dinah, Dinah was doing this thing where she was trying to recreate all the moments that Cassie had done when she first came to town in order to yes, get super impersonating people. Cassie. Right, yes. I started impersonating oh, Cassie. And so yeah. that's weirdly kind of what the protagonist of my musical is doing to the Megans. Oh, um, this is brilliant. brilliant. To imitate, it's brilliant, isn't it, Liz? It's brilliant. yeah, this is brilliant. <laughs> to, to, like, it never goes out of style. That's what story. kills me. It like never goes out of style. Never. Like that soap opera telling that that type of high drama. Yeah. It's just awesome. And oh, but so this is so fun. creative, Michael. You, you're, yeah. you're. It, it. I love how you're weaving all of this together. I'm, I'm, I'm so. I'm there. I'm a hundred percent. Oh, please yeah. tell me more. And yeah. I love it's, it's set to music. How cool is that? Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of music in it. It's like a. It's a very epic show. It goes to places you won't expect. Um, so I definitely hope that you all will come so check Michael it out. Michael and I are going to work on this. Um, I don't know if you're in New York or not, but if you're, if happen to be in New York. Um, if you happen to be in New York, um, 
definitely come check it out at second stage. Brie, in the Brie, you're in California, right? You're I'm in California. California. But I'll, I'm going to New York to see White Girl in Danger for coming. I'll keep you I'll keep you posted on that. Uh, from, Gina from and Brie, you both attended Daytime Stars and Strikes. Any memories of uh, the events and Jerry and Liz? The well, the bowling, the bowling, and the, the t-shirts, and the and the and the the craziness. I mean, we had so much fun raising money and auctioning stuff off, and it was always a good time, wasn't it? I miss bowling. Yeah. I I don't think I've been bowling since. <laughs> it it, it yeah. was fun. I mean, how often do you have events that are actually fun? Mm -hmm. Like oh, yeah. that. That's what I loved about it. It's like, oh wait, we all get to be together and connect. Holy. And just have fun, and it, it wasn't work. I wasn't. I didn't leave drained. You know, some sometimes right. I would sometimes, be drained, and yeah. would have to like. I need the next day to stay in bed. And it was like, no, this was yeah. just fun. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I don't think I've been bowling since either, but it was always fun. It always like filled you up, right? Like, right. yeah, you left and you like felt full. Cool. You're like, oh, I know. And Jerry was wonderful. He stayed the whole time. Oh, well, obviously he stayed the whole, the whole time. time. Like, I, I, I'm going to echo what Kristen said before. Was it Kristen? I can't remember. That he came around and made all of us feel like, thank mm -hmm. you for coming. And thank right. you for right. coming. And just so great. The gentleman, yeah. Mm -hmm. I've attended better. a number of things for people over the years. And, and I don't know that people have gone out of their way, like you've all described, of Jerry just going and saying thank you, but it's such an important, you know, I like hearing that. It, you know, just reminds me, you know, mm -hmm. we all, it's, it's, it's such an easy thing to do to say thank you for somebody showing up that you asked them to and, you know, and, and you all have Good. taken notice and you've all taken notice of that. It had an mm -hmm. impact, which I think mm -hmm. is, you know, can remind all of us in this day and age where things happen so fast and we don't, and, and oh, a little exactly. thing just goes a long way. And, and, uh, again, you don't, we don't remember really all the time of what we say. We don't all the, remember the minutia of what's said in a room in those, in those years, but you remember how somebody makes you feel. Yeah. And if that's something we can kind of just keep telling people, the young people, the young actors, whatever, you know, no matter if you're going into a situation, if you just don't know anybody, just pay attention to that. Who makes you feel a certain way? And then you too can share that love with others. You know, um, it's important. You know, Thank you remember you. that that's years gone by. Yeah, you really do. So that's what awesome. he taught me. You know, he did it very successfully. Yeah, yes, he did. You made it feel yeah. like this, this is, and this is your goodbye. And it's special to you. <laughs> yeah. And this is how I know you. And yeah, it's. Yeah. Michael, do you have a favorite Jerry on-screen moment that sticks in your head? Um, well, so it's the interesting thing about with Neon Guiding Light is that like, so I watched it in real time when it was on. And then I watched, then like, I found out there were all of these like YouTube things from before, like the older days. So I like did a deep, over the years, I've done like this deep dive on Guiding Light and so I think one moment that I was really ex was into, I think was before Liz was on when Carrie Springfield was doing Blake. And it was when Holly caught Ross oh. in bed. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I was watching that too. Well, Liz, was, Liz was a fan watching Sherry do that. <laughs> Honestly, I think I had already been cast as the, as yeah. the Blake. Yeah, and then, it started, like, the I, next but day. I had two months or three months before I was going to start. And I was actually watching the show right. and going, taking notes. Okay. Right. And I <laughs> and no one knew. I literally think, Liz, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that like those scenes happened and those were like her last scenes with him. They were. And then you stepped right in. Yeah. Like right after that. And was yeah. so great. She was supposed um, to have left about a month earlier but it just wasn't going to work out that because they had cast me to to because she wanted she left right and 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 they just kept delaying it going wait can you stay one more month because we need to we need to time this on the blackout and they and they kept delaying me i had been cast but they said well, wait your starting is date is now going to be august you know instead of july and and i was literally waiting in a in my friend's house in connecticut not knowing when i would actually start like, and, when am I actually going to start? And, yeah, yeah. And it's funny because, like, you, it's hard for me to pinpoint, like, a favorite 
moment because like he was so good with everyone. And he like, I, and it was one of those situations where it was like, I was rooting for his relationship with Holly and I was rooting for his relationship with Blake. And <laughs> I loved his relationship as a father with Dinah. And I loved his moments with Vanessa as like an ex-wife. And like, he was so mm -hmm. good with at literally everybody. Yeah. And so I, I can't really find like a favorite moment. He was so That, that is a perfect way to say it. Uh, Gina and Bree, before I forget and, and let you go, uh, they, we are coming back next year in person, so hopefully you can join us live. Ooh, are we going to bowl? What are we going to do? I, I think we are going to bowl, but Wendy will be in touch about all of that. Yay. Gina, okay. Bree, Michael, thank you for joining us, and we'll see you in New York at White Girl in Danger in March. Yeah. Of yes. Awesome. Yeah. Liz, thank, thank you. Thank you, Gina. Thank you, Bree. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Bye, Michael. Michael. Bye, y'all. All right, Mikey, Liz. Hey. Do you hey, want to stay around, Liz? Stay with? Sure. Mikey. <laughs> Whatever. Oh, yeah. Take it away, Mikey. Uh, sure, sure. Um, well, this is a special treat. I want to introduce um, my good friend, Crystal, Jessica, and Ricky Paul Golden to our uh, um, this wonderful this wonderful event to honor Jerry. Jessica isn't here yet. Hopefully she's joining. I know it's her daughter's birthday, so hopefully she'll be here. Hey, Crystal. Hey, Hi. Are How are you? Hi, guys. Ricky's in Mexico, so he's... Uh... Of course you are, Ricky. Oh. Of course you are. Of course. Uh, it's like Silence of the Lambs, the last scene when you walk down the road, you know, with a little hat. <laughs> With some fava beans and some Chianti. Hi guys, how's everybody? Oh, good. How are you guys? Oh. Good, good. We're we're Hi, good. Mikey. This is a big day. This hey, is a big Ricky. day being here. Yeah. yeah. Without Jerry, it's yeah. You know. For sure. I'm glad we're all together though. I need to touch base with all of you. I know. It's, it's been too long. Amazing. And, and Crystal, you you were really the last person to give Jerry on camera work with. Mikey. Yeah. Well, he gave me the, the privilege of his talent. <laughs> How I say it. Um, yeah, we did season six in 2019 and it was beautiful. It was yeah. just beautiful to hang out. But, you know, I mean, what talent, what amazing people and what talent. It was so much and, fun. And the, uh, Tell us about the role he played for people who didn't see Venice, because Mikey and he were absolutely. Mikey actually Hysterical. talked about this at, at Jerry's memorial, and it was uh, very funny. Well, I just, we wrote these two parts. Michael, was it Jim and Bob? It was uh, uh, Bob and Jay. Bob and Jay, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, and they just kind of worked this whole dance out. I mean, we just sort of gave you guys a structure, but you really went, and the two of you, and you found your attire and your persona. And then there was Jerry with the little hat and just looking at his thumbs. He found this yeah. like really introverted, geeky guy yeah. that you sort of yeah. couldn't help but love and laugh at. <laughs> And I got a chance to verbally abuse him, and and um, it was it was pretty funny. It was pretty yeah. funny, and that that was probably those two or three days. That was the last time I got a chance to work with Jerry, mm. and um, I, I, Crystal, I, I'm so appreciative of that um, mm. that you wrote that for us, and we had a chance to have that experience together. Well, it was it was. I, for me, look, it just gave me. Still thinking about it, it gives me all kinds of feels because I love you all so much. And yeah. uh, certainly, you know, Jerry, when I started to do the campaign for season six, I said, look, if you have any pictures or whatever that you can sign, he was sending me so much stuff. Yeah. He, it was, I would open a box and go, oh my God. And, you know, I mean, stuff that was so meaningful, at least to me. So, and I'm sure for him as well. But, right. Yeah, we had a blast. It was wonderful. It, it is a lot of ways. I mean, we think about here we are, all these, the show has been canceled back in 2009. And here we are, we're, we're still connected to each other. And because we did it through your, sh your wonderful show and we do it through these events and all these years later, I mean, how many, show how many soap operas, how many shows out there can, can say that? I'm going to go zero. I'm going to guess yeah. zero. Yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah, yeah. It, it, it's true. Ricky, do you remember meeting Jerry for the first time? Uh, yes, I, I do. Um, I when I first of all joining this that show was uh, it was amazing, and I think the first thing I thought about, by the way, when Jerry uh, departed with Liz, I thought about you because everywhere in every hallway and every on a on the couch or on a you know a sitting in for with a coffee or whatever it was always you guys running lines and <laughs> you were thick as thieves and I remember well I remember coming in the building and meeting everybody. Um, but with with Jerry, Jerry was like a father figure. I, you know, Paul Ra Paul Roush was like a father figure to me as well. But Jerry was was this father figure, and I was I mis yeah, I guess maybe a little misbehaved here and there. And uh, but if I saw Jerry, I'd have, <laughs> I'd have to straighten right up, and uh, I'd I'd be scared. But he never he, he was like a dad that just would have to look at you, mm -hmm. you know, and then you knew you had. You had to behave yourself, and you had to bring your A game. Um, the exact moment that I met him, it was just, it was like, it was in a, and I knew his face, you know, but it was in the makeup room, and I sat in the chair next to him, and I didn't know what to say to him, because he was like legacy, and I was just a peon. So I was like, <laughs> you know, uh, and i sure whatever I said was something ridiculous or stupid. Um, and, I, and on that note, by the way, I think the time that Jerry got the maddest at me a couple years later, was don't. This is terrible. I probably shouldn't bring it up. Um, but I planted. You can't do this. Well, you, I planted a fart machine on the set, and I had the button in my pocket, and I was able to just stand there. And I'm standing next to him, and I'm just pushing it, and it was really pissing off the the, the director. And I just I kept doing it. But the reason that Jerry, the reason he didn't give me up was because about a month earlier, that director had like, was riding me really hard. And Jerry's like, no, you should, what Ricky is saying, please listen to what Ricky is saying for a second, because he's got something he's, and I was, I guess I was not very eloquent. I wasn't, I wasn't explaining how I wanted it to go, but Jerry could feel for me. And he stood up for me, even though I had a fart, you know, and then so a month later, I, I got back at the director with the fart machine and he never gave it. He never gave me up, so I'll always love him. I'll always love him for that. That's Stupid, I know. More well, that I you, you know, uh, Ricky, you, you're the reason there's uh, Otalia and Venice, because when you left, Guiding Light wrote Olivia and Natalia together. I'd love to, I'd love to have just a piece of that credit. <laughs> It all belongs to Crystal, who is our <laughs> producing yeah. genius out of all of us. But, uh, oh, man, I know. They're, they're amazing and very sexy. And, uh, but, you know, I, uh, I would like to, I would like, I would like to create a new Venice with you, Crystal. Okay. <laughs> and uh, let's go. Um, uh, anything you it. do touches the gold. You know, that you guys were amazing together. Uh, and, and I love I love her very much as well. Um, yeah, that was yeah. all Crystal. Gus, Gus, Gus has a little kid with her. Um, yeah, I should have texted Jess earlier to remind her, but I know it's her daughter's birthday. Um, oh. Crystal, do you remember meeting Jerry? I mean, because you've been in the industry, you know, longer than when you appeared on Guiding Light. Do you remember meeting sure. Jerry this time? I don't remember meeting him exactly. I just know that. Um, you know, and I was listening to your panel before, and it, it's it's so true. I mean, I, his dressing room is right across the hall from mine, and he would come in, and there was just this sort of serene, calm vibe, and he'd play some music, and you get a Jerry hug in the morning. And there was, like, genuine warmth, genuine goodwill. I mean, I, that was my experience with him. It was always like, you know, just made your day. It was going to be okay. Everything was going to be okay. That's what you felt like. And the air that. purifiers. I always had a, <laughs> he got me an air purifier because he always had an air purifier and I didn't know what an air purifier was. Yeah. And he took out the cartridge and showed me how filthy it gets. I'm like, oh my God. I, and then a, a couple of weeks later, he got me an air purifier. Of course he did. For my, dress, awesome. for my dressing room. And I was like, yeah, look at my air purifier, yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, what do you both remember of the events? 
Stars and Strikes and, and attending over the years? I don't even know if I did, or maybe I did once or twice. Just you you was, definitely did, because I, I have a photo of you. Have a, this is, I don't remember what happened two days ago, so don't, <laughs> don't forget that. But it's, it's okay. just a sense of community. And I'm yeah. a terrible bowler. How can <laughs> so many times you and not get better at it? That's why you don't remember. Maybe <laughs> that's just blocking it out, but yeah. It's that sense of community, you know, and I just, I, even though I don't bowl well, I like the sounds of the pins getting knocked down. It's just, <laughs> just, she put up the little weird. gutter, you know, the kid, no. I use the kitty gutter things. You know, I don't bowl. I need the bouncers, the bowling bouncy things. Yeah. yeah. But I'll show up and I'll throw a ball. It's fine. Good, good, good. <laughs> Ricky, what do you remember? I just remember, like, if I didn't go, and there were a lot of times I wasn't able to go, but I'd have, I'd have to deal with Gary on the phone. I feel terrible. He's like, really? You're not going to go? Mm -hmm. And I go, I'm, I'm co I am going. And I meant that I was I'm definitely That's going. <laughs> I didn't want to get in trouble. With, yeah. Or with you, Liz, either, to be honest. So if I could make it, I could make it. But also, I appreciate that. Your stick to it, um, your stick to itness, you know, with, with every every season doing it uh, and being so diligent and all and that was the same well both of you your work ethic both of you too that rubbed off I me mean, you know we i think when i was uh, when it was dustin harley we wanted to be you guys you know we wanted to be as classy as class and act a class act as you guys i mean we never quite pulled, pulled that off but we, <laughs> we tried oh honey i i think, Liz, I think we, brilliance i think that we pitched uh I think I pitched like where I wanted, we wanted to be a couple for a minute. Oh, <laughs> I mean, yeah. maybe that was just me, but <laughs> I'm like, that would be so amazing. You remember, was it, what, didn't we try and nobody would listen we, to we, 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 we had, had we, one scene, did we kiss? Yeah, no, but we talked about how we could may, maybe give them an idea. Let's give them, yes. let's give the oh, writers an idea about this. Yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah. 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 Well, you know, maybe Venice. Crystal, um, <laughs> season seven. Tell, tell the fans how they can help support season seven. Thank you. Yeah, um, we're doing another Indiegogo campaign and um, you can go and check out what we have there. All kinds of little Venice hats and shirts and things like that. But yeah, the goal is to shoot sometime in the first half of next year. Almost in. Fans, fans will love that. And Ricky, you have a film that just aired on Hallmark? Oh, yes. Uh, yes, yes. Actually, I'm so sorry it's noisy here and I'm on the street in Sayulita, Mexico. But uh, this is where a book was written. It's so that Ricky, I though. It's so Ricky. Sorry. <laughs> and by the way, Liz Keeper, if we had had a kissing scene, I would have remembered it. That's why I didn't remember it because we didn't have it. Okay. But um, no, the book that, was, uh, that we optioned was written here. And uh, in, in it's, a, it's a surfing movie, and it's on Hallmark now. I'm sure they'll air it 40 times. It aired this, uh, September, and it was the number one movie for Hallmark. Very proud to say. What and, is it and, called? I don't know. Hey. It's called Groundswell, and uh, it's a beautiful little movie. We actually uh, ended up shooting it in Hawaii. Uh, we wanted to shoot it in Puerto Rico or here, but we ended, in Hawaii, and ended up in Hawaii. Crystal, you would have dug that set. Michael, you should have been in it. Uh, uh, I okay. Anyway, we'll talk. But this thing was um, number one, thank God. I'm sure, I don't know how long that'll last, but it'll be on. They'll air it a lot, and maybe you guys can catch it if you can. So yeah. That comes, yeah. It's up to. That's great. Congrats, Ray. foodie surf movie. So it's, uh, I, could, I could say who wrote it. Uh, 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 Katie Lee, who's a pretty famous chef now on the, on the, on the Food Network, wrote the book and um it's about a girl and i'll just say briefly it's about a girl who's breaking away from her fiance sort of a, a bobby flay type of guy who's uh, living in his shadow and she breaks off and she takes gets on a plane and and goes to uh he goes to surf and falls in love with the she goes she goes from a guy that's got everything to a guy that's got nothing on a surfboard and she learns about herself in that journey and you get it but it's uh, came out oh, very sweet yeah very nice. Right. And, and great, how right? are your kids and, and grandkids? Oh, yeah. No grandkids yet because, you know, I started later than everybody. 
And, uh, and now I've got so much more respect for everybody when I was uh, living in a bubble when I didn't have kids. Uh, <laughs> I've got a five-year-old and 11-year-old, and I'm dead inside uh, oh, wow. from, these, <laughs> from these children. No, I, I could not love any human being except for Greta. I could not love any other human being more in my life, which is very scary. They're not here with us because we took a little weekend. And all I do is call every 10 minutes. Besides you, Alan Locker, I, I call, I'm calling them to make sure they're fine. And guess what? They are so much, they're fine. They don't, it's yeah. me that's the problem, right? It's, yeah. You know what? And I just got to share this. Crystal, this changed my life. You brought me into your dressing room once. I didn't even have kids. I don't have kids on the show. Fake kids that got, you know. <laughs> <laughs> that I that I would pay a dollar to make me a coffee, my own kids on the show and then send them on their way. But I used to hang out with Crystal. I always loved Crystal. She she brought me in. You were reading. Am I saying his name? Cabron, right? And yes. you were saying oh, children, the children come through us. Do you remember telling me this? And it was on, yeah. it was on your. They come through us, but they don't belong to us. Right. Uh, and and it goes on and on. Of course, I went and read that because of Crystal, and it's it's so true. You can't control. You know, they are who they are, but all you can try to do is keep them safe and, and give them as much opportunity as you can. Uh, it's a whole different me, you guys. It's a, it's a whole different human. It's a whole different human experience, something I, uh, I'm very glad I did. I've got the best partner in the world, too, with Greta. Awesome. Um, uh, you know, so we, we got, why am I sweating to death? She's protecting me now. I know, I'm a sweaty... Hi, everybody. And Crystal, how are your, your boys and, and your grandchild? Great. Um, you know, I love that quote, Ricky, because it, 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 it's become into my life so much in the last, like, few years. Because Jacob got married um, oh during the pandemic. He um, went through the fire academy. He got a, a local job that he loves. Uh, baby boy Zeke, uh, he's just turned one years old, and oh. Jake is a great dad, and Grace is a beautiful mom, and, and and we love being grandparents. It really is true. You kind of you get the snuggle, you get the love, and then you get to go and eat. Yeah, and go home and sleep. <laughs> no, but, um, no, it's it's a joy that I never knew existed until Zeke came along. And then my youngest is a sophomore in college, and he's loving it. He just loves studying, and going to school, and he's a barista, and he's he's enjoying his nineteen year year old dumb. So, imagine having a cool nana, or what do they call you? Because like I Crystal went with Graham. Is your is your grandma? I'm Grand. Really? That's amazing. Grand and Pop. Oh, oh so Grand and Pop. Um, yeah, it's fantastic. I yeah. recommend it. That's awesome. <laughs> well, Ricky, thank you so much for coming from Mexico. Crystal, stick around. Uh, bye, Rick. Thank Ricky. you. Bye, Michael. Thank Michael, you, Ricky. I miss you. Bye-bye. Uh, have a great time, Ricky. <laughs> oh, oh, I always when I see Michael's face. All right, all my love, everybody. All my love. Bye-bye, guys. All right, Mikey. Well... I just uh, uh, want to introduce, um, in fact, they don't know, don't need an introduction, but I'm going to introduce them anyways. Um, my good friend, Robert Newman, Laura Wright, and Kim Zimmer are joining us today. Hey, gang. <laughs> oh. Hello. Oh, my gosh. We're, uh, can you hear me okay, Alan? Yes, we can. Good. We're uh, Britt and I are up in Massachusetts babysitting this weekend, and Britt and Leo are off at the uh, park. And so this is Rocky Joseph, and Rocky's about five months old, and I have no idea if this is going to work well or not, but <laughs> here we are. Oh, that's a picture right there. Wow. That's cool. That's great. Crystal, it's great to see you, though. Trouble. Uh -huh. and Laura will be here, and here's okay. Laura. Do you need me? Laura, right? No. Where's Laura? Oh, I cannot hey, believe Laura. it. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, everybody, for being here. Oh, wow. This wow. is so, so great. So I may be moving around a little bit on this one, but uh, but we're That's here. Okay. That's okay. That's <laughs> okay. Oh, I need Zimmer. Thank There's you. everybody. Robert, well, while you have him, you know. I, I'm here, but I can't hear. I can't. 
It, the sound, my sound is terrible. Can you hear me? Can you, yes. yes. Uh, you know what? I'll, I'll, yeah, I'm going to text you in a minute. I <laughs> Robert, why don't you start and, you know, share memories of Jerry? Oh. So, uh, yeah, I was watching a little bit earlier and I was just thinking about um, pretty much a lot of what everybody else has been saying about Jerry. You know, I was watching when you had Kathleen Cullen on about an hour ago or so. And uh, Amanda and Ross and Josh, I think, am I wrong? We're Los Tres Amigos. We formed our own oil company at some point. Yeah. And, yep. um, I, you know, I don't know how to say anything new that hasn't been said about Jerry, but, you know, he was a mentor to all of us, mm -hmm. I think. Um, and just always the most prepared, uh, one of the finest actors I've ever worked with. And uh, I just can't imagine a better man. And I, and I would say later, I don't want to get into the too much information thing there. <laughs> Look at how low my shirt is unbuttoned. Oh my God, <laughs> what's happening there? I think that might've been during a, I'm going to hope that was during a show and that was a concert, uh, a costume. <laughs> um, uh, but um, without getting into too much information, Jerry and I talked a lot about what happens as you get older as a man. And uh, he really helped prepare me for a lot of issues that I've dealt with in the last four or five years uh, medically in my life, uh, just because of conversations we had about things that he was going through himself, mm -hmm. uh, probably when he was about the age that I am now. How old was Jerry? How old was Jerry? Liz? 72. Just now, 72. Yeah. So probably about the time, maybe a little before that even. But, but you know, he was always somebody that I felt very safe with. Uh, talking to about practically anything. Uh, I have also, I also need to credit Jerry for my, uh, my 12 years as a union leader uh, on the national board of AFTRA and then SAG-AFTRA because Jerry was the AFTRA deputy for our show for many, many years. And at some point, uh, he just needed less work on that. And so he sort of mentored me into becoming that. And I became the after deputy on our show. And from there, I went on to join the national and the local boards of AFTRA. And then from there, went to be elected uh, after the unions merged as the first uh, vice president in the category for actors and performers for the new union SAG-AFTRA. And all of that goes back to Jerry because he taught me the value of caring about the other people on the set and fighting for the other people on the set. And, mm -hmm. and uh, he and I both did that side by side for many years. And then he led to me continuing to do it in the boardroom. So I, I, I owe a lot to Jerry for doing Nice. Yeah. Laura. Oh gosh. I think that I was thinking about this when I was walking my dog and running late. Um, <laughs> the, the, one that stands out <laughs> the most for me um being around Jerry at big events, he was always like so much fun on set. And I have to say how much he adored Liz always stood out to me. And I remember one time being on set and this was the event. I can't believe it's this exact um, show that he was talking about how important it is to take care of your leading lady. Oh. And how much he loved Liz and took care of Liz and so respected what they had on camera and the friendship they had off camera um, always stood out to me and um, just spoke volumes to me on the kind of man and the kind of integrity he had. And that really is what stood out to me is how much he loved Liz. I mean, as much as everybody else, of course, but you know how much he respected and loved her and their off camera and on camera working relationship was just lovely. Thank really you. That, that's very and nice. you too. You honored him as well. You guys like had such a great working, respectful relationship, and it was really wonderful to see. And it's why the fans fell in love with them. You know, it came mm -hmm. across. Yeah. On the came across. And Kim, you luckily got to work with him twice on both one life. Yes, I did. Can, can you hear me? Can you yes, hear me? Yes, we can. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You're good. Sorry, I'm still a little distracted because my Jets just crushed Miami. So, <laughs> <laughs> oh wow! 
Yeah. Sorry, to, sorry to any Miami fans, but yeah. <laughs> yes. but not but not really. I'm sorry, not sorry. And I'm <laughs> loud, and you're here. Okay. I know, and you're yes. here, yes. and you don't have a beer in your hand. On. That's a tribute to Jerry. Yes, you don't have a beer exactly, in your hand. Jerry and I used Jerry and I used to talk about sports all the time, so that was that was a lot of my memories of Jerry. He liked different sports than I did, but we still had we could commiserate on our on our fandoms. So, um, yeah, I got to work with him on One Life to Live too, um, and and that was that was that was fun. I mean, that was that was fun for both of us because you know it was it was a, a different show and and a, in a different time and and you know. It was great. It was fun. And two completely different characters. Oh, yeah. Yes. <laughs> and the character was completely different than she had originally been in. The oh, there we are. Oh, look yeah. at you guys was look that, great. That's awesome. Was that, was that as Clint? Is that him Look as at Clint? your hair. Yeah, I believe it is as Clint. Yeah. Yeah, that is Clint. Yeah. Wow, I look so serious in that. I was such a buffoon on that show. <laughs> oh that's great he was just he he would try he I, like i said i i said i've said this many times before i would try so hard to crack him up but um <laughs> it, it, but he was he was the all the consummate professional but when he did crack up it was it was it was the biggest success of my life whenever i could get him to, to just corpse you know just oh, like curious. laugh and, and lose it and what? I'm curious. Do any of you like remember watching Jerry crack up? Like something that just got him? Well, he had a dry sense of humor, so he could make you crack up because he could just say something under his breath, and you would just fall over laughing. You know. Oh, That's God. why it was so much fun when you could get him yeah. to laugh. You know, it was a real yeah. challenge for me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. love, love, and, him. and I love, loved his him. little. Sorry, his his little. You know he's so wonderful. He's Uncle Jerry, and then he, and then out of nowhere, these like these these comments. He he could be he could have a wicked wicked sense of humor, oh, and it would yes. come out of nowhere, and it would oh, floor yes. you because you're not you're just not prepared for it. And 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 that's he was genius at. Yeah. yeah, I think I think my character Reva, and probably me personally too, was great fodder for Jerry's wicked sense of humor. <laughs> I tried to do. Love, I tried to make him. Front of Reva. Yeah, I remember trying to break him try, early on in Blake when he had the scene with the nuns where he had to give a speech to the nuns, I, and and it was written in that Blake was actually trying to distract him. She was. I was behind the nuns, and he's talking to the nuns, and yeah, I I tried. I tried. <laughs> I went pretty far too. I remember the camera guys going. Okay. All right. You just, this is your Blake now. <laughs> Cause, oh. cause, but he, he was, but it, he, it just made his performance even better. He, cause he right. could just hold it. He was a genius with that. Wow. Do you remember the time we did the Christmas where he had, to, I think it was at the, um, I forget the name of the hotel, but that uh, Cassie owned and we all had Christmas there. And he told the story about Santa Claus and how we pass it on to our children and how after you, you know, you um, you believe in Santa Claus for so long and then you become Santa Claus. And it was, I just remember we were all on set and I think it's when we had like three or four different Santa Clauses that year that everyone showed up to be Santa. Yeah. And it was so, um, I remember like, you know, cause we hear things over and over again. And I don't think he really even dressed the speech cause it was all him. And um, I just remember sitting there thinking, Oh my God, that's the most incredible written, you know, speech. And Jerry delivered it so well. And it, you, I just got called up in the magic of Christmas a month early because we always should have <laughs> all because of Jerry. And I loved that. Loved all, all the men were Santa Claus, basically. On yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and Kim and Robert, you were there. We talked about this with Crystal a little earlier when he did. Oh yes. Ven when yeah. he did Venice with Mikey. Yeah, that was fun. <laughs> yeah. Jerry and Michael came in with 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 uh, an idea that was <laughs> whatever those characters were. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Look at that we, hat. we lived in the tool shed. Uh, yeah. we, decided, we decided that was our backstory. There was sort of an unrequited love to that story between yeah, the two of you on that. Yeah, I was yeah. pretty sure. It took it took yes, a long time to find that thing. You guys look so much alike in that picture. 
It's crazy. What do you, Laura? I don't know that you ever were able to attend, but Kim and Robert about attending Ooh. daytime stars and strikes. Some of your memories I, of. I just, I just know that that was an exhausting day. I'm sure for both Jerry and Liz because they they went all out. I mean they they really catered to every between having to cater to the celebrities that were there and having to cater to the the wonderful fans who who contributed a lot of money to 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 be there um, you guys worked your butts off and and we all just yeah. got to sit back and have a great time and bowl and drink and do whatever we wanted to do but you guys worked so hard and it was much appreciated yeah same for me i, I just remember feeling in awe of both of you that uh, the amount of work that uh, the preparation work that went into it that I'm sure, you know, most of us were unaware of. The, the, yeah, well, that, the, a lot of that was Wendy, too. <laughs> I know. Did, yeah. Yeah. She did so kudos, much. Kudos, and her always elves. kudos to or, Wendy. And her yeah. elves, I guess they call them elves. And the elves. Oh, well, and the elves, correct. Are, uh, yeah. It, yeah, it was a, it was definitely a group, a group effort. And also, you know, I was thinking about this this morning. It was always at the end of the weekend. You know, we would have the, the fan club on Saturday and the bowling on Sunday. So it, I mean, right. it was a lot to get people to come uh, yeah. to right. do it. And sometimes the Friday night music performances, like it would be a whole weekend ordeal. So um, yeah. it, it was, a, we were very appreciative of, you know, everybody showing up because we were kind of dragging themselves by the end of the week. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I love that, you know, we're, we're still continuing the tradition to raise money for autism, but now creating the Jerry Verdorn Scholarship Fund, which will help yes. send individuals with autism to theater camps and other educational programs, which is That's just, so, it's perfect for, you it know, perfect, for Jerry. Yeah. Yes, definitely. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he's smiling, the, like it's got his energy all over it kids and helping and theater uh, it's, it's education oh it was just so much about education right. so um this is this this feels so right awesome you know when wendy again had uh, was spot on with with just speaking to what sorry what is Terry's all about awesome yeah is that you, Laura? Is that yours? Yes. Yeah. I don't know what's going on. Hold you on. and your dogs. I love your dogs. <laughs> it's great. It's Laura's dog. Love seeing Robert and Rocco there. Rock, Rocky. 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 My, my, young, my youngest just left. My youngest, but my second to youngest grandson just left. He was just here, so... Does, does, oh, does he watch football with grandma? He watches football with grandma. Who does he root for? <laughs> I'm just saying. Now, a Giants fan because daddy's a Giants fan and grandpa's a Giants fan. So they're Giants yeah. and, and, the, and we're Jets. And we're trying yeah. to get Reed, Reed to be a Jets fan, but I don't know if it's going to work. But we try. I got Bobby in the other room doing the Giants right now. So. <laughs> Oh. Please say hi to Bobby for us. Oh, I will. Please I will. Please, I will. Please, please, please. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Hi, Crystal. Hi, Kim. <laughs> How are you? Yes. It's good seeing these faces all together. The family. Oh, yeah. this is so nice. And it's I needed so this. I needed to see all of you to connect to this. Let's do an invitation. This is a big That moment. was the other thing I was going to say this. about, yeah, the, the event was not only was it amazing for the fans and we raised money, but it was always a time that we could all reconnect at some yeah. level and that you never knew who was going to be there year to year to year or right. who was going to be at which event, whether it was the karaoke thing or the bowling thing or the this thing. Yeah. And that was that was a gift from both of you, from including Wendy, all three of you to uh, to all of us. It was that was just uh, priceless kind of stuff. Yeah. There, to be able to see people. Well, one of our fans, Dinah, said, uh, it's not just you. We all need this. And she's very Aww. beautiful. Yeah. She's right. She, she yeah. is. Yeah. Well, I know we're waiting on one other, but one of uh, your directors is here to say hello. Uh, please welcome Joanne Sedwick. Oh, 
Hi, Joanne. Oh, yeah. Good job. Now, now I can blame my uh, your dog for my barking. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Wow. So great to see Hi, you. Joe. Yeah, Joe. so lovely. And, and now Mr. Bruce Barry. Oh, Bruce. Hi, Bruce. Hey. I'm early. I'm early. I don't why am I here? I shouldn't be here. Right now. <laughs> what a nice bunch of friendly faces. Hi, everybody. Hi. Hi. Hi, Bruce. Alan, do you want me to come back later? No, no, no. You can stay here. You're you're on now, and then we're gonna, come back we're later. Gonna, I'm going to go, but I want to say, Joanne, do you still live on the golf course? No, actually, we're a little further north. We're in Branchville. Oh. Okay. Hi, Joanne. Bye, Bye and, Sparta. And Bruce, Bruce, I'm going to kiss you, too. <laughs> <laughs> Crystal, hey, thank you for spending your time. Hi, Kimmer. Thank you so Hi, much. It was so <laughs> wonderful Kimmy. seeing all Tell of you. Tell me when you come in town. I want to play pickleball. Pickleball, pickleball. with you. Pickleball. Pickle, pickle. Yes. Okay. Me too. Yes. Uh, to all of you on Facebook, I enjoy your posts a lot. <laughs> yeah. I, you're, I love seeing your name pop up. <laughs> And, and right, that is Robert now? and his grandson, Rocky. Oh, all right, guys. God. Love Bye, you Robert. all. Bye, Bye, Robert. Thank you so much. Bye. How did that happen, Bye. 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 Robert? Thanks for your patience. <laughs> Bruce is asking, how did that happen, Robert? <laughs> this is, this is uh, Bruce, this yeah. is uh, Rocky Joseph. Rocky Joseph. Five months old. He is Connor and his wife Caroline's oh, second son. Oh, jeez. And right now we're up babysitting in Massachusetts, and Britt and Leo Robert who is turning two on Friday, uh, they're out and about now. Oh, but, that's uh, awesome. You're going to have to meet them all in person at some point. I, we'll yes, work that absolutely. Out. Wendy and I will Joanne, it's, to it. it's so good to see you, Joanne. And I just on, hope Robert. everything's Hold great on, in your Robert. life. Also, please welcome Jill Laurie Hurst, everybody. Oh, my oh, God. Hi, guys. Hi. 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 Hey, it's Jill. a grown-up table. It's a grown-up table. Hi. Yeah. Well, to all three of you, before we break, I just want to say all of you impacted my life, my career, and my journey as an actor in different ways. And thank you so much for everything you brought to my life and the lives of others. Yeah. Really, it's so good to see your faces. Yes. Joanne, you put up with so much crap from me, and I thank you for that. <laughs> I feel like I've calmed down since then, but uh, <laughs> thank you for all the times that you put up with nonsense. Thank you me. for everything, everything. We're Bruce, great. thank you for uh, directing my my screen test and my very first set of scenes. And Jill, just all the conversations we had over the years, whether it was at the Daytime Emmy Awards or... <laughs> Or just standing in the Robert, hallway or off the set. You were so good to my grandmother when she came to the set. I will never forget it. <laughs> Grandmothers love me. <laughs> they always love me. Oh, <laughs> me and Michael. Yeah. Grandmothers love me and Michael. <laughs> Absolutely. All right, Thank guys. You, Robert. Have fun. Bye bye. Are you leaving? It's your it's your time, Bruce. Yeah. So, um, Bruce, Joanne, um, I would say you. You know, first of all, you were with Jerry as, you know, both of you have been with the show as long as Jerry had. Um, talk about Jerry as an actor, directing Jerry and, and the partnership that I'm sure each of you created uh, differently, but also uh, with so much reward because of what he delivered. Well, Jerry was the sheriff, you know. <laughs> no, no one ever questioned if he said something was grammatically wrong. Oh. That was it. And if something didn't feel right to him, he would say something, and the producers listened. So he was quite the—he was quite the personality. He's a heavy hitter. <laughs> well, uh, he was the most pleasurable, uh, aside of all of you, rest of you, uh, one to work with. He uh, was a consummate uh, actor and loved acting, loved actors, loved directors. And um, it was just so easy in our day to work with Jerry. Uh, anytime, any, and under any situation, no matter how difficult a script it was, he was always there. He was the most supportive um, actor I could ever remember having. Um, of, of course, besides Robert, who just left. I should, you know, <laughs> if you're still listening. <laughs> But uh, don't you agree, Joanne, that when we had Jerry on for our day, it was an easier, it was a much easier day because of that. Yeah. 
Yes, you didn't worry about strange things coming at you from odd angles. <laughs> you, could, you, know, you could concentrate on the strange things and, and because you trusted him so much. Yeah, we did trust to him. Look, to deliver. He was yeah. always, and yeah. he connected. Yeah, yep, he sure did. Uh, and, and this is so wonderful, Alan, that you're doing this show um, and raising money for autism, which uh, uh, is just terrific. I hope we're doing well. In the we, fun are, we are. We were doing well, well before, and I hope people watching are continuing to donate to the Autism Society as well as the Jerry Verdorn Scholarship. Because, yeah, uh, it, it is amazing that we are, you know, in 2022, you know, uh, 11 years since Guiding Light went off the air, right? Wow. Uh, uh, 2009. Wow. 2009. Right. 2009. right. 2009. 13 years, my, 13 years. my math. Wait, no, let me think. Yeah, I think at that Yeah, it's 13, correct. Yeah. 2009, December of 2000, or September of 2009. Um, yeah. and, you know, the fans, the love, the connection that this show brought to everybody. Amazing. You were a receptionist when you first met Jerry. <laughs> yes. <laughs> what, you know, talk about. Just petting your, one of my dogs. Let's talk about your, your, your friendship over the years. Well. I, I wouldn't say, I didn't know Jerry that well, but I benefited from, and I think that's a, a wise thing. He was always very, okay, when when you're at the front desk, and or that's it's the best job in the world because you really get to know what a place is all about. You really, really do. Um, and, and a guiding light from Betty to Locke Wallace with the actors to two of these people here, Bruce and Joanne, there was a standard and there was a, there was, you, you knew pretty quickly that there's a really high bar of, of grace and generosity and fun. And, and it was, and Jerry led that with the cast. He, he just let you know that you were so lucky to be in the best possible way. It's wonderful to be here. Come on in, work hard and you can stay. And it was a wonderful thing to see him. As a writer's assistant, I got to know him a little bit better because he would very politely and in a grown-up way ask for the occasional change. And mm -hmm. um, I remember going to deliver one of them, and he generally, because they were such intelligent requests, he got to have the change made. I remember taking one to his dressing room and he looked at it and he smiled and he's like, thank you. And I said, yeah, I, I think this, I'm, you know, he said, yeah, it, it works. It really made, and he said, he looked at me and he, was, he just said, when we're good, we can change people's lives. And he just said it as sort of a Jerry thing. And I carried that with me yeah. always. And the responsibility of doing what we did, he really let you know that. And, he, and, and, um, I, I think everyone who worked with him benefited from seeing him every day. Whenever you worked with him, he was wonderful. Like all of these people here. So anyway. And, and yeah. Bruce and Joanne, did you direct any of the um, election? No, that was Bruce, right? That was his yeah. wedding election. election oh, blackout. That was, you know what? That was 30. <clears throat> I choke when I say that. 30 years ago. Uh, uh, 1992. I still have the Marler for. Uh, I have the <laughs> Marler for. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I have the button. I bet you do, Joanne. I, I, bet you do. <laughs> I remember those t shirts that had the picture of Ross and Blake. Yeah, oh. that, that that were splashed on the newspapers, and all the, all the reporters were wearing those T-shirts. I love the dress that you wore in that, Liz, the, the, the sequence. Everybody was wearing those sequence dresses, and yeah. what a nightmare that show was. <laughs> <laughs> and I just remember Maureen Garrett in, like, seaweed. The seaweed, scrubbing seaweed. herself with a with a She's metal brush. Brilliant. Yeah. Yeah, well, it was... Who was, it was in the gold Speedo? Was it Grant, or was it... No, that was Rick Hurst. Yeah, Rick Hurst. Yeah. <laughs> Alan Michael, and we yeah. were in a hot tub together. Yeah, I had, well, yeah. he wrote some script. I had a, ba a baby doll bikini that Rachel Miner. <laughs> we had the exact same bathing suit. That's and hysterical. Was, we we need to I mean, mention this was Rick. Like a nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> when Rick is on, let's bring up his speedo. <laughs> when well, he's on um, later, let's bring up his speedo. Yeah. Um, talk about you know Jerry uh, and. and make you know breaking the fourth wall and the christmas you know the history of that with him because i i the assume, christmas crawl yeah yeah bruce and joanne 
uh, the Christmas crawl and Jerry talking, you know. Because he did it so well with such kindness and such grace. And I think it was important because he everybody felt seen. He connected so well when he broke the fourth wall that people just felt like they were talking to him or he, right. he was talking to them, actually. You know what? I think even uh, as Ross Mahler, um, without breaking the fourth wall, he was breaking the fourth wall because he always reached out to the audience. I think that he had this presence to, with the audience that it didn't matter if he was Ross or if he was uh, um, Jerry Verdorn. Um, he was still as honest and um, real uh, as anybody could possibly be. Um, and I think that was a real gift uh, that the audience recognized. They, they saw that. Yeah, absolutely. But it was a special time at Christmas time, of course, always when, when he, when he uh, just spoke to, um, spoke to the audience. And uh, it's just well, a wonderful it connection. Always, it was always such a production to get the Christmas, uh, the end of the Christmas show. It was such, uh, you know, of biblical proportions to get everybody there and everybody talking and everybody looking happy. And it was so nice to hit Jerry at the end going, oh, we made it. <laughs> <laughs> Michael, you're in the kitchen? O'Leary? Yeah. You're in the kitchen. I'm in the kitchen, yeah. I just want you to go over to the stove and pick up a hot pot. Oh. <laughs> You want, share, you want to share that story? <laughs> we, we were doing a scene one day, and he was in uh, the Bauer kitchen, of course, as we always were. And uh, uh, during the scene, he was uh, talking away and busy cooking. And he goes to the oven, and he opens up the oven, and he goes in and grabs uh, the, the cast iron pot and puts it on the stove. And I said, cut. And he said, what? We're doing great here. What's wrong? <laughs> I said, I need you to add one line. Uh, he said, okay, what is it? Ouch. <laughs> <laughs> he, he didn't use a, a pot. Okay. Right <laughs> uh, no, anyway, uh, one of my favorite Michael O'Leary moments. Uh, I love that. Do you, uh, Joanna, Bruce, have a favorite, uh, you know, a memory of directing Jerry in a particular scene that stands out? Gosh. I know it's a long time ago, so you know I'm just. Well, I, I would say I would say my favorite times with Jerry was when we were doing uh, courtroom scenes, and Jerry had these as a, as assistant DA or DA or whatever he was um, had these summation speeches that went on for pages and pages and pages, and there were no cues. Um, everything had to be done, and he always came to me and said. I just appreciate your blocking so much because that gave me an opportunity to reset my head where I am in the scene and be able to continue with all these with all these words that he used to have. I was amazed that anybody could say that much for such a, such a long time. You know, in theater, that's one thing because you're doing the show over and over and over and over again, so those words may come a little easier. But when you're when you're in daytime drama and you're asked to recite three or four pages in a row of dialogue and be able to get through it, it's a major, major accomplishment. And he was so good at that. Don't you agree, Joanne? Oh, yeah. he was fabulous. He was, and he just and he breathed it. But he also was. I remember when the Blake and Ross's kids, when he had uh, the scenes with the children, were fabulous. And the kids loved him. The, mm -hmm. the babies just adored him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 You know, um, uh, when um, we were talking about the people at Guiding Light that um, held, it was sort of a glue that held the show together. I just want to mention uh, Bobby Kochman as one person. And uh, Bobby, unfortunately, passed away this year. Um, but um, he was uh, always the one person that everybody could come to and talk to and, and you know, um, spend some time with you in his office and, and chat. So I miss Bobby a lot and uh, just wanted to say that. So he would have been here. He would have been here. He should have been here. That's for sure. Yeah. yeah. Um, but... But the election, you know, the election day show was was so much fun, uh, and and so many. It's so funny that so many people still talk about that show. Um, 
I guess because it was so unusual, but one of my favorite characters was Beulah Clark. Uh, Be Beulah Clark, was that her last name? Or Garrett, Beulah Garrett. Garrett, yes, uh, Be Beulah Garrett. Um, she was the... Uh, uh, she was a squeegee girl in the scene where she was squeegeeing the windows and uh, you know, gave gave Ross uh, uh, what for. Um, and, uh, um, you know, it was just some of those little moments in that show with uh, Maeve Kincaid and uh, Maureen Garrett uh, and Zaslow uh, playing against himself in, that, in those scenes where he was talking to himself. Oh. And Jordan Clark. I mean, it was just so many uh, wonderful. Every, you know, everybody was in that show. It was so much fun. Liz, wasn't it? It was, it was such a blast. Oh, it was. And I, I was new. It was very early on for me. And I, <laughs> I remember being like a deer in a headlight. I was like, wow, this is just fantastic. You weren't the only one with a deer in a headlight. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, but Jerry, you know, he's just, you know, it, he is, by the way, the one who taught me how to attach dialogue to the to the blocking like that's how we always even how we would prep our scenes in the in the in the dressing room would always be like okay move to the couch and then we, we would add it into our rehearsal and and like your your blocking was very helpful with that i just wanted to add that <laughs> but yeah yeah that election wow wow i just remember the hot tub <laughs> the hot tub, yep. hot tub. And the carousel, wasn't there a carousel with all? Yes, yeah, so we were all standing on a carousel, rotating around, and each of you would step off independently and then have a moment with Jerry and then what? step back onto the carousel again. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I haven't seen that show in ages. I really should watch it, um, <laughs> if I can find it. I'm sure it's you know, I, I just, I just want to also take this moment, Bruce and Joanne, and, you know, all the directors that are not with us today, but, you know, you guys – you know, now that some time has not even that much time has been removed since the show has been canceled. But when you step back and we could not have done these shows without you, you guys were the captain of the ship. They were everything you to the you writers. Were every, to the you were everything. Okay. Joanne and I were like this. I yes. mean, oh, we were so we were. And you got and you guys took I mean, for 80 something pages a day yeah. and you got through, you know, what, what a nighttime show takes eight days to do or seven days ago. And then you had to make it all happen in one day and the pressure to, to, to deliver that. And then but to put up what we were doing, Michael, we loved it. Yeah. yeah. And we that, that showed that, yeah. and that's at the top for everyone else. It yeah. really did. We love coming to work because it was because of all of you. I mean, it was just like, right. um, this is not an admiration society thing, but yeah. it's true. Uh, we knew we did our homework and um, we came in and had confidence that you guys would be able to pull it off. And, um, and amazingly, on some days, we did. We pulled it, we pulled it off. We you, made cer you certainly did. Jilly, I'm going to see you in a little while. I'll okay. see you later. Okay. Bruce, um, Hi, Bill. Ooh, and Joanne, stay yes, right does. where you are. I want to introduce three other Guiding Light alums. Please welcome Vincent Irizarry, Krista Tesro, and Terrell Anthony. Wow. wow. Hey, guys. Cool. <laughs> oh, my God. Hello. Hello. Look at Terrell. Holy I can hear it. Can you hear you? I can hear you okay? It's a scary group here. Wow. Wow. I have to see you in my glasses to see everybody. So I was at Farmer's Market this morning. And I heard. By chance, ran into. I heard. Frank DeCoplis. Frank DeCoplis. Yeah. <laughs> I know. I haven't seen him in 25 years. I see him on Facebook occasionally. <laughs> okay. okay. Hi, Jimmy. I'm sorry, Kristen. Who did you see? I missed it. Frank DeCoplis. Frank oh, Frank. Yeah. 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 Frank. Well, jo oh, Joanne yes. and Bruce, Bruce, thank you so much. Oh. I will see you Bye. later, Bruce. Bye, guys. We will. Oh, Bye, Bruce. Bye, Bruce. Bye, Bruce. Okay. Bye, Joanne. Bye. Good it luck. Wonderful seeing you for two seconds. Bye, seconds. buddy. Thank you. Yeah, thank Bye, you. Guys. Well, yes, thank so you good. for joining yes. us. Okay. I think Terrell's, I think, overseas. Vincent and Chris are in California. Yeah. Um, Chris, I know you have to run shortly. I, I mean, do. you were you were quite young when you met Jerry. Uh, yes. What? Well, uh, he was like the show's steady Eddie. 
Wasn't yeah. he? He was just one of the foundations of the show. That's how I've always looked. And J sweetheart, I mean, I'm sure I'm repeating what everybody else has said, but what comes to my mind is just a gentleman. And he was so gentle of a person. And so many crossovers when, when the audience would see, you know, the character, that was, that was Jerry a lot of times. Yeah. Loved him, loved him and miss him. Yeah. Daryl. Well, did you say Daryl? Yes, I did. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. I, yeah. I have this memory of Jerry when I was early on the show, I didn't have that many scenes with him, oh. but I remember yeah, having a scene with him. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good shot. That's cute. That's very cute. I remember having the scene with him and being so uh, awed by his, I don't know, his forcefulness. There was just a genuineness that came through with him. And between takes, I said to him, uh, being as vulnerable as possible, hey, Jerry, you know, I'm, I'm just brand new. I don't really know what I'm doing here too much. Multiple camera set, the whole business. And he had this way, at least with me, of taking this breath. He just, like he was thinking of something really important. He goes, well, it's going to be rough, but you'll make it, kid. <laughs> that's, Perfect. that's what he said. He had that gleam in his eyes. Um, he was always kind of close to pranking uh, me all the time. And I enjoyed that, you know. I love that. You know, Vincent, before I let yeah. you speak, I have to share that I... Um, you know, through this locker room and through Guiding Light Connection, I was asked to judge a film festival, a gay film festival in North Carolina last weekend. Cool. And one of the actors in one of the films, Jimmy and Carolyn, his name is Alberto Bonilla, worked yeah. on All My Children shortly after 9-11. Oh, wow. And he told me about the impact you had on his you know, work and career, just as Terrell's talking about Jerry um, and how he was literally holding a mug down here and you, all you did was showed him how to do this. And he, he just spoke with such utter respect for you. Um, and it just made me think that, you know, Jerry at a time where you were a teenager, like, joining the cast of Guiding Light and all Beverly and Bill Rorick and Larry Gates and all of those people who must have had that same impact on you. Absolutely. Every single one of those people that you just mentioned, absolutely they did. Um, you know, it, 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 Chris Bernal was another one, you know, um, so many of them that I, it, it, even if it wasn't them giving me direct, um, you know, uh, information on how to do something or, um, it was just watching them work and their level of professionalism, you know, that inspired me always because Guiding Light was the first TV job I had ever done. My first dance set was the first time I was ever on camera. I was only doing theater for like five years prior to that. So it was a, it was a new discipline that I didn't know, you know, exactly how to, how to do it. But it was by observing people like those that you mentioned, Beverly McKenzie, Larry Gates, all of them, all of them. Um, you know, I just, uh, uh, there was uh, Warren Burton was another one. I loved Warren. I, Warren was such a blast to have on set. And, you know, Jer Jerry, the thing about Jerry, and I loved what Chris has said, that he was the steady Eddie. He really was. I, I, I rarely, can rem I, I don't think I ever remembered him losing his temper ever on set. Um, he was just, he was always even keeled. And if there was something going on, if there was some tension on the set, he would always be the first one to have a quip, you know, that would take it down immediately and make everybody laugh. And I love that. I love that. But again, more than anything, it was the professionalism that, that inspired me as a young actor working television for the first time. And I'm sure that was the same for many of the people right here. We were all about the same age when we were working together at that time. You, 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 so. all, you all were. But it was so, it was just, you know, to see Alberto speak and the impact that's him right there oh that's awesome he, yes i remember he, his face i do he was your intern face. and i think you even um suggested because he had been there for so long that they finally give him a name that's <laughs> that's very cool very cool you know, but i mean and, and, it, it, 
It you is. Know? I mean, they, they, these people make it, you know, you, you all were, like you said, you all were young kids. Mikey and yeah. Krista and, and Terrell, when you met Jerry and, and the, you know, I, I kind of say it like, I shouldn't be surprised, but like, you know, it could be a bad day that you have working with somebody, but like, you know, to have that impact on you, to help guide your, sure. your path. I, I, well, think I, I would think that all of us have uh, memories of those that came in as day players throughout all the years that we worked in these shows. I mean, every single one of us, them included, we're all just cogs in the wheel, you know, and and I and I could see them if they especially if they were working hard to try and make it as best the, the, the scenes as, as good as possible. You, of course, you have respect for that and appreciation for that. And I, I know we've all had those moments with people that come on and you could tell they're maybe a little nervous or whatever and you just help to ease them you know and just say look at the end of the day it gets done just trust it you know so that's how i learned that very early on working on guiding light when i first started i was daunted by the fact that i had so much material when i first got my first scripts i was like oh my gosh you got to do all this but after a few episodes I, re I realized you know it gets done everybody goes home at the end of the day it's in the can you move on that's it so so true. Um, one of the fans said, Mindy and Rusty, one of the best compliment, I, I think they're speaking in Italian, best couples yeah. ever on the show. Oh. <laughs> oh, yeah. Thank you. Oh. Thank you. Well, I yeah, thought I so think from time to time, if Rusty had married Melinda, Rusty's life would have been totally different. Probably stayed in Springfield, had 10, 12 kids, you know, been, <laughs> totally different. <laughs> I don't know what. Well, that would you would have been number um, number five. Wow! <laughs> Did have There's a word for that. that. I won't use it. My <laughs> husband's a word for that. That. <laughs> <laughs> that is so funny. Yeah. The, yeah. Any memories of Jerry? You know, watching him work back then. Just I mean, always remember the power barbecue. <laughs> I'm sure that's been talked about a lot, and. Uh, and Liz, I just, I'm so sorry for your loss because I know you worked with him just so much more than any of us, really. Sure. Oh, wow. And, you know, I'm, I'm sad for you, too. I, you. Um, I appreciate that. He's, yeah. He's, it, there is an element of, I don't know, how do we do this without Jerry? I mean, I, I, I do, I, I have that from time to time. Like, I, I, right. how, how do we do this without Jerry? And I, I have to go find him out there. Because you know why? Day. <laughs> On the set... <laughs> he was always the gauge for what was kind of right and, and not, not professional. And when, oh, I, absolutely. you know, and when somebody would just do something, down. you know, just not very cool. He just had a way of recognizing it, but not, I don't know. He was just always the guy that I could always turn to and watch and know he would always make the best decisions. He was a leader. He was, I like what Joanne said. He was the sheriff. He, he, yeah. he just, he had that authority. He had that moral authority. Absolutely. Yeah. But, but well-deserved. Right. I mean, he, but he it was, was understated man. and he treated everybody, every, no matter who you were it, in, in, in the crew, in, in the, just even the, the people who were the workers in the building, that weren't part of Guiding Light, but they were coming in and 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 they were still helped to make make the day go, you know, function. He treated everybody with respect and the same. Yeah. Hey, Mikey, did did you tell that story about High Brown at the studio? And I don't want to give it away. Um, <laughs> he didn't. He didn't tell it today. You didn't. Oh, okay. Do you no. know what I'm talking about? Um, about? There was like a little dispute over the, uh, the newspaper. Somebody taking the newspaper. And... You know, I, I vaguely remember that, Krista. Want you should tell everybody. Okay, story. I think, and it was between Jerry and another actor on the show. Do you remember, Alan? And so they um, about who took the newspaper, and there was like a little argument. Anyway, you sent flowers. Oh, remember oh, that? Oh, oh well. Uh, okay, so, so no, no. You got uh, the story's a little mixed up. So I'll, I'll, I'll do the quick, <laughs> the quick version of this. We had no air conditioner at the old studio. It was we had those big fans in the hallway. Yeah, it, remember those? I don't know. Yeah. And it was so warm. And Peter Simon 
went to the studio supervisor and they had a screaming match. They were yelling at each other and oh. we thought they were going to go at each other. Peter, Simon of all people. <laughs> so we had to sort of pull them apart. So that was on a Friday. Monday, I come up and I see some fan had sent me these beautiful bouquet of flowers, just gorgeous. And I thought, well, I got to put these to good use. So I went to the floor uh, street uh, across the street, got a new card. And then on the, <laughs> on the card, I said, Dear Peter, I'm sorry about the misunderstanding about the air conditioning. I hope that we can make this. I want to make this right. Best wishes. And I'll skip the guy's name. I'll just call him Jim Smith. So Peter walks into the dressing room <laughs> on Tuesday. He sees the flowers. He goes, oh, my God, that's so I feel like such an a-hole. I'm, I'm going to go apologize to, to Jim. So he walks into this guy's office. And the guy jumps out of the chair and he's like this. And Peter goes, oh, whoa, easy, easy, easy. I just want to say, listen, I'm sorry about the misunderstanding about the air conditioning and thanks for the flowers. And the guy's just looking at him. <laughs> <Didn't say anything. laughs> Peter walks back to the dressing room and goes, I thanked him for the flowers. And he's just stared at me like I was an idiot or something. So... <laughs> anyway, a little practical joke on Peter, and you know, that's pretty which, uh, which I was accused of doing from time to time because we had a lot of time on our hands. Well, thank you for sharing your memories, Vincent. Before I let you go, the fans asking how you're feeling. Yeah, I'm doing. I'm doing great. I'm doing great. Um, in fact, I have a, a follow up with my neurosurgeon um, in about two weeks. Uh, so, but mm -hmm. everything's been fine. I, you know, I'm very grateful. He, he was. He's a wonderful surgeon. Um, it was, you know, it was pretty scary at the time when everything happened. It was certainly not the way that I thought I was going to be spending my March in this year. Um, you know, it all happened very quickly and um, completely blindsided me. And it, it developed into something much worse than it, at first um, they had diagnosed. So I'm grateful that, it had, that we did it. Everything's fine. I'm, I'm, I'm feeling great, you know, going about every day, doing the things mm -hmm. that I always do. So it's, it's good. I feel very blessed in that regard. Thank you. You're very welcome. Good. Terrell, Krista, Vincent, so good to see you three. Vincent, well. Thank you. Thank you for spending time. Thank you so much. Yeah, Thank be you. Be here with all of you. Thank Terrell, you. good seeing you. Good to Bye, see guys. you. Bye. Bye, Bye honey. Bro. My glasses Bye, back on. Turn off here. <laughs> How do I do this? There you go. I've got you. Leave. Oh, first the thing that says. <laughs> all right. <laughs> here we go. Okay. All right. So um, I guess um, we've got. For, um, it's amazing how many people we have today. Oh my goodness! So able to fit them in our five six hours. <laughs> <laughs> how long is this show? So I, 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 it's my honor to introduce Frank DeCoplis, Rick Hurst, Jennifer Roussel, and Amelia Marshall. Welcome! Wow! Welcome! Oh hi! Oh. 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 Rick, Rick, Amelia, Silver Fox. Oh my God! Okay, wow. so I have just stepped back in time. Oh, good to see you, Michael. Oh, Jennifer, good to see you. Wow. Oh, there he is. These are the beautiful women. Frank. Frankie. What's up, you guys? Guys, I've been going for four hours. I'm going to go use the restroom, but I'll be back. I love you. Michael, take it for a second. Okay. Uh, I'll be after you. Oh, oh my God. goodness. So I have to put my glasses on so I can actually see you oh, guys no. better. Glasses. Wow. See everybody. I, first okay. of all, I just want to talk about the hair that's happening on every, like everybody is, just looks delicious. Oh, I haven't done my no. hair in months. This is just for this, you know. <laughs> I'm I'm say, hair everybody's hair. having a good hair day except for Frank. Well, Frank, so what's Frank, with the Frank? Oh, what's yeah. with the with the be, the goatee and the yeah. mustache? I've never seen you with facial hair. Beautiful, well, though. Well, thank you. I yeah, actually, it I is. Just, I just actually came back from Alaska. I was on location filming a movie. So wow. um, nice. Yeah, yeah, and they wanted uh, the scruff and the goatee, so I've kept it on, and it seems to be working. So I'm liking it. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna put my vote in for it. Oh, thank you. I thought maybe you said you were gonna start wearing one yourself. <laughs> well, well let's go. <laughs> we're not gonna comment on that, are we? No, we're not. No, we're no. not. <laughs> so Jennifer, I want to start with you because 
um, you know, where this this show is a lot of the theme has been about how Jerry affected our lives. And, mm. and I'd love to know how Jerry affected your life on the show. And not just as a just as you know, a lot of what's been said today really is is, you know, beyond Jerry's professionalism and how he comport himself on the set. But what he, what he was like a person. What what did he mean to you? Well, first, I just want to give a big hug to Liz. So I just, I just can't, I'm sure you lost a part of your heart. Um, so I just wanted to say that working Thanks. so closely with someone for so long, your, your lives just meld. I mean, just, oh, there you go. So I appreciate that. Thank you. Um, but Jerry, I mean, are you, what are you okay? Yeah. Oh. Frank's having connection where he is. Jen's talking. So give yeah. it. Um, but Jerry, I mean, I'm sure it's been said already, consummate professional, just a class act, always, he was one of those people, and I've met maybe two in my life, and Jerry is one of them, that always said, always knew the right thing to say in any yeah. situation, just always had the, the right word, the right touch, the, the charm, the generosity, the down to earth quality that every moment needed. It, it, it just, it's, it's one of those it's a rare person and it's an astounding thing when you come across someone like that. And yeah. um, so many memories of Jerry, that twinkle he'd get in his eye when he was being yeah. mischievous, yeah. you know, and, and he loved to laugh and was uh, just one of those people that always set everyone at ease. And, mm -hmm. um, and as a young actor starting on the show, he was always such a comfort. He was always just a, a steady ship that you could just you, you just hold on to and he'd calm you, you know? And um, I remember one time I ran into Jerry. He had just come off the train. We were somewhere near Port Authority and um, I had just had a horrible audition. I had just tanked something just like royally. And um, I was in tears. I was just weeping. And J I run into Jerry and he's like, oh, honey, oh my God, what's wrong? He gives me this big hug. He makes me feel better oh. and like cheers me up. And he's like, but through it, he's like, you know, perspective. <laughs> this is an audition. The things that Jerry was going through at that time. And yeah. I, I remember him telling that story later, like, seeing you on the street corner crying about something so ridiculous and just wanting to slap you upside the head and say, chill out. You know? But that's very true. Amelia, well, for you? Um, very much the same. Being a young actor and um, Thank you so much. joining the cast of Guiding Light and having Jerry and so many of the others there providing guidance. Yes, as a craft guidance, um, as a company, the spirituality, the generosity, it, it is profound. And um, I'm not sure that I ever worked with a more um, professional, inspiring group of people. And Jerry was definitely, definitely a part of that. Um, he didn't, I don't recall him having, you know, such an impact on the Autism Society of America back in those days. I don't even think we were using words like autism. Um, but I was blown away when he um, became a part of that because it was ever, ever so important to me to start recognizing the research that was needed there. Um, I just, I don't know, I, um, I, I can only say what Jennifer's saying. He was that person um, on and off the screen and on and off the recording studio. So I'm so glad to be here today just to embrace him. Mm -hmm. And, and Rick, my friend? Yeah. Um, you know, when I first heard about it, and Lizzie, honey, I love you. I haven't seen you in so very long, and, and it's so wonderful to see your beautiful face. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was, it, when, I, when I heard about uh, um, Jerry passing, it was, um, it, it just, it's, it didn't, I didn't expect because it's been so many years. Mm -hmm. uh, but Jerry was always the kind of person that had that, that 
lasting um, impression upon you. Um, as you're hearing from everybody so far saying that, you know, whoever it was, he, he, he gave that person uh, their moment of importance. It wasn't, I'm more than you, you know, I'm, I'm here, I'm the contract player, you're the day or, you know, your mm -hmm. wardrobe, you're whatever. It, Jerry for me was about, when I watched him, I was like watching balance occur mm -hmm. uh, with everything in his life. Mm -hmm. I remember when he was first diagnosed, when mm -hmm. he was three. Mm -hmm. And how shocking it was for me as a young, young man to go, this could happen at this early age. And, and even though I think it took him off of his feet, he was always, Jerry to me is the guy who was like, oh, problem, solution. Let's take care of this. Let's move forward. Let's have, see how we can take care of this. Um, and I remember him going through radiation and not missing a step in the studio at all. We all were, you know, hey, how are you doing? And I was like, and he just was like, my world is this. This is what I have to do. And this is my job. And nothing's going to change mm -hmm. as far as that's concerned. Mm -hmm. and, and, and in a very tenuous moment in his life. And I just was so struck by that, uh, how, what an awesome human being he was. Um, his, his, his wit uh, in in rehearsal hall was my favorite. When the, I'll never forget the day. It was always known Jerry was the coffee cup guy and he'd always measure his coffee by <laughs> how many cups he would have. One day he came in, I swear to God, it had to have 10 cups stacked. Stack them. There was oh nothing God. odd about him. <laughs> in, you know, morning. And I'm like, about I'm that. myself. <laughs> Um, it's things like that that I remember about him. And hey, yes. hey Rick. Yo. Rick, can you guys hear me? Yes. And yes, Frank, that's in the middle of the best, story. The best things ever. Turn the hat to the sideways. Maybe you'll get better reception. <laughs> He's telling a story. Yeah, let, let Frank speak before we lose him. Yeah, yeah, it's all good. It's all good. You, you, you let Frank speak. Go ahead. Let him, Go ahead, Frank. Yeah, yeah. Oh, boy. Oh. <laughs> Mr. <laughs> Mr. All right, Frank. Got to. It's yeah. not working. It was, it was great. <laughs> Love you, Frank. Love you, Frank. <laughs> um, Rick, did you hear us talking about your Speedo earlier? Liz was yeah, talking. I mentioned your Speedo, <laughs> your Gold LeMay Speedo, because it was one of my fond memories. I just Thank remind you. you. Yes, that is it. Yeah, no, not even remotely in that place. Uh, but thank and you. I think we shot that around midnight. I just remember that scene, and you were so wonderful to me. Yeah. Oh, God. Oh, God. Well, I want to say one thing since Rick was talking about this, and, and you probably already talked about it um, earlier. Being called into the conference room, and Jerry was down at the end of the table. Yeah. Yes. And, when he announced to the cast. Yeah. And how brave. That's and as beautiful. you were saying, Rick, he just said, here's the problem. My wife and I have talked about it. Here's our solution. We're going forward with it. And I'm not going to skip a beat. And I just yeah. remembered, you know, as you said, Rick, just confronting this as looking at a young, relatively young adult. How could this be happening? Right. That, that yeah. doesn't happen. It yeah. just doesn't happen. But yes. And I will say Beth was a big part of all of that, too. Oh, yeah. Beth is... Oh, yeah. I mean, people don't understand the behind the scenes. Yeah, the, 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 the genius chance. Oh, my God. So. The other story, quick, that I used to love that we yeah. talked about, Halloween this time of year was his kid's favorite time of year. Remember the candy museum? He'd always talk about it. Like, <laughs> gather up all of their candy and dump it out. And he'd say, yes, the candy museum is in full display. Just <laughs> oh, God, you have good memories. I love it. Yeah, no, I have the odd ones. I have the ones that are just kind of like, that struck me as the humanity of him. You yeah. know, that's what I adored about him. And what then turn around and lay out the, the professionalism of playing an attorney, which by the way, no joke and no BS, as I went forward and I played an attorney later on, I, I remember that. And I didn't want any less than that anytime mm -hmm. that, I, that I approached uh, the playing something legal and, and, you know, trying to, oh, look, I'm playing a lawyer. It's like, you believed every, every second 
of what he was doing and what he was playing because he embodied that, but in his own sense and who he was, rather than trying to put something on, it's just he let things come out of him. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. He is such a beautiful man. Yes. Such a beautiful man. Absolutely. Liz, if you want to run, because I know you said. Um, you oh, let me run. take a, just, just let me run out. Yeah, I'll be right back. Yeah. <laughs> Any other memories? Um, Jen, I know you right attended back. Daytime Stars and Strikes over the years. Yeah. Uh, it was what just you... always so great to see Jerry <laughs> and everyone that was there. And uh, always such a welcome. And he was always so kind. And you look great. And all those, you know, he just knew how to make someone feel good, you know, and welcome. And um, he did such great work. And uh always up for it, always um, up for a good time and a challenge and a laugh and a tease and, you know. Absolutely. Really well, I think somebody who probably teased him uh, quite a bit, um, I will bring him out now, is Mr. Mark Derwin to say hello. Oh! <laughs> what well, guard there. You, you were <laughs> ready. I just thought I'd let you guys say hello before. Um, before uh, we move on, but Jennifer, Amelia, Rick, thank you so much. Rick, it's Mikey, I owe you a phone call. Uh, okay, yeah. good, buddy. okay, thanks, Ricky. Great to see all of you. Guys. Amelia, thank thank you, you for spending the time. Bye, and Amelia. Everybody watching, Bye, go to daytimestarsandstrikes.com and donate to Autism and the Scholarship Fund. Uh, look at that. Look at that. Oh, handsome. Oh, my God. Love that. <laughs> All right. Rick, okay. Amelia, <gasps> Mark Derwin. Thank you so much. Bye-bye now. Bye, bye, everyone. Bye. Okay. Bye. <laughs> just in time. <laughs> yeah, Mark, hi. In time. Hey. And Mikey, we'll come back to you if you need to go. I, I do. Yeah, <laughs> so we'll come back to you. Bye, pal. <laughs> All right. And here is Sharissa Shamora. <laughs> Doctor, no. doctor, sorry, Doctor <laughs> Sharice Doctor Sharice, I, uh, I was looking, up, I, I was researching you. I was like, I think ah. I have <laughs> It's been so long, Liz. It's been so long. <laughs> oh, Look at God. Mark pulling out oh. all of these photos. Oh, very good. Very oh, good. Oh, well, speaking of, you know, uh, Mark. Ah. Oh. oh, my goodness. Wow. Uh, that's fabulous. Yay. Um, Sharissa, you told me um, you and Mark worked together on One Life. And when mm -hmm. you were going to Guiding Light, can you share that story, please? Yes. So I was on <laughs> One Life to Live was my first job out of college. I was 21 years old. And I was um, a bartender on the show in, in Mark's bar and we were we just became great friends. And then I left One Life to Live and a few months later was so fortunate to get this job on Guiding Light, but I was still really green and new and nervous. And I remember talking to him and telling him who I was gonna be working with. And he was just like, oh, you are such a lucky lady. Mm -hmm. He is an absolute gentleman, gentleman. Mm -hmm. And he was so right. Mm -hmm. Finally. Do you remember meeting him, Mark, for the first time at Guiding Light? Me meeting Jerry? Um, I don't remember the first meeting. Um, what, did you, what did you and he bond over when you became? Um, I think, well, baseball, for sure. I, you know, I did. I went through, I have this big tub of acting stuff, and I was digging through it last night. I have a headshot of yours. I couldn't find it, Chacha. Uh, <laughs> back in the day, you were wearing that thing around your neck. So beautiful. I couldn't find it. But I was finding these little things. And like, Alan, this is us. Remember at that? I know, time? yeah. Oh That's gosh. a personal appearance. But um, yeah, we bonded over, um, I think, baseball. Um, he, I, I just grabbed He gave me this when I was leaving the show, Yankee Stadium. Oh. Um, and uh, um, I don't know. I mean, you know, we were such a tight group on that show. And everybody really – and I've talked about this on other – um, Alan locker rooms, uh, you know, it was such a good group and everyone got along extremely well. And if for some reason, uh, you didn't get along, you probably ended up getting killed off. The show. <laughs> so we had, a we had a very tight group. And so all I know is every chance I got to work with Jerry, uh, I was, I was beyond excited because I knew it was going to be so much fun. And, and not only, you know, I mean, cause uh, forget he's not only his talent, but 
he was so prepared that you could play, you know, you could go way beyond what they wrote and know that it's just going to be a tennis match or something, you know, and um, just hope I could oh, hang with him, really, because he, the guy was just, he was just brilliant. But I don't remember the first encounter, no. Yeah, no, no, absolutely. Um, Charissa, um, you know, coming between Liz and Jerry, you know, and, and you know, as you said, one life was, you know, you, you worked in Mark's bar. I mean, that must have been uh, intimidating to say. The yeah. Word. And I do remember the first day um, very much so because I was because it was, you know, I, I was fortunate to be on One Life to Live and I was on there for two years. But again, I was I think I was 23 um, when I got the job on Guiding Light and uh, Jerry had Liz had, you know, probably a decade of experience on me. And I remember being so nervous going into this very uh, like famous, well-respected soap couple. And I was like getting nervous thinking about it. I remember like walking on the set the, into the rehearsal the first day and Liz and Jerry were so warm and so welcoming. And he you know, I had a, most of my scenes with him in the beginning, and then it switched to being with Liz when I oh, yeah. um, tortured her. Um, <laughs> but in the beginning with Jerry, he was just, he treated me like an equal. And he, you know, when someone expects the best from you, you rise to the occasion. And I just felt completely comfortable with him because he created that type of environment. Um, you know, and I have to say that he, st I still think of him sometimes now I'm in a position where I teach and when I have students come in who like medical students who are very nervous and, and very, you know, sort of like intimidated by the work, I always try to be warm and welcoming and treat them like equals and expect the best from them because, you know, Jerry did that for me and I was able to rise to the occasion. So I definitely still think about him and in, in the work that I do now. And that's, that's cool. yeah, right, Liz. The again, it's the impact of all of this cross section of, you know, mm -hmm. what guiding light and the people you, you know, the paths that we've all crossed. And Mark, I'm reading comments from fans and it's the fans are writing, D wrote, Mark adored Jerry. They know, yeah. oh yeah, you know they know how much you two meant to each other. Yeah, oh, I love, I love to hear that. Um, I was, I'm pretty much vocal all the time, you know, about mm -hmm. my love for the man whenever I could be and will continue to be. Um, it's a devastating loss. It's uh, there's no way around it. Um, I mean, just sitting in the in the waiting room listening to everyone else talk, we're all just nodding our heads like, yep, yep, yep. yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, just yeah. they don't make them like that. They really don't. No. Uh, yeah, you, he did. He did love you. He loved you. He loved you. And Teresa, also, I have to say, you, you were very, you were so up to the task. We, you were so wonderful. I mean, you came in and 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 we really appreciated how professional actress, and smart and. I mean, you were perfect because you were just, you were a human being and we could, we could tell this story and care about each other and mm -hmm. tell the story. So you very much fit with our, our sensibilities, how we worked. And, and so we were very appreciative of that because, you know, so but, grateful but it's gone another way where we been like oil and water and we, and it wasn't. So that was. Well, it, and it's interesting because, you know, we would assume that Tori had some mental uh, issues, <laughs> you know, and now you, and now you are, you know, in that field. She Very interesting. Herself. And she's not the only character I played who had some mental issues. So mm -hmm. some, some inspiration there. Um, well, but it was, was fun. The inspiration for you becoming a doctor. Mm -hmm. I would say the, the real inspiration was, at, you know, and I've been thinking about this a lot and thinking uh, of Jerry um, since he's passed and, and what this means to him. And that, you know, the real inspiration was, was working with um, foundations like this and doing a lot of this work for children. I, I did a lot of these things with Mark when Mark and I were together on One Life to Live and trying to raise awareness um, 
um, and financial support for issues for children in need. Um, and often it was medical issues, but what I noticed frequently was there was a lot of co-occurring anxiety. And I, when I decided I wanted to transition careers, I really wanted to do some more direct work with children and families around anxiety work. And so that was the beginning. It was a long path, but that was the beginning of my inspiration for um, become a, becoming a psychologist and working with children. Wow. Bravo. Bravo. It's wonderful. I think my immaturity probably helped you too, right? <laughs> Definitely. I, I'm glad you still you have that. catalyst for it. I'm still I'm glad you still have that. Mark, are there any memories you know that stand out of you know your your one-on-one -on -one time with Jerry? Yeah, um, there's a few things. I mean, I I I, I would do any for the, anything for the man, and like I didn't I didn't really like going to the no no disrespect, but I I didn't really like going to the uh, the luncheon the fan thing because I didn't need any more adulation, you know, and I think some of the actors just live for that and they were selling their wares and whatever, all their, their, their CDs and stuff. And I, I don't know. I always felt these people were spending so much in their money. Uh, uh, I, I don't know. I just had a, I had an issue with that, but one year I went because one year Jerry came up to me and he goes, uh, I'm hosting. Will you go? And I'm like, that's, yes, okay. I mean, it's that simple. I'll do anything for you. But my other memory, and I, 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 I remember this card. Um, you know, I'll, always, but I could never find it in my acting stuff. And last night, my girlfriend and we were just tearing through everything looking for it. And I'm like, I can't. She's like, we'll find it. We'll find it. I go, I, just, I don't know. And then I thought, I have this. I have this. You know, the Book of Kells. It's almost like the Gaelic Bible. It's 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 beautiful yeah. those illustrations of Celtic mm -hmm. art and stuff. And my mom, my mother had given me one years ago and I, I have a habit of sticking important things in between the pages and I've done it for years. And all of a sudden it hit me. I go, I got to go look. And sure enough, I open up my book mm -hmm. of Kells and here it is. And just proves, you know, what it, what it meant to me. And um, I, I was, I think my last year on guiding light, I got, I don't know how it happened, but I was nominated for an, uh, an Emmy and I was up against all the big guys. Me and Zaslow from uh, Guiding Light, uh, Bob Woods, A. Martinez, and, uh, and uh, David Canary, you know, and, wow. and wow. If they're all the, I'm, I'm like, all right, whatever, I'll come in no pressure. I'm, I'm just happy to be here. And Canary You won. weren't kidding with the big guys there. <laughs> Hello. And I'm sitting, they, they, put, they put me in the front row. I'm sitting next to Oprah. <laughs> what is that? Anyway, when Canary won. He had an advantage. He played two two roles, but um, <laughs> I got I got a card from Jerry. Mm -hmm. uh, if I quickly can, it says, "Dear Mark, obviously it was fixed, rigged, slanted, corrupt, tainted, <laughs> deprived, perverse, bogus, false, phony, and spurious. Yet not to worry, you won my admiration years ago, and soon the rest of the world will get up to speed. Mm -hmm. Talent will win out, ladies and gentlemen." Jerry Verdorn. P.S. David's yes. freaking canary. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> he 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 really. I you know I read it a little note to me. I mean he really did. You know whether he was speaking to you in person, speaking to us as the audience of Guiding Light, or speaking mm -hmm. by writing. He had a way with words that mm -hmm. made you feel the wordsmith. Yeah, yeah, he made you feel like a million bucks. I oh, mean, that was the other thing. New York Times crossword. He, because I, I was still mm. in training back then, and he was an expert, so I would go to him when I needed help. Well, that—that's what Hillary Bailey Smith said that she would yeah. be in Jerry's uh -huh. dress in life doing the crossword puzzle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What's also amazing is every, I I do I don't have the card here with me. I could not find it, but I also still have a card from Jerry Verdorn. He was just so thoughtful in in taking the time to write these handwritten cards oh, in the time where you know sort of people were still just starting to use email. But he would take the time to write these thoughtful notes, and and they were so special because I I remember I still have a card that he gave me also. Wow. Uh, yeah. I mean. It, it and especially now it um means even that much more to all of us mm -hmm. 
It, it oh. really, really, really does. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's so good to see you both. Wish it was different circumstances, but yeah. Me too. Good to see you I, too. I, I yeah. absolutely agree on that. Yeah, yeah. No, I agree on that. Uh, yeah, thank you for sharing too. those memories. Thank you for being here. Dr. Shimura, I will be in touch as we discussed. We're, we're <laughs> Great. I look forward to it. So okay. good to see you. So nice to see you. Yeah, yeah. so nice yeah. to see you. I still have that frame you gave you gave me when I when my when my son was born. Oh my god. Give me a beautiful frame with roses all over it. I yes. still have it. It's and I've got a picture of him from it's like oh I should have oh. brought it down. It's oh, how wonderful. How lovely. Yeah, it was very, very sweet. Yeah. Oh, Mark, but I'll be in touch. Okay, man. Thank, thank you. you. Great seeing you guys. Sorry, Liz. You too. Liz, you I'll it. see you in a little while, okay? Okay. Okay. All right. Now, join, joining us from One Life to Live, who also worked with Jerry and has a really fabulous uh, story to share, is Eileen Christian and her partner, Gary Donatelli. Hi. Hey, Hello. Out to Derwin. <laughs> Good, buddy, you're looking great. <laughs> Thank you both for being here. Um, yeah. You, Gary, you were a director on One Life, is that correct? That's correct, yes. Did we're you direct Jerry as well when during his time? Oh, yes. Um, worked with Jerry quite often and really, truly, like everyone else here, enjoyed it. Um, also, he was a Midwesterner. He was from Minnesota, I think. Or he something. was. I was from Illinois. And... Uh, we had a this certain common, we both thought we were good guys, you know what I mean? Uh, and uh, <laughs> you know, in a big city, uh, really, really enjoyed him. Um, but there's really something even a little more special from, you know, people talking about Jerry and uh, his bowling event and all that. And Eileen, why don't you tell them about that? Well, I hate bowling. <laughs> Let's get that off your chest. Let's well, get that out of the way. Right. I hate bowling, bowling, but I will always show up at a bowling event, always, because I like to watch. I actually do like to watch bowling. Um, but um, I always went to Jerry's event. Every year I went. And I believe it was 2013. I went and I was wearing a little sundress, uh, I believe. And... Uh, I went in there, you know, fully intent. I wasn't putting those bowling shoes on, that's for sure. <laughs> really bad dress. And I came into the event and Gary, who Gary and I were always very good friends. Gary and I have known each other since 1978. That's true. When he, uh, you were pulling cable. I was but a stable boy. He was a stable boy. <laughs> Yeah. that were too long for mutton me. shops that were really disgusting yeah, big afro i had hair back then it was great except for the mutton shops i screwed up uh mutton shops bell bottoms and um but an eagerness and so we we met on ryan's hope and it was like his first day um so we have worked together we worked together on another world and we worked together for the whole 10 years of the last 10 years of one life to live we were always very good friends that was it. We were good friends. So I go to this bowling event in 2013 and uh, I see Gary, who's one of my favorite people. And he's sitting with Sean uh, Ringgold, who's also, uh, you know, I love him so much. Right. And so I saw, earlier. yeah. And I saw when I saw Gary, I immediately was so happy because it was like two years after we had finished shooting. And, you know, all of us had kind of gone our separate ways. So I came in and um, Gary at the time uh, was separated and had a girlfriend. So I said to him, oh, where's Deirdre? And he went, and he, and you said to me. Where's William? How's he doing? And so, then it was like, oh, hi. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> Cute little sundress. I'm like, oh, what did I think? Like, I'm glad we stayed friends all those years. Because <laughs> if I had made my move and I had the mutton chops, I, you know, I, we, yeah, you would have lost out. Yeah. And, and here we are, eight she years later. You know, she was Delia. She was a freaking rock star. Roxy. She was a rock star with the name and everything. And Delia. eight years later. What's that? And eight, eight years, years later, been living together at least for seven years. Yeah. And um, it's a match made in heaven. Uh, and I, you know. I really owe it to Jerry. 
It's his bowling event. I really feel like I owe it to Jerry. Because <laughs> we both would show up for Jerry. You know what I mean? Everybody would show up for Jerry because that's who he was. That's incredible. I, I just love that. You, you know, we were thinking about it before, and we can't believe that Jerry's... No, I mean, he's gone. He's because you know, not... he's so in the in our existence all the time. You know, when from when we worked with him, even we didn't see him, but uh, you know, he just had that realness about him. And, totally real. Uh, and uh, could be tough. You know, he, he was he was everything. He means yeah. so much to so many. Um, Eileen, yeah. I want to read what a fan wrote. She said, "May Beth says, Eileen, you are a magical actress. Such heart and soul to every character you create." Um, and Gary, from one director to another. Bruce Barry says, my best to Gary. What a wonderful director and gentleman. Oh, right back at Bruce. One of the best, best. I, I really love that you share this story <laughs> with us. I, I, it really, it, it speaks to just so much about Jerry. Um, Eileen, I know you're going to read a note from one of your co-stars, if you wouldn't mind. We're both going to share that honor. Okay, mm -hmm. please, please but, do. Uh, from in the world John of good guys, I just want to say Bruce Barry. Uh, I was I started a little bit later and Bruce Berry was a, was big at the Guiding Light when I went to watch him work next to Jill Phelps. Um, and what I picked up there was how a director could be under all that pressure and be a good guy. OK, because that's what Barry was. He was, I'm sure, with the actors. So he was a pleasure to work with, but he was also a pleasure for me to watch. So, Barry, thank you. Thank you. God bless you. He set the tone there for sure. Um, John Paul Lavoisier sent a beautiful note for Jerry that Eileen and Gary are going to read. There you go. Okay. There were basically three Jerry Verdorns I had the privilege of knowing and working with. The first guy was prep work Jerry. This was the man who allowed me into his warm, dimly lit and cozy, mind you, dressing room to run lines with. He always sat in his desk chair, script on the lap, reading glasses, resting on his nose bridge with nothing but business at hand on the agenda. It was unlike any other study session I would experience with other cast members. He never looked up from the pages while we talked them out and we never ran a scene more than once ever. Mind blowing experience here, Jerry. Who are you? No small talk, no jokes, no gossip, just sharing voices to each other. It was wild. As one sat in the corner near his lamp, there was a peacefulness here that had its own place separate from the rest of the building, Jerry's own tucked away little world. The second guy was stage Jerry, actor Jerry, professional Jerry. This Jerry was all character, all vital, full serious. Due to the casual line rehearsal prior to the studio floor, you never knew what he was throwing between action and cut until it had to be caught. While taping a scene, he transformed. He was the guy on the page, the guy brought in for the job, the man in force. It was hardly a sure guess on how he would deliver a line, where he would take a pause, or how he'd make you feel. Folks were best to be on their toes, equipped for emotions and sensations when head on with Mr. Verdorn as the cameras roll. His unpredictability was quite mesmerizing, special, refreshing, like a soft, cuddly porcupine. And thirdly was casual Jerry. Casual Jerry made you feel like you were bumping into an uncle or childhood friend at a backyard barbecue. This is the guy you could hang out with in the hallway, makeup room or bowling event and just shoot the shit with. Conversations with casual Jerry could make one forget they possibly had work to do somewhere. You'd have the opportunity for a few minutes of his day to talk about anything you like, and he never hijacked, stole, or wasted your time in any way. He provided his full attention with that silver dollar smile, huggable cashmere sweater, and teddy bear aura. Even if you didn't know Jerry all that well, he treated you like you did. There was a genuine honesty and selflessness quality in him. Time of Jerry's was always an absolute gift. He truly was one of the good guys. And even his opponent's relatives, they would have voted for him. So, to Jerry. To Jerry. To Jerry. And thank you, JP, for this beautiful, beautiful piece. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it, Absolutely. I'm going to just share another from one of your co-stars, 
Here's Tuck Watkins, everybody. Hey, everybody, Tuck Watkins here. Wow, the 18th annual Stars and Strikes charity event for autism. First time caller, longtime fan of Jerry Verdorn. As David Vickers on One Life to Live, I was usually on the wrong side of Jerry's fist in most of the scenes we did together, whether I was blackmailing him or trying to insinuate myself into his family. But whenever the director yelled cut, Jerry would always grin and help me up and we'd have a good laugh. What a kind, generous, talented, giving, selfless man. I wish everybody at the event a turkey, three strikes in a row for Jerry, and I wish a lot of success for the newly created Jerry Verdorn Scholarship Fund. Good luck, everybody. Wow. Yeah. Eileen and Gary, thank you so much for sharing that great story and for reading John's letter. Great to see you both. Thank you. Anytime. Bye, everybody. Yeah. Mikey. Mikey. Oop. It is uh, with great pleasure that I introduce my my best friend, Grant Alexander, the beautiful Beth Chamberlain, the exquisite Crystal Hunt, and the beautiful, timeless Tina Sloan. Hello, Crystal, you're on mute. Hi, Grant. Hey, Beth. Hey, Tina. Hey, Crystal. Oh, there we go. Hi. How are you guys? Good. Good, Crystal. Good. 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 God, it's been Same forever. here. It's been forever. Yes, it has. Nice to get the family yes. together. Yeah. Get the family back together again. For 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 a very special man and for a very special cause. You're not kidding. Mm. Grant, you know, when you think of Jerry, what immediately comes to mind for you? Well, I, I tell you, just listening to you know, Mark and just the 20 minutes that I've been listening, you, you don't get these kind of responses, you know, for anybody else that I can think of. I mean, honestly, I was run through my head thinking I've worked with, you know, we've all worked with so many wonderful people. I can't think of anybody in front of or behind the camera that you would get this ubiquitous response of, love and respect, admiration, gratitude. Um, that's personally, I think of Jerry as, you know, uh, one of the, one of the dearest, uh, most special people that I've ever known. Um, but professionally, um, he, um, he, you know, Kim, Kim was the star of our show, most important character on the canvas. But Jerry was the most important cast member on our show. Um, our show wouldn't have been what it was without Jerry. Um, he was, if you ever had a problem, um, if there was turmoil, writers were coming and going, actors were coming and going, producers were coming and going, you always felt like as long as Jerry was there, everything was going to be okay. And we would, we would you know, we'd, we'd be solid again. And it was pretty much true. You could go to Jerry with any problem, any time, and he would make the time for you uh, and give you, he would give it to you straight. You know, if you were out of line, I told me a number of times that um, I was, um, you know. <laughs> crossing that line, line. crossing you, that line. I I crossing that line and, um, yeah. and lovingly, but firmly, you know, which I remember one time, Mikey, I think you and I were uh, cutting it up on the wrong day. Um, it was a day where I think Bruce was directing and, uh, you know, it was the cast of thousands type day and Mikey and I were laughing about something or whatever. And Jerry turned around and, uh, you know, gave it a shush and, you know, we were too busy with what we we're talking about to listen. And, uh, he finally turned around and he said, Grant, shut up. <laughs> and all whatever six, two of me turned into about six inches in, in a split second. <laughs> and I just kind of, you know, crawled into myself and this wasn't just when I started on the show. I mean, I've you know, been around for a while. And, um, and then shortly thereafter we broke for lunch and um, it was hilarious. A somewhat sheepish Jerry came around to my dressing room and said, you, you, you want to go get some lunch? <laughs> <laughs> and I looked at him and I said, Jerry, uh. I said, I had it coming. 
you have nothing to feel sheepish about. He was like, oh, right, right. I, I hear a song from Chicago, isn't there? You had it coming. Uh, but he was, that was Jerry though. He would, I mean, he was, there was a, there was an avuncular, a parental, um, a best friend kind of way that he had. Where he, Jerry just, he did the right thing and he made you want to do the right thing. It's Tina. true. He's like kind of like the mayor of Guiding Light. Yeah, he, he was. He was. <laughs> Tina, you worked, you know, you and he were there a very long time together. Yeah, but he and I never worked together. I mean, he, right. he was in love with my sister, Alan <laughs> Um, when she had syphilis, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, one of the better storylines. Story it yeah. was out of Africa. But I mean, I just thought of him sort of as the voice. He was our voice of Christmas. He was our voice of reason, our voice of compassion during 9-11. I'll never forget when most of us could hardly breathe. He went on and discussed that to, to, the, to the world. He, he went on and I mean, there was nothing that he couldn't say or do that wouldn't make you feel safe. He, he, he made us safe. And the world's a little less safe without a Jerry Verdoran in it now. And I think one of the things we'll miss beyond that wonderful sensibility is his blue eyes. Those blue eyes were just deadly and just gorgeous. Well, well said, uh, Tina. Beth, what yeah, do you Yeah, I mean, when I think of Jerry, I just, um, just Jerry equals kindness. He was just always kind to everyone and you know sometimes um all of us had times where we were under pressure um because we were working so much or the type of storyline we were doing that you know maybe made us you know i, I don't want to say not kind but impatient or what have you and and I, I never once saw that with Jerry. Jerry was just, he was always kind and he was always a gentleman. And um, I think that I just, um, that sort of gave you this sense of, of safety and you would never, to my knowledge, Grant may say something different. <laughs> But to my knowledge, I never heard him engage in um, in in gossip. You know, when you're on a set and you're spending all day with people all day, you know, sometimes uh, I was listening to that letter read and um, that sometimes uh, people just start to engage in gossip. And I, I don't I don't ever remember him partaking in that, I think. Well, if I could slip in on that note, um, he, I, I can I can promise you this, Jerry. Jerry had a really wonderful dark side. Um, with, <laughs> I mean, he couldn't have been the actor that he was without it. Um, you know, yeah, there was the obviously the Midwestern charm, and he was a great guy, and all that kind of stuff. But Jerry had a real delicious dark side. And <clears throat> if somebody was acting like a horse's ass on the set, <laughs> let me tell you, you wanted to be next to Jerry <laughs> because just loud enough for you to hear it. He would come out with the thing in three seconds that if you had about four weeks, you might be able to come up with. <laughs> he was just so sharp and funny and uh, could be very cutting, um, but always fair. Uh, but he, yeah, he, he did. He had, a, he had a wonderful wickedness uh, when it was appropriate. But Beth, I, I, I'm not sure my memory is serving me because I've spoke to a lot of people putting this together, but I think it was Erica Slezak who might have said the same thing about the gossip. You know, never heard him, you know, sharing. Well, certainly I can say and I can I can appreciate him venting under his breath a little bit to those he trusted when he was getting frustrated with someone on the set. But you would have never heard him, I have to say, in the hair and makeup room engaging in any sort of... Um, right. Um, I can remember when we all came on, meeting the, all of us who were right here, and Jerry had a dressing room next to mine, and he and Peter Simon were doing all of us in. Trust me. Oh, yeah. like, oh, no, oh, no, oh, no. And I remember I... I didn't want to walk out the door so they'd know I'd heard everything that they were saying about every one of you. No, I'm going to ask Peter in a little while. I'm going to ask Dude. Peter. Dude. Crystal, I, I have to read um, because I thought this was really just 
poignant, but you posted about today's show and your mom wrote, Jerry, Grant, and Ron were excellent mentors for Crystal from the age of just 17 onward. I feel so blessed for my daughter to have such incredible people in her life that guided her. You know, you were so young and you actually ha had the sure. opportunity to work with him on One Life. Well, I was actually thinking about that when you, I was just saying he just made you feel so comfortable. I remember I was a wreck when we had to present at the, uh, the tech Emmys and I was like, I mean, what do we do? I think in every photo, I'm like clinging to the back of his coat, my hands like just clinging to it. Cause I'm like, what do we do? I've never done this before. Oh my God, we're presenting to Martha Stewart. She's wearing an ankle monitor. And you can actually <laughs> see my face saying, you can actually see my face going, oh my God, she's actually here. She's wearing the ankle monitor. Jerry's like, what, really? I was like, please tell me they didn't get that on camera. They definitely got it on camera. <laughs> um, and then I think, I was so young then. I think I might have just turned 18. And then fast forward to 2000, was it 12? And he and I are in hell together on One Life to Live. And I'm having to work a poll in front of him and try to be sexy with him and alluring. And I'm like, Jerry, this is so uncomfortable. <laughs> and I'm like, and somehow he found a way to make it less awkward because I felt like, this was like an uncle figure. I was like, I'm sorry. I, this is so weird. <laughs> like, I don't know how to make this feel real. So, yes, I, I mean, I've never met, obviously, um, these gentlemen on the screen are, are included in my mom's note because it's true. But I, I really do feel like people don't realize in soaps just how much you have a family away from family in soaps because you spend so much time with each other. You, you really do become like family. And that's why it's, it's so hard because cancer is something we've dealt with so much in our family too. So that's really, really, um, really kind of knocked me off guard. I wasn't expecting this at all. And um, it's hard because there's so many crappy people out there. Like, why don't all the good people have to go? <laughs> yes, Joel, I, I have a cousin going through pancreatic cancer and I oh. couldn't agree with you more on why this happens to the good ones. I know. know, it seems like, I mean, don't get me wrong. All of you are good ones too. I'm glad you guys yeah, are here you know, healthy. It feels like it does happen, but, you know, sadly. Um, more so, yeah. Talk about but the yet, events. You, you all have attended Liz and Jerry's events over the years. Um, just watching God, Jerry, yes. you know, Grant, Michael, Tina, Beth, Chris I Washington. always stuck with Grant. <laughs> I always stuck with Grant because I knew he was a better bowler. I was like, I was like, <laughs> I, I, hopefully I'll have a chance to win or at least like get That's some better smart, points. Smart move, smart move. In fact, I, it's funny when I was looking through photos, I was like the majority of them, I'm sitting wherever Grant's sitting. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, man, I really uh, was planning on getting, you know, getting a good score being on Grant's team. It just dawned on me. It's I wish I had didn't happen. I this. <laughs> but I wish I had asked Wendy this in advance, but I'm curious to think that for 18 years, we have been raising money. I think we started for cancer for Jerry and now it's been autism and today a scholarship in Jerry's name for kids, you know, to help kids on the autism spectrum go and have uh, theater classes. But I'm curious what these events have raised. You know, I know what one event possibly has raised, but the amount that they have raised for such a good cause. Such I a mean, good cause. Such a good cause. Truly. I, did, I think, well, I have to ask her, but I'm pretty sure, I'm thinking I was going to be in Europe, which I usually am. I leave this week. But um, I always, I just sent her money. And I think everybody who can should should be sending money for Jerry's scholarship. I can't think of anything more worthy for us to be doing. I, I, I agree. I couldn't agree more. Um, Grant, you're going to return momentarily. Uh, Beth, you have your show premiering on my birthday, I believe, October oh 18th. Oh, my gosh, that's right. You told me happy birthday. <laughs> Thanks. La Reina del, <laughs> del Sol. La Reina del Sol. Del Sol. It means uh, queen of the South. Love that. Are you the queen, Bethy? I am not the queen. I am <laughs> the <What>? queen. <laughs> Quite the opposite. <laughs> I'd like to know why the two guys on the top on the right hand portion look so much older 
and the three broads on the bottom have <laughs> <a few. laughs> I, know. I agree. We <laughs> It must be yeah. lighting. It's lighting. I've got cheesecloth here. I mean, I smeared Vaseline <laughs> over the lens. It's always seems terrible lighting. You're, you're, so it's always like you have it coming at you, not directly overhead. You're not using Joan Collins as Morgan Ball? God, I forgot about that. <laughs> right. You know, the, you know, the yeah, the big thing, the big diffuser on the ball with like the fishing rod. <laughs> oh, yeah. hey, oh, I don't Joan, recall Joan even seeing that. Right. That's so funny. I forgot about Tina, yeah. Crystal, Beth, thank you so much. Thank you, Alan. Yes, of course. Bye. Bye, everybody. Bye. 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 Do you turn us? Yes, I will. Michael, take it away. Oh, good. Goodness gracious. I will. I'm, I was so engaged with our conversation. <laughs> okay. So um, I am um, honored to introduce um, my. Is, is Justin and Peter going to be joining us today? Uh, this is Justin right now. Justin, okay. and all right, and, and and and, and um, my, my buddy, my buddy uh, uh, Peter. No, Peter will be here shortly. It's Gene oh. Carroll first. Oh, okay. Hi, Gene. Hi, Justin. Hi. Hi. How are you? The wrong script, man. Yeah, <laughs> I, you know, it's typical. It's typical O'Leary. It's I typical. Know. It's okay. It's okay. That's all right. Um, Justin and Gene, when was the last time the two of you? Laid eyes on each other. Oh. Um, Last time I flew out to New York, I think. 2000. I don't know. Didn't we see each other in one of these things? No. Uh, no, I think uh, we missed each other. You came a different time. Yeah, I think you can't. Yeah, just. Uh, yeah, oh. we couldn't fit everybody on screen at that time. Uh, you great, Gene. <laughs> oh, so do you. Uh -oh. <laughs> Thank you both. Thank you both for being here. What, you know, Gene, when you, you know, think back to Jerry, what comes to mind for you? Wow. Um, well, you know, I auditioned with Jerry. Oh, wow. I didn't. I didn't remember oh my that. God. Yeah. I get a, um, a Nadine tries to seduce Ross Marler scene with him. Wow. And uh, I auditioned with him and with Beth Ellers as Harley. So because he was our, my first love interest on the show and then it segue to alan spaulding uh who is daniel pilon at the time but anyway i just i, I solidly remember that audition my character <clears throat> excuse me was a little assertive like a little very <laughs> assertive <laughs> and i went for it i just went for it and jerry was such a gentleman and he was so reassuring and he just went with it. He just gave me the scene uh, to just do what I wanted pretty much. And, uh, and it was successful, it was fun. He had this great twinkle in his eye, this great sense of humor going on, very supportive. Uh, and it, it, obviously it kind of worked because I got the job, but I always remember how kind he was um, and just how, gentlemanly he was through all that, just letting me go for it. You know, I mean, that was something special at that time. And I remember I had flown in from LA and we were supposed to shoot the audition uh, one afternoon on a Tuesday, but it was in uh, the Studio B, the smaller studio, but they were running over. So they said, you know what, we're gonna do this tomorrow. So we're putting you up in the hotel tonight and then we're gonna do it in the morning. And of course, you know, you get your expectations up and then you didn't. But the next day, we had to wait until they finished shooting again in the afternoon. And then we, we did the scene. And just that whole experience, he just made it calm, nice, and fun. So that was great. So I remember Justin, that. Did you, did you know Jerry before joining Guiding Light? Not at all. I, to be honest, I hadn't even seen the show. <laughs> <laughs> and, and Justin, did you know Jerry before joining Guiding Light? No, uh -uh. never met him. Wow. Fantastic guy, though. I mean, everything they say about him is the truth. I mean, you just nothing. It's it's just fabulous. I mean, I, re I remember watching him uh, do he, he, he doing his lawyer. He's brilliant at it. And one time they had him like do one of those ten page speeches. You know, these goes on forever. And somebody screwed up something like at the beginning. It went ten pages. Said, well, you have to do it over again. I went, oh my god, it's going to be. He was fine. They did it like five times. 
and he got better every time. And I was such a I was such a sadist at the time that I mean I, I was looking forward to him. I said, screw up again because I want to see you do it <laughs> again. Because, <laughs> I don't know, can you get any better than that? He was just one, and a, you know, just a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful man. Like, well, I'm a, a negative thing, uh, not a negative thing, but I one time there was a uh, an actor. Uh, who everybody hated, and I didn't know why. I mean, this guy seemed okay to me, and but everyone said this guy's just a horrible jerk, you know. And I thought, well, I'm gonna ask Jerry what's the heck's going on here because Jerry, you know, Hitler was okay with him, you know. <laughs> and I, and I, I went and I said, Jerry, I said, you know, everybody hates blah blah. And he said, uh, I said, why is that? And he said, he looked at me and straight me, I said, well, blah blah is an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was standing there 10 minutes afterwards, my jaw dropped. Well, I guess he is. <laughs> you know. If Jerry says it, if Jerry says if Jerry it, Jerry said it. He never said anything like that about anybody. That's wild. I mean, well, he, you know, when he, he found out that he had cancer, I and was one time he was like just a little off his feet, just a little, not that huge smile and that uh, you know warm. No matter what happened, and it was the same. He found out that he had cancer the same day, and lost his job the same very same day, and he was just a little off. I said, and I found out about what was the matter. And I said, Jerry, can I, you know, what can I, you know, because we all loved him. You couldn't help it. And, and he said, no, I'm fine. And holy mackerel. I mean, what, you know, that guy's just, he was just, you can't say enough about him. Just lucky to know him. And we, one time, they didn't, and I, we didn't really act together, but he, one time, they, I don't know why, they decided to put us in scenes together for no reason at all. We'd sit on a stoop and talk about ships, boats, and stuff like that. And it was an existential kind of weird thing. It was like waiting for Godot or something happening to us. And we'd sit there and I said, well, do, you, do, you, do you know why we're doing this? And he said, no. <laughs> so we, that's, that was kind of our, our thing. But it was, you know, everybody misses him. Yeah, 100%. Um, you, you were mentioning watching him as a lawyer. Did you, as Tom Hughes, not have that much to... To spew all the time? Oh, my God. They'd write me 21, 25 page things. But I would be, you know, with me, I'd be like Hamlet and I'd be tortured by it and everything. And, you know, and the, the cricket <laughs> church in Kansas, I would go like off my rocker and, you know, <laughs> ask me to do it twice. Forget it, you know. But with him, it's just fine. Well, I can tell you both that the fans, you know, I, I think, you know, the fans loved Buzz and Nadine together they are thrilled to see you here together you know i mean first of all you haven't been on air together on guiding light since it's off for so many years and then to see you here what do you remember you know bringing that uh couple to life working opposite each other well gene did it <laughs> i did everything to end her career she tried to save me a million times she tried to teach me how to be a cook Besides trying to teach me how to act. Do you remember when you, you uh, bleached my hair? Did I bleach your hair? On air. I did? Yeah. <laughs> Dude, what, what happened? My hair. No, my hair you. stayed. You didn't lose it. <laughs> oh, my God. Don't oh you remember God. that? Oh, my God. I'll never no, forget oh, that. Oh, my God. Well, you know. <laughs> I've had therapy since then, and so some of those things are lost to me. <laughs> yeah, probably that must have been horrendous. <laughs> I love the dancing scenes that we had. I oh, love that. I loved. I love just all of it. You know, the pregnancy thing when you discovered I had a, a cushion under my shirt. That was hysterical. You remember that? I don't yeah. That. Sure. yeah, yeah, great. You couldn't that, that, That's when uh, you, Bridget's kid. Yeah, yeah. You were, she had to do all the weird things with me. Drive-in movies. Oh, my God. <laughs> and, and, then she, and then she was killed by a candelabra. She was? Yeah. yeah uh, um, oh, God. Brett. Frank, Brett. Brett. Yeah. Uh, Marion Crane. Oh. So. I don't Frank Beatty. Yeah. Frank Beatty was playing the. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I know, that was the year they said that Nadine was a psychic. I, I don't know. She was everything. She was a gold digger. She was all kinds of stuff. I didn't, and they made her a psychic out of a, well, out they, of just, they, just, they just trapped you with me, unfortunately, for you. For you. Luckily for me. But, I mean, we could make you know, a married lady. You know, that's not your, you know. No, I would say working with you was the best part of the experience. Because we always... I don't know. I remember you st sticking peas up your nose right before we had a real dramatic scene. <laughs> oh, no. 
<laughs> yeah, you did. You're like, oh, look at this. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you couldn't rattle you. You remember, yeah. the, you remember the you remember the pickle in the in the in the popcorn box in the drive-in? Oh, I, I don't quite remember that, but I remember having to eat it's supposed to be pudding, and it was plain yogurt. It was like horrible. Oh my god, <laughs> it was all I could do to keep it down. But no, it was it was a great experience. Yeah. The whole the whole show was great. I love the imaging. Remember uh, Jerry Dorn? The other thing that I remembered most clearly about him that that extravaganza episode. That focused on his character about the election. The election. Yeah. yeah. And we dressed a lot of us, like um, a, a lot of the girls or women that he'd had relationships with dressed up as mermaids. Yeah, it was wild. Oh, really? <laughs> we were mermaids in his fantasy. It was crazy. But he was just so good to everybody. He was just, just so good. He always looked up to him. But no, it, it was great with him. He, 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 he really uh, was. I, Claudia wrote for you, Jean. She said, please ask Jean to move her hair so we can see those beautiful dimples. Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> Where are they? Still there. I think I'm turning into wrinkles now, but I do. Uh, use, uh... And, and Lee just reminded us that Buzz would call her Deanie. Yes. Aww. Aww. Did, you, did you make that up or do you know if it was written? I don't even remember. Yeah, curious. Jill might know. <laughs> And Mikey, I've been following your stuff exploits on Facebook. Yay, good for you. Oh, thanks, Gene. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, Mike, Mikey's going to be in Halloween opening on Friday. Halloween uh, and opens up on, on this, this, uh, fr this uh, Friday. First, this Friday, yeah. Oh, cool. I, cool. Yeah. What are you doing? So, well, I, I he, signed an NDA, so I can't say. <laughs> no, he can, he really? can talk after it opens. After yeah, it but opens. I, can't say, I can't say I'm in the movie. Um, and then they're so, this is a very close knit franchise. I had no idea because I've never done a horror movie before. <laughs> he almost never got seen... in trouble. What's that? I said, Mikey almost got in big trouble. Yeah. So I have to, I'm going to keep my, my mouth shut until <laughs> this thing comes out because <laughs> uh, I, I have a tendency to talk before, you know, um, I, I, I got to follow directions. That's been my, my problem my whole life. So it's always been your problem. I know. <laughs> no, you were always the cut up. You were always the one who got to the green room and you were serving food and drinks and doing yeah. this and that. It was always great. Well, I, I would write fake fan letters to Ricky, Ricky Paul Golden. I, you know, I, he was like shooting fish in apparel. You know, I, I would um, do these fake fan letters. I'd write them up and I would give them to Ricky <laughs> while he was in the, in the makeup room. And they were, I won't get into the letters, but they were, it was pretty horrific. And just to see the look on his face while he's reading the letters. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so yeah, it was always about, um, cause we had a lot of time in our hands, right? Yeah. Yeah. So we needed that. It was, you had to entertain yourself. Relief. I had to entertain yeah. myself. Yeah. Where are yeah. I appreciated that. I'm in What's New York. That? Where is everybody? Well, I'm, I'm in New York city. I'm in New Jersey and Jean's in California still, right? Yeah. Yeah, I'm in Santa Clarita. In where? Santa Clarita. Oh, where is you know, that? Six Flags, Magic Mountain. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. I'm yeah. a mile south of Six Flags. Okay. Yeah. So we're in Cougar. What, what about you, Justin? Where are you? Uh, I'm in. I'm in. Uh, in the Big Street. Apple. Eleventh Street between uh, uh, between Washington and West. Oh, <laughs> I love it down there. In New York. Yeah, Yay. Justin. We uh, besides guiding light fans, we have a lot of world turns fans who are saying Justin D's will always be my favorite. Tom Hughes. Well, they oh. were like that's good because there were like 189 of us. So that's <laughs> <laughs> there were a few of you over the years. You, you could say that, um, Gene. It is so good to see you, Justin. We're going to keep you around, Gene. Wow. Thank you for sharing your memories and and spending this time with us. My pleasure, and it's, a, it's Jean, so good special see to see you guys. It's great to see you. you. It's great to see you, Gene. Mwah, mwah, mwah. Yeah. <laughs> and love to Jerry too. Looking yeah. down on yeah. us. Bye, Gene. Bye, Mikey. Yes, sir. Talk about your bros' dinner. <laughs> so you know, one of the things that folks probably um, don't know is that. Um, the guys decided collectively, and I think, I don't know if Bruce Berry was the one who initiated this, but um, we would get together, I would say once every three months or four months, and we would meet in an Italian restaurant in the city. It would be 
um, uh, Peter Simon, Jerry Vadorn, uh, Bruce Berry, uh, Jay Hammer, my buddy Peter right there, and Grant. And we would get together and we would just, um, you know, it was, but it was really interesting. It was, you know, you could tell it was old man's night out because everything wrapped up around 730. And there was, <laughs> it, was it was bedtime. So, <laughs> You know. except, for, except for Jay Hammer, who his bedtime was God knows when, right? Yeah, oh, when he owned his bar. He had his bar, so you know we always had to have it on a, at a weird time of day so that he can go to sleep, so that he can wake up and then go to his bar. But um, yeah, yeah and, Ron, and, Matt, going down there and had where's, where's Ron Rains? I mean, he was actually uh, Justin Ron was the one who initiated this. Ron, yeah. And then uh, I kind of took over, but uh, and COVID put an end to it. Um, uh, well, not an end to it, but pause to it. And believe me, we're going to have another what we call DOMF. And if you could use your imagination, what the MF stood for, but uh, it wasn't that. It was dirty old men feeding, and <laughs> um, and so we would have this dinner and. Uh, uh, you know, Peter never left enough money on the table when we were finished, but, uh, you know, that's okay. <laughs> but Jerry always, and Jerry never, never um, uh, ate a lot, um, whether because he wasn't feeling well or because of the meds he was on, but very for, for, for the last many times that we had it, he wouldn't eat very much. But he would always like throw down a whole handful of money to pay for the dinner. It was always so generous of him, and uh, mm -hmm. uh, we had we had great times. Uh, almost got thrown out of the restaurant quite a few times because, again because of you, Peter. Um, uh, but it was uh, it was a lot of fun. It Peter's was a troublemaker. Hey, Peter, yeah. would you would you share? I mean, not only was he your friend, but mm -hmm. Ed and Ross were were great friends on Guiding Light. Can you talk about working with Jerry? Well, it's funny. I mean, I don't remember a whole ton of scenes that Ed and Ross had together. I mean, we sort of did parallel lives. Um, he was, I can obviously say he was a wonderful, he was an unbelievable pleasure to, to work with. He was the kind of actor who never tried to do anything flashy, never tried to do anything to say, this is the point of the scene, watch me while I do it. He was very quiet, just sort of cruised along, and then halfway through the scene, you suddenly realized, wow, something is happening here, and he's making it, he's making it work. Just basically had to show up and, uh, and make sure you listened. And it, it was such a pleasure. It was so wonderful. I'm, su I'm surprised you didn't actually get to do more. I'm surprised you didn't get to do more scenes with him, uh, Peter, because wasn't Ed up for a lot of malpractice suits? Uh, <laughs> no, no, that was Ed's son. And Ed, oh. it was, Ed yeah. was clean. He was totally medically clean. He yes. <laughs> Dr. Rick Bauer is the one who killed quite yeah. a bit. Yeah. <laughs> 48 is a record still to this day. 48. Um, definitely, you know, the fans remember Peter, you know, especially after Maureen's death. Uh, there's an amazing scene between the two of you where Ross uh, steadied Ed, you know, uh, just I, I think saying like you have a lot to live for, Michelle and Rick and mm -hmm. Kind of thing. So the fans always uh, remember that immensely. Well, that's that would be the perfect kind of thing that uh, that Jerry would would do. You know, like falling off a log because that is his his personality. I think we'd all agree he was a a huge steadying influence on the individual scenes that he was in on the show in general. You know, if 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 things were sort of twirling out of focus if on a big day or something like that, uh, Jerry was the one just sometimes looking over at him and seeing him sitting there quietly preparing or, you know, just being Jerry was enough to make you sort of suck it up and say, okay, let's go. Let's get this done. Peter, he I remember said, one time um, because, you know, Jerry was a, was a very controlled person 
a lot of the time. And I think most people saw that in him. But Jerry had an enormous heart. Um, and he he loved working with you, Petey. He, I mean, he, he just adored working with you. It and was he, mutual. Yeah, I know. And you could see it. You could see it in the scenes you guys had together. Um, but there was one time you were leaving the show, one of the times that you left the show um, to uh, go get one of your plays produced or your big Hollywood yeah. stuff, you know. Yeah, let's line up and go see all those plays I got. <laughs> <laughs> but he, um, you guys had finished the scene. Uh, it was the last scene you were doing before you left. And um, uh, Jerry and my dressing room were uh, uh, close to each other. And I, I saw him walking into his uh, dressing room and there was just something a little odd. So I stuck my head in and he turned around and he kind of tried not to look at me immediately because, you know, this will make sense to you. Um, he had tears in his eyes. And I said, are you OK? And he said, yeah, 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 I'm, I'm fine. And I said, what, what, what is it? And uh, he said, I'm afraid I'm never going to act with my friend again. Oh. Well, before we get too reverential, <laughs> let's, uh, let's bring out a few things that uh, Jerry could do. Like, <clears throat> you know, we were, we were roommates. And I, I remember once... It was like the typical actor's nightmare of you don't, you know, you don't know your lines. You've learned the first act. You haven't learned the second act. But anyway, it was when we had uh, a new producer, uh, the, the, the guy with the fur coat and everything, you know, who came in sort of close to the end. Convoy. Yeah. John. John. Uh, yeah. okay. I didn't say the word. I didn't say the name. So. But anyway, he decided one morning and very early in his tenure that he was going to drop in to rehearsal and see how the actors were doing early on in the rehearsal room. So I had a scene which I had looked at the night before and got on the train. I was living in Westchester then. I came in and as prepared as I ever was and compare that to as prepared as Jerry always was. It was sort of like non-existent preparation. But I had also forgotten my glasses. So this was the first time I was meeting the producer who was sitting there watching the scene. I didn't have my glasses. I had the script, but I could not read a <laughs> word. And, you know, uh, as, in, as in most nightmares, I don't even remember how I reasoned <laughs> out of it. I, 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 you know, I maybe feigned a broken leg or something. Oh, I've got to get to the dressing room. So, as usual, I show up in the dressing room, and Jerry, how many times have we seen him sitting there doing the crossword? It took him like five minutes to do, you know, the New York Times crossword. <clears throat> so, I walked in, and I was going to cover with, you know, with fury, with anger. I said, I can't believe this guy. I mean, I know he produces the show, but he shows up, he sits there, he watches. I mean, I know that I had, I had worked on this uh, scene. I had, I had, you know, was familiar with it. I just, I just, and Jerry said, barely looking up from his crossword, hadn't learned it, eh? <laughs> he did that so many times he could just take a rug and pull it out from under you and you're stunned you sit there saying well yes that that was sort of hidden in what my story was but you know did you have to say it did you have to bring it up you never knew exactly what was going on in that beautiful mind of his uh, oh he could be wicked he could be wicked he could, couldn't he? I yep. mean, oh. it was wonderful. But he was the cement that held the scene together. Though. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, he and you. The, the show together, but it's not you. just a scene. Yeah. Oh, well, you know, but the people who were working around him at that time, there was a there was an anchor there that you could hold on to. Oh man, yeah. You know, it was just amazing. Um, you too, Peter. Oh, well, hey, Grant. I heard a story. You know. Um, in 2005, when Philip was being killed off, um, and Jerry came in on his day off, do you remember? 
he he was he he yeah, basically he, had said i think to jill he he was there on your first day and he was showing up on your last yeah. day yeah he was just that kind of guy you know you, you you start to stumble and mumble when you when you're trying to sum up something that can't be summed up um he was you know to to the point that bruce was making um jerry was one of those rare uh performers that had he had a lot of confidence in himself, well-earned, well-justified confidence that allowed him to want everybody to be their best. He would do anything in a scene to help you get as high up on a ladder as, as he could. You know, it, Jerry, I don't remember Jerry ever really muffing a line or I never remember him going up. But, you know, Jerry had better days and worse days like anybody. But if he was maybe not at his best and it was a scene where you were flying along, man, there was nothing that would stop him. He would he would get you through it. And if you were having trouble, he would get you through it. If, so, if an actor went up, he would get them back on the page. He was he was just uh, he was just a damn prince. He, re he really was. Seriously, Justin, was there anything else that you recall? No, Prince does it. <laughs> Prince, Je Prince Jerry. Prince Jerry. Prince you had me at Prince. Absolutely. Well, Grant, yeah, you know, it's, it's like baseball time of year, and. If that show were uh, a stadium, Jerry's number would be retired out there, you yeah. know, next to 42 or whatever. He would he would be right next to Charita. Nice he metaphor, would, Peter. He, he would yeah. love that. I, he, yeah, that really. God, I wish now I wish we had like a uniform that we had put Verdorn on for uh, the Earlier in your show, you, somebody was mentioning that basically, the, uh, oh, it's a genie said the good die young, I think. But basically, I don't know if that coined her phrase, but it's very true. Um, and he was so proud of his grandchildren. And, uh, I mean, it, that was the light of his life, seriously, besides the lighthouse of guiding light. Uh, but he really, he really just, it was like a whole new a whole new phase in his life. And I just wish he could have, being a grandfather myself, uh, lived longer enough to see them grow up. And uh, it's just such a shame. Um, and it's very sad. Very sad. Absolutely. Well, we, we are all here for a great cause. I hope everybody please goes to daytimestarsandstrikes.com to donate to uh, the Autism Society of America and the Jerry Verdorn Scholarship Fund. Grant, Bruce, Justin, Peter, I'm keeping you around. Uh, Grant, Bruce, and Justin, thank you so much for sharing your memories. All right, all right, guys. Uh, Alan, you have to come to our next DOMF. Yeah. Oh, thank okay. you. Okay, absolutely. <laughs> I like to eat, so don't worry. <laughs> we'll have one soon as long as we're all clear of uh, COVID. We'll uh, we'll definitely have another DOMF and get together and roast roast Jerry properly. Yeah. <laughs> okay, bye everybody. Cheers Thanks. to you, gentlemen. Thanks so much. Bye, bye guys. Lizzie. Oh yeah. I'll let you take it away. Mikey will come. Back. Mikey. Hey, Peter. Hey. I want to be at that dinner too. Hey. <laughs> That's all I have to say. I have been lobbying for the broads to be there since day one. I really have. Yeah. <laughs> and the mentality. I don't get it. Well, just you well, at one point we were talking about Maeve and I were talking about how we'll go on incognito and we'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll find out. We we're like, maybe we'll get it from Beth. We'll find out from Beth when this next dinner is. <laughs> and we are just gonna show up. Tina too. All and oh, all. Oh, we just nail you guys. Uh, um yeah, that was lovely. Thank you so much. And I have um a, a just the most wonderful woman in the world to introduce, to bring, to, to, to join us. Um, please, 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 Maureen Garrett, where are you? Yay! Hello, hello everyone. How nice That's to beautiful. see you. Oh, how wonderful to see you. Oh my God, Peter, my God, it's been so long. Didn't we head off to Europe? What happened? <laughs> yeah, what did happen? <laughs> 
Oh, my God. Right. Around the world tour. Maybe we're doing that. Maybe we spread COVID all around the entire world. <laughs> <laughs> and we're still going. We're still yeah, going. Exactly. We're still kicking. So good to see you, Maureen. Thank you. It's great to be here. I'm so glad I was able to get back. I was traveling up in the British Columbia, which we love so much. And uh, But I, I was really pushing to get back. So here we are. So well, we couldn't where, think where is back? Where where are you? Where are you living now? In the Pacific Northwest, in Washington State. Um, uh -huh. It's called Vancouver, but it's not the other Vancouver. Uh huh. Um, and we have family up in British Columbia, but on Cortez Island, which is a beautiful, oh, beautiful place wow. up there. Oh, that sounds wonderful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're checking it out. Who knows? We may have to move there. <laughs> Oh, wow. I just got tears reading what a fan wrote and it shows what a fan I am. It said, oh, my God, Christina and mommy and daddy number one. Oh, <laughs> oh my God. Look oh. at that. Oh, wow. wow. Look at that. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Yeah. That's, huh. that's Goes fast, doesn't it? Oh, it does. Yeah. I mean, Maureen, you worked with him quite a bit. Yes. What, you know, talk about, you know, the Jerry you knew, which I'm sure is not going to be much different from what everybody <laughs> has shared. But You know, you know when, I, when I think about Jerry, I most remember his kindness. And uh, as I, as we grow older, I think that is the most important thing it's it's what stitches the whole world together and mm. i remember him there there was an incident once i was um in the middle of the day running out uh to buy a pair of shoes uh in full makeup and uh, costume and i <laughs> dashed out got the shoes headed back in and ran into on the street a woman an actress who had been on the show years ago uh who was had fallen on hard times and was basically homeless. And I got back to the studio and, and who else did I tell? Jerry, of course. And, um, and he said, uh, well, we'll find her. We'll take care of her. That's what the union is for. He just flew into action and, and took care of it. And, and I always remembered that, how kind, how thoughtful he was. Isn't that yeah. interesting in looking back over careers as we get old the way you classify you know there are different categories you put actors in but what i found is looking back i remember the strongest the actors who were kind yes kind in their work kind in yes. their relation to the world but it's like that's that's what comes through working with someone you know? Yeah, yeah, and it pays it forward. It mm -hmm. ripples. Mm -hmm. it, it, yeah. It's what pays forward. I I remember it, and, and it absolutely it's what compels me to be yeah. kind to, mm -hmm. to young and extras who would come on the show would often say that um, our place was the happiest workplace, and I think he had a lot to the ones they work on all the other what were there five different soaps in the in town then yeah mm -hmm. and least. they would say that ours was the happiest, and I think he had a lot to do with that. With that, I agree. You could, you could go to him. You whatever issues you've got, and he would deal. He would deal. He would take care of us. He was like kind of the daddy of the place. Yep. The without make, without making a show of it, though. I yes. mean, that's the thing. Right. He never he never said, "Oh, in his action, look at me doing what I'm doing." Oh, he, he just right. did it. You know. Yeah. Well, the yes. fact yeah. you know, Maureen's story is tantamount to that. Like just. He went into action for that actor, you know, who was down on their luck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was so true of him. And he just brought, he was so bright, you know, he, he just brought a brightness to our days there with his red suspenders and his <laughs> orange t-shirts and uh, to, um, to meet it's him to for, for a Pinot Grigio at that restaurant down the street. What was that Italian place you remember? <laughs> I, I that forget was, the name. Uh, that that was, was so lovely. So so here I am, and I am. Hey! Oh yay! Oh yay! 
That was always our favorite. Like, let's wait out. And Jerry, we'd finish at the end of the day. Let's wait out traffic. Let's wait out traffic. Let's have a little bit. Let's wait out that traffic. Oh, yeah. Well, you all had to leave the city. Yeah, I don't blame you for that. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, Peter, you know, Maureen and Jerry, um, that time on the show, Michael Zaslow thanked the uh, you 2 and Jerry when he won his Emmy. You know, the comfort of you three all working together, you know, when you hear Michael's speech, the Im- you know that, you know, us as fans can see that impact of uh, the camaraderie that you all really shared in at a very special time. Yeah. Yeah. It, 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 it was good you time. know, when I think back on it, and I was talking with Maeve about this too, I... I wish, or I wonder what, what it did, it did not, I didn't spend enough time with the people on the show, but I think with all of the, de- the hours, the literal hours that we spent there working on this and getting into these characters and learning all the lines, it was so um, comprehensive that there was, that when you were released, it was like, let's get out of here, let's go. Um, and but there was something that was just there in the fabric of us all being together that was just formed by years of having to get up there and do it, no matter how you felt, Mm -hmm. no matter whether you agreed with the script or not. Um, Just had this grit of like, okay, put on a show. And that makes a a bond, I think. You know what what I missed and was it was easier to get sort of a uh, a community feeling when there was, when I was doing um, Search for Tomorrow, it was a half hour, but there was a, uh, a green room and the show was done as if it were live. It was oh. taped, but it was oh. taped as if it was live. So the whole mm-hmm. cast for that day spent the shooting part of it and the dress rehearsal part of it in a green room together. So there wasn't mm-hmm. quite the running off to the your separate dressing room like we had in all its iterations on, mm-hmm. uh, on Guiding Light. Oh. I mean, the first time I made the switch, I, I, I went to um, As the World Turns and that was a, a show that I mean, lovely actors, but a show that everyone was very much in their own little world. And I was so grateful that when I finally washed up on uh, on Guiding Light, that it, that was not the case there. And again, Jerry was a was a big part of that. Yeah, it's so strange. You go through so many casts together. I mean, so yeah. many different. All right, th- these were the Gail Kobe years. These were the Jill Farron Phelps years. You know, mm-hmm. it's like it's all divided up. I, I, I also by dressing rooms. I remember the dressing room you shared with Jerry. Yeah, that, had profound, that you were sharing a room together when I first came on. That was, yeah. and it was, it was. It was Oh, right. Oh, it right. was so entertaining and wonderful. And it was where we went. And the two of you together, it was <laughs> like the Tonight Show. It was like you had a couch. Remember you had the couch and like who would be, who would sit and be, who's up? And it was like either, it was Melissa and I were both like, we want to come sit on the couch and be interviewed. <laughs> More, uh, Liz, but as a fan, Jerry and Peter, Ross and Ed being in a dressing room together. Also, you know, when you first joined the show, must have been mind blowing. Oh, and then, yes. And then across <laughs> the way was Maeve and Maureen. I mean, just, yeah. it was, it's, it's just, it, it was heaven and it, it, it was too good to be true. I mean, I was, it, 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 I was both. I, I held both. Just professional I and, raw, and but at the same time, I'm soaking it up and I was right there. I mean, I was just like a little puppy, like, please, please. <laughs> I, you know, was there, I was there a vodka there. bottle in the, in the, in the file cabinet or something? Oh, it must be another memory I have. <laughs> what? Who had a vodka <laughs> bottle? Do we have a, oh, was there a vodka bottle? The men, the men had a vodka bottle. bottle in the file <laughs> if there wasn't, there should have been one. <laughs> <laughs> 
you know, it, it you know, we are in 2022, and I, I mentioned this earlier in the show. I was invited to to judge a gay film festival, and because of this show, and because that man who runs the festival, Rex Welton, is a huge fan of Guiding Light. But I met a number of people there, and who all were connected because of this show. He and another friend, years apart in age, became friends being pen pals because of Soap Opera Digest and Soap Weekly, where they found a friendship due to our show. It just, you know, here we are so many years after it went off and the impact and just really, I mean, everybody tuning in in Jerry's honor today and all of you who joined us today, you know, it's just, we forget when we're working, doing our jobs, but the impact is something we will, Truly, I don't think, you know, be able to, you know, gather. It's and it's, it's like you know, family. I mean, I don't know how it's you family. watch, it's this, you know, but I don't know how you started watching. I mean, I watch. You know, my grandmother moved from Holland. My mother learned to speak English through her mother-in-law, and I was introduced to Guiding Light and As the World Turns because of them. Oh. But and that's I, I think we know for so many generations. But the impact is just a profound impact. This show. You know, and the longest running show. We all are a part yeah. of television history. Yeah. I, I was on the verge of quitting acting. And I even had said, I, that's it, I'm done. I'm, I really was done with the LA thing and the all the, and those shows and, and, the, and, and the, unless it's Guiding Light. And that literally <laughs> was the, unless it's Guiding Light. That's the only thing I would consider. And then Betty Ray showed up. And, and I, I, I mean, I really had a pact with the universe. I was going to be an editor. I was going to go and do hmm. sound editing. I had it all lined up. It's like, but if they call me, okay. <laughs> and well, we lucked out on that. I mean, we've been saying a lot about what a wonderful actor Jerry was. But I tell you, seeing the two of you work together yes. was a joy beyond joy. It was really, really something. Yes. Yes. You were. I, I wouldn't cry today, so, but thank yeah. you. It was, it was super, honey. It was really good. Really good. And it's, you know, I, I can't think of any flaws of Jerry, but of course, there was the one thing. And um, I mean, it's not like I was going to say it. I, I don't bring it up all the time, but um, perhaps now is a good chance to, you know, just um, get it off your chest. Let's, it it. Let's bring it on. So I'm crying. Go. Thing, but he did. He. He, it, it was very disturbing. He, he left me for you. <laughs> you know, I mean, uh, I mean, yeah. in retrospect, of course, I can understand why, but you know, at the time, at the time, it was, it was very difficult. I, I, I can only imagine. I can only imagine how uh, hideous he was that. my boyfriend. <laughs> yeah, and, and we, we, you don't want to lose him once you get you it. You don't want to lose him. Right. You just took them away from me. I'm so sorry. But, you know, it's all, in the, it's all in the family. You you walked in on them to be uh, to be exact. Oh, that's yeah. right. I did. Didn't I? You walked in on Sherry, and then it became Liz. Yeah. Oh, yes, yes. Yeah. It was so, so disturbing. I flipped you into another person. Took over when it mattered. <laughs> <laughs> Crazy, Peter, Maureen. Thank you really so much. Thank I couldn't you. think of a better way to, you know wrap this yeah thank you uh, it was such a nice thing to do it's wonderful to see you all and yes, um, too, i'll be in new york in the spring and i i'd love to see everyone yes great. Right. my dear I'll throw a party well you guys yes. we'll have yes, a nice yes, yes. yes. okay okay great. thank you thank bye you. guys bye wow 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 what a mikey wow Thank you. And yeah. Wendy. Wow. Wendy, you're on mute. I hope people have been donating throughout, Wendy. I cannot keep up, Alan. I oh, have to keep Wendy, up. you're a queen. <laughs> I've had to, I'm printing them out as, as fast as they come in. I haven't even got them all posted yet. Oh. Uh, you, you muted again by accident. Wendy, you're on, oh, there you go. Yeah. Um, I people don't tune out because there's a 
a little video thing I created. I, I hope you all I enjoy. I can't wait to see. Um, uh, really, this um, better than I could have planned. Everybody showed up when they needed. Frank felt awful that his, uh, I knew he was at a festival that he was trying to do it, but he felt awful. Oh. Um, that's okay. He, 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 he gave it, I'm sure he gave it his best shot. And he did give it his best shot. And he, I mean, he, you think he it's tried going to pop it about really seven better. times. So, you know, I love you. Yeah, he did try, he did try a, a lot. Um, but really, yeah. I loved hearing every story. Didn't you, Liz? Oh, yes. It was really lovely and very healing. Sure. And um, it, 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 wow, Rick Hurst is really coming up with this, like those memories those just jewels they were like oh little nuggets of like i forgot like little pieces that was nice really when you take out your headset it might be your headset that's muting it can you hear me now i can yep perfect okay. i think they were close by i wanted to say something so mark derwin made me think of it because i too did the same thing that he did this is a tiffany necklace that on year 10 jerry and the elves um, got me. It's a star. And I thought I'd lost it. I was just like Mark. I was, I was going through my jewelry box saying, where is that? And so I've been wearing this the whole time. So that was really sweet. Yeah. That's I just wanted to share that. Yeah. And you know, to the audience that are still on, we're coming back. We're coming back to New York city. So get ready. And we're going to bring, we're going to bring a Jerry with us. Got, I talked to Alan about the plans. We're going to, we're coming back. We're going to make it happen again. Wow. Yep. It it was, I started like crying at the end because I was listening to this all day and, and, um, and I was like, Oh, I'm holding up really good. And then the last, the sentiments that um, Jerry had, uh, Peter had. Peter just, Peter, you know, it, yep. it sort of just <laughs> nails it, you know, and done. Um, what what I, I'm gonna have to go back and but he said something just so perfect. He said something so perfect in how he described well, him. It's but also Liz, what he's saying is that you know part of what would made Jerry so special is what you know, you guys were a team and we got to watch that for years and years. And there was no couple in my mind like the two of you. Oh and you know you made there's me nothing like the two of you. And so it was so much so that when you and I were having an affair on the show, my grandmother, who was 90 years old, swore, swore at me. She goes, you stay away from her. Stay <laughs> away from her. That's a good marriage there. So, <laughs> oh, yeah. like, you know, she, she didn't, she stopped, you know, she, I would go to Minnesota and she stopped feeding me breakfast. She was oh, like, enough. enough. Oh, when but that was ready to attack you. You know, like oh, I could do no wrong, but as soon as I started like messing with you and we had our little affair, you know, that little getting on the pool table, on the pool a table, little drunk on the pool table. Oh, but that was seriously the best three months. Yeah, that yeah. Candace just reminded me what it was. Yes, if Guiding Light was a stadium, we oh. would be retiring Jerry's number and yes. put it next to uh, where to go. Put it next to Sharita was the line. Thank you, Candace. Yes, that really. Yeah. Yeah, it was beautiful. Beautiful. Well, I hope people continue to donate. Liz, I mean, Wendy, thank you for letting me do this. Thank you, thank you for asking me. I, I uh, you know, there are some, uh, some positives that came out of COVID. This show is one of them. It all, you know, not only knowing that we no longer have Jerry, but we all watching and all of us from Guiding Light had extra time with yeah. him because thank of you. the locker room. And that, yeah, thank you, you Alan. You, I, we couldn't do this without you. I think it means the world to all of us that we got extra time. You know, the show went off in 2009. You know, yeah. you know, fans might have seen, you know, at the events if we were lucky, but. So on that note, I want to share this. It's a, just a montage of photos throughout the years, fans, actors, and Jerry in his complete element. I love you all. I love you too. Thank you, Michael. No. Wendy. Thank you. Thank you.